Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome back to Soul Words Charity Campaign live stream. How you doing, Rabbi? Baruch Hashem. Just, you know, this is a fundraiser, so as much as I try to pretend I'm just uh, hanging out, having a casual conversation with my good friend uh, Chaim Cohn, friend and neighbor Chaim Cohn, um, we're fundraising, so I was just a second ago getting a very... Oh, Tybal's here. Tybal, we just got... Do I want a Slurpee? It wouldn't be very rabbi-like, and uh, the Diet Coke is barely rabbi-like. In fact, I got a what? comment today that I should keep the Diet Coke Ooh. off the table. Are we running uh, on such a thin budget that Slurpees is the best we can do for a phone team? Usually they bring in, like, Izzy's and, like... I think they're getting real food uh, momentarily. So uh, I have an incredible offline donation that just came. In fact... Oh, you know about it? Karen Chomish? Okay, so I'm going to tell you right now, in front of everybody. Uh, Karen Chomish, which is a uh, tzedakah that the Rebbe started I- in honor of, in memory of, the Rebbe Tzunchai Mushka, has just donated $1,000. Wow. Yeah, let me read the donation, I mean the dedication. Um, For all the many women and girls you help educate and inspire in the ways of Chassidus. Because it's for the Rebbe and it's a... Uh, an organization that does uh, supports causes that are befitting the spirit of the life of the Rebbe Tzunchai Mushka. So $1,000 from Karen Achomish just came in. And, uh, oh, make sure to add it to the um, the podcast team, the Inside Out podcast, the uh, Rivka Krinsky and the Ida Schottenstein team. $1,000. Thank you, Tybal. Amazing. Wow. Thank you. So that's... Uh, an- Again, you work in many different communities and uh, chapters. You get and around, Baruch Hashem. Yeah. 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 And you've been, I've been seeing more stuff come out of um, Beis Rifka High School. and the, like. Yeah, Baruch Hashem. Yes, I um, invited someone later to, to tell us more about, about that. About some of the Beis Rifka some, stuff. Someone via Zoom. I'm not sure exactly okay. what time. That's but we exciting. Have, yeah. Yeah. And uh, we have some other Zoom guests uh, lined up and lots of other hype. And I want to cover some basics on the campaign. Did you get any sleep? I got some sleep, Baruch Hashem. I, okay. g- I got a little sleep last night. I have an idea. Uh, People um, should know, after the campaign finished, I mean, not the, camp- the campaign's still going on, but after the live stream finished, so um, I still had to finish Rambam. Because even when you're doing a campaign, you got to finish Rambam. So I had to finish. I'm a witness because I thought I left my phone here. <laughs> I thought he left his phone. I came back and came you back were... and he saw it was uh, so. Anyways, go ahead. Yes, Chaim. I have an idea. Yes, what's your idea? Um, you were pretty worked up before we we started. You got like a thousand calls going on. A lot of Baruch Hashem. And I came late, uh, relatively, and like you know, just life. Yeah. Could you maybe give us a demonstration of a little? I, I know I didn't give you any. I just thought of it now. Just a little demonstration. There is a lot of pent up anxiety over the last almost yeah. two years we're going at. Yeah. Um, I mean, life in general, but as if it didn't yeah. already have it there. Like, yeah. just maybe a little breathing exercise. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. By the way, people ask me, like, uh, you know. You're deflecting from this? No, no I'm going to answer. Uh-oh. People ask me about, like, do it, do it did it did I ever like learn how to breathe like I know there's like breathing coaches and that kind of stuff I never did that but I figured out by trial and error what works for me and um, you just breathe in through the nose why I think it's cleaner and until I feel my lungs I can actually feel them stretching and then I hold it maybe a second I don't really think all this stuff when I do it and then I let it out it's sort of like cleansing relaxing yeah. <sighs> yeah. Usually I, I, I breathe, um, meaning obviously there's unconscious, obviously if I'm alive, but like I remember to do any active full breath at the yeah. point that I am already really, really needing it. Yeah. And, um, and that's, and that's fine, but. Yeah, I realized like just how big a deal that is. Br- breathing. And how about just yeah. like one conscious breathing exercise, mm-hmm. like some intentional. 
breathing exercise. Yeah. Like, are you feeling any stress? No, I was, but after that last deep breath, I think it's all gone. It's amazing how simple sometimes it could be. Yeah. It's all good. So if that's you ever it. Hear, if, We're if, done. If you ever zeicha to a shaste how uh, voice note, even if it's like 14 seconds, you'll get at least one or two. <laughs> <sighs> you know what? I think we have a clip where you do a few of those. That, uh, the huffing and the puffing? No, I don't know. I'm not going to get messy okay. with that. All right, let's cover. There's some really nice donations. Okay. Yeah. You're at, where are we, like at 80% of the way? I think we're 80%, but we got to get wow. all the way home. and uh, We got to bring it home. And we have a nice show coming up. We have yeah. a, a lot, a lot of nice guests and music coming soon. And, uh, anyway. and that is all to the credit of Chaim Cohn, who is not just the, what were you calling it last night, the Edmund Ed Don't say it. The, wor- the more you Chaim do of that, is, the more is, of a is, imposter uh, syndrome hangover I have Okay, tomorrow. forget it. No problem. Okay. All right. Chaim did so. nothing. He just rolled in here and he's... Winging it as he no, goes. No, 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 no. I, I... <laughs> Go ahead. Um, okay. So, you know what I want to do? I want to remind everybody that we are, in addition to you donating to a very, very important cause and all the reasons that you uh, appreciate Soul Words and Rabbi Taub, we're also giving away some gifts. For a donation of thirty, uh, three hundred and sixty dollars, which is or, effectively seven twenty, or effectively seven twenty, or you could do it. As thirty dollars. See, I remember last night. Last night we had a whole thing, and Nehemi was. You on. know what? Let them do the math, or you can. No, do but it. I got the math down. I th- what do you think I thought about today? I have the math down. Three hundred sixty dollars is effectively seven twenty. You can do that as a one-time three hundred sixty dollar charge, or you can do thirty dollars recurring as a as a monthly charge, and then you get in at the first tier of gifts, which is this, this is part I don't remember. The beautiful. Four Cups Haggadah, the Recovery Haggadah, that uh, you're, whoever donates will be getting the very, very first copies of. It's coming out in a few months. You'll have it certainly with in time, time for Pesach, before, with, uh, before with Pesach. Right. And we showed some of the slides, and we spoke to Nehemia Schusterman, who's a uh, Mastermind project. behind the project. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's uh, if you do $360, effectively 720 and you can do that by doing a one-time 360 or you could do recurring 30 a month. Okay, and then I remember, before I forget the number, the other price point is if you do uh, 540, so we're doing multiples of chai, if you do 540, which is effectively 1,080, you could either do it as a one-time 540, or if you do, I think this is right, $45 a month. Or more. Recurring. I did have those numbers down, just saying. Forty-five. <laughs> yeah, if you do $45 a month, yeah, that's 540. And then you get in at the, at the next... Tier, which is which gets you? I don't remember. Which gets you this beautiful 7-Eleven, Kol Hashvin Chavivin Soul Words Yamaka. Can we see this? It looks like a 7-Eleven logo, but it's not because instead of 11, it says Chavivin. So it says Kol Shvin Chavivin. All sevens are precious. Seventh generation. Can I just take this one and? All right. Yeah, you could have. Yeah, okay, yes. I'll let you. We don't have to put it into the. Okay. Yeah. Looks good on you. Thank yeah, you. it matches the jacket. Thank you. Okay. Um, we also have some other gifts, but we're gonna get to those later. Okay. I made. Yeah. Okay. Um, you put out a survey uh, about yes. two weeks ago, and there were some great results. We read a few of them last night, but I wanted to go into um, a few of them that I okay. chose. Um, Shammai, please cue the testimonials. All right, I'm messaging you and saying it at the same time. And I would like to, yeah, we'll put a few on the screen. And just, you know, as a reminder of the vital work that you do. And uh, things cost money. You know, we had a beautiful campaign last year, and today we are sitting... In in the studio, which we built with the campaign money. So you see... See yeah. the fruits of your labor. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, you're getting a, a glimpse into it, but this means that you'll be able to be distributing rich content all over the world to people who benefit it, benefit from it in so many different ways. And this is just a sample of some of those. Tybal, what's up? You and-
Yeah, it's a different embed link from yesterday because they're different. Oh, they have need... to update it. Okay. Oh, you have to update it. Where are you? Uh... I think you only need that. On charity? Oh, you on have the to charity. Do it? Okay, so gotta go to Hi, the... please cover for me for a minute. We're going to do the testimonials, and in the meantime, you'll take care of that. Let's see how we're many. By the way, behind me you see these beautiful Nechayach records. These are covers, but these are original LPs. And um, I, I brought them here. And I said yesterday that for uh, any donation for um, $360, effective $720 or more, uh, for up to three, if you just write Nechayach in the comment of the donation, um, the first three that come in, I'm going to send you uh, one of those records. Okay. Let's just see how many committed Nechayach and audiophiles there are watching us. Okay, let's do some testimonials, huh? Yeah, while I'm changing the, the link. Go ahead. No, no, they're going to put it on the screen, shall we? Oh, here we go. Uh, it's my inspiration of the week, and given over in a way that keeps me focused and interested the entire class, enough so that I often repeat them to other people. This is from SG in Long Island, right, local. Thank you very much. Wow. All right. Let's keep scrolling through. Rabbi Taub shares extremely lofty and deep concepts without dumbing them down. He does it in a way that it comes through as clear and relevant, and he gives it over in a concise and interesting way. And this comes from... RG in New Jersey. Thank you. By the way, we see the scrolling donations on the bottom. There was a technical issue last night uh, that it was just doing the, some of the same ones over and over. But uh, we we wa we will we make sure we figured it out. Everyone will be seen across the screen. And thank you very much, Shammai Chain and his team, Israel Grimberg and uh, people at Charity. Okay, let's go. Your classes are clear and fun to watch. And now I'm taking the parenting course, and it's changing everything I knew about parenting, EK, Staten Island, New York. All right, wow. It's, it's too bad you're doing this. You won't be able to hear your own praise. Probably better, better that way, way right? It's easier to Probably better, better I don't hear my praise. Yeah, less of a imposter syndrome I'm, hangover yeah, tomorrow. I'm updating the link to the charity page so that it shows tonight's uh youtube instead of last night because that's where to watch it some people if they're watching are they're, they're on youtube direct but if you go to charity.com forward slash rst that's where everything is going to be all right uh let's go back meantime we have shalom and mushka hundred dollars all right rabbi tab and soul words have been machazic my learning and taught me invaluable insights to practical situations I have Rabbi Taub's voice in my mind when I am not sure what to do. So grateful, DS Five Towns, New York. So that would be uh, W W R T D. What would Rabbi Taub do? Okay, I'm uh, back. Oh, you're back. Yeah. All right. Apparently, uh, the link has been updated. By the way, it was correct on COL. And oh, good. again, I want to thank COL Mika Sofer because um, she did an incredible job updating the pictures she took uh some of our guests and like put it up you know made it she hypes you up she hypes up yeah that's Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. yeah thank you she does a great job with still that. alive she's the master of that she knows how to do that yeah let's do a few more testimonials could we go um let's go back uh, i first started watching rabbi taub's weekly parsha classes and this past year, when I finally committed to reading the daily Tanya portions, I started watching the Tanya classes on Soul Words. The Tanya classes, more than anything else, opened my eyes to see what I had been, but I'd long been missing. FN Mobile Alaska or Alabama? What's AL? AL is Al Alabama. Oh, Alabama. 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 There's a. a Wow, it was already a pretty incredible golf, like all over the All over the country. The last country, night we had Cologne, Germany. Yeah. And um, I'm noticing a, a trend in some of these when I was reading them. Uh, things like realistic, practical, applicable, you know, um, and that's something that's, uh, that's important. All right, let's continue. Let's do a few more. Original, profound, Hasidic content that I enjoy sharing with my community here in my shlichus. Anytime I want to approach an important subject, I look on your website for content. Wow. And it's nice to hear that more people, and this is from France. 
So, um, the, uh, ah, I, <laughs> you said this is from, and I saw you get intimidated. You're like, France. I'm not going to even bother. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No problem. I Th- would, thanks, by the way, thanks for doing that. I, uh, funny. Well, no, because I would embarrass you about something that I think is truly embarrassing. I also would not have attempted to pronounce that city name. Right. Okay. And you actually got an education, unlike me. Yeah. Okay. Now we're going to go down a trauma circle about Lubavitch education system. Okay. Français. You asked for it. Okay. Anyways, go ahead. I'm very, very successfully. Edu- well, illiterate in three different languages. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, oh, let's do more testimonials. We're running a campaign. Original profound... Well, yeah, we did that one. Your classes got me through... And by the way... Well, never mind. You got, your classes got me through a few rough patches, especially your Tanya and Shara Betachin classes. I would listen almost every day. WS. Wow. Okay. Well, speaking of the Shara Betachin classes, for just for a second, um, so today, Baruch Hashem, I saw one of our matchers, Getsy Felig, and we mentioned last night Getsy and Lisa Felig because uh, I think we mentioned last night we were sending condolences to their to their family. So he was uh, in town, unfortunately, for the the funeral of his grandmother. But I got to see him today, and Baruch Hashem, when he he tuned in last night for a few minutes, and he got to, to have some nachas. He heard when we were inter- interviewing Dimitri. Dimitri Salida, so we were talking to Dimitri, and he was saying how he's known me for a while, and our paths had crossed uh, at a, a few different places, but then he started learning with me recently online. He was learning Shara B'Tochen, and then he got the book, and I said to him, yeah, the Chayenu Felag edition of Shara B'Tochen. And Getzi, who was the sponsor of the Felag edition, hence Felag edition, got to hear that line, and I felt good that he got nachas from it, because he doesn't just support... Uh, Soul words, he supports lots of good stuff. Yeah. Anyways. That's good timing. You know, Hashem has good timing. Good t- 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 timing. We did that joke last night. What's yeah. the most... A- Chaim, ask me what's the most important... Ta- pa- <laughs> ask me what's the most important part of telling a joke. You gave away the joke now. What's the most important ta- part? Timing. <laughs> you know what? Um, when you tell a joke to a... a um, a bus driver, they laugh three times. Yeah. Once when you tell it, once when you explain it, and then once later when they understand it. I don't know why I use bus driver. That's not nice. They're some of the best people. Some of my f- best friends are bus drivers. Yeah. And uh, when you tell a joke to a policeman, they also laugh. No, they only laugh once. Because once when you tell it, and then they don't even let you explain yourself. Oh, okay. Policeman doesn't let you explain yes. yourself. Yes. Okay. Well, it's a no, all right. It's an old Yiddish thing, and I'm messing it up. When you tell um, a Jew a joke, they don't laugh at all because before you're finished, they say, "No, you're saying it wrong." You're saying it wrong, right? And various other. Okay, can keep going. Right. We're gonna do. So, we're gonna dissect some jokes, and we're Dissected gonna do it. The frog. We did some yeah. last night. We're gonna do some more. Yeah. Okay. I hope so. And uh, we're gonna make it very unfunny because joking is no joking matter. Joking is serious matter. Yes. Okay. You know what? I, oh, we also have some paradoxes, and you know, someone wrote once. You know, life is way too important to take seriously. It's life is one thing that's way too important. For us to be seriously. taking it seriously. That's a good paradox. I like that. Yeah. Okay. And more of those coming. Okay. Do, are we doing more testimonials? You know what? We're going to come back to doing more testimonials. Shami, please make sure you remember where, where we're up to in the testimonials. Speaking of paradoxes. Yes. People think this is just funny business. It's not. It's not. And it's actually something very related to what we're doing right now, which is a campaign. And we encourage everyone to continue going. We still have... About 20% to go, and uh, the time is going, and uh, who knows? I think we may have a bonus round, but in the meantime, we need to reach our goal. Please help us, and um, everything you're giving is doubled. Is doubled. Is doubled. Shamai, can you cue up a, a clip 11? Because I think we were like a little all over the place yesterday. There was so many things going on, and I don't know if I explained properly the importance of 
the idea of the truth and paradoxes. And okay. I thought of this clip, which I wanted to play anyway, does a good job of demonstrating... The truth and paradox. The truth and paradoxes. Clip 11. Clip 11. I'm just repeating what you said. <laughs> and uh, as soon as I start seeing it, this is... Oh, here we go. The story I'll tell quickly about a, a Yid who was in uh, the Sinai Desert in the Israeli Air Force. It was Purim. He didn't even know it was Purim. And he got a Sholach Monis. It's a Sholach Monis from the Lubavitcher Rebbe. This moved him deeply. And this started his path of tshuva. And it was eventually, like many Israelis, when they leave Eretz Yisrael and they go chutz la'aretz, they become more religious. He ended up in Chicago. And the Rebbe Daniel Maskowitz, all of a shalom, brought him to Machni Yisrael. And he met the Rebbe. And the Rebbe asked him a question. How come everything in Yiddishkeit puts the emphasis on the right side? When it comes to the heart, which is such a vital organ, Hashem seemingly put it on the wrong side. He put it on the left side. Let it be like the brain that's in the center. Or if it has to be off-center, to, off to one side or the other, put it on the right. Why put it on the left? This guy couldn't answer the question. So the Rebbe said, but the whole purpose of the heart is emotions, and emotions aren't for yourself, they're for others. So when you face another Jew in Avas Yisrael, your heart is on the right, on the other Jew's right. So his whole awakening to Yiddishkeit was when he was a receiver, he got a gift. The Rebbe flipped it, now you gotta become a giver. Now you have to give the gift. Not just because, you know, one good turn deserves another, and now, now it's, you know, now you gotta step up, but because, that's how you were designed. You were made. Your heart was placed on the other guy's right side. When are we healthy? When are we functioning according to our design? When we're giving. So don't give me this business that I'll do everything else but the Avas Yisrael part. The whole purpose of it is to share it with somebody else. Or perhaps you could say it like this. And I think everyone here knows this, and I think it's something we try to teach our children, and I hope it's something we try to teach every Jew that we meet. That when it comes down to it, the only Yiddishkeit that you really have is whatever Yiddishkeit you are actively giving away. That was a good clip. Yeah, I think it was so apropos. And um, of, of all apropos the, to true the paradoxes, of paradoxes yeah. and of all true paradoxes, well, it seems like every time you stumble on one, it's like, well, this one seems to be the most true. This one is even more true. And I'm, I have a, let me run this, tell me what you think. The reason that they all seem to be the most true yeah. is because really all truths are centered and culminate from really one universal truth. Yes, that's true. And if you notice, what is so interesting about true paradoxes, right, yeah. versus contradictions, is that um, there's there's it's not a resolution. It's the synthesis. The ooh, okay, there you go again. It's when two <laughs> things synthesis that, of yeah of two things that are seemingly yeah. un, right right so. Is it perhaps that there's one ultimate truth, there's one ultimate paradoxical truth, and from there lends all these others? Yeah. And is that you know, one yes. universal? Yes. And it, you know what the ultimate one paradox from, from whence all other paradoxes emanate? You know what it is? The paradox that there's only Hashem, and yet... When is Hashem most himself when he's in a relationship with us? That's the ultimate paradox. So there's Eneid Milvadai and there's Bereshis Bor Elikim. There's, there's nothing but Hashem and there's he wants a dwelling place in the lowest realms. That's the paradox. And all other, the, the tension of that paradox is the source from whence all other paradoxes emanate. Torah itself is a paradox. You know, my great, 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 great grandfather, the Megala Mukais, 
said that uh, Moshe, Moshe is the name of Moses, the lawgiver, Moshe Kibbal Tehidim Sinai, Moses, the one who received Torah at Sinai. So he says that Moshe is the Rosh Tevis, is the acronym, Machlekes Shammai Hillel. <laughs> <laughs> the disputes between Shammai and Hillel. In other words, the fact that you have um, different opinions in Torah, it's not a bug, it's a feature. So a lot of people make jokes about, well, the Jews, they can never make up their minds, two Jews, three opinions. But if you want to understand it, if you, if you want to have contempt toward it, it's easy to, to make jokes. But if you want to understand it, uh, think about it like this. Hashem's wisdom is infinite. Our minds are finite. The only way for a finite vessel to grasp an infinite truth is through paradox, by something that is transcendent of being limited or categorized to one thing or another. By definition, the truth has to be bigger than one finite perspective. And that's why truth is grasped through machlekes, machlekes shamay hilo, through the... Through the uh, the tension of what you call the synthesis, the thesis, antithesis, synthesis. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll add something that the anical of the Megala Mukais, the Shosli Elakim. Ever heard of that before? The anical of the Megala Mukais, the Shosli Elakim? He's an Achrain. He's a relatively recent Achrain. From the five towns. From the five. So, see, I told you this before. You figured it out. So, uh, yeah, my, my, my safer, which I have yet to have written, is called the Shasli Elakim. Anyways, um, the Gemara says, Elu ve'elu divir elakim chaim, which means that when there's a, a dispute between the sages, so these and these are the words of the living God. I mean, say they're both legitimate. They're both valid perspectives. So the anical of the Megala Mukas, the Shosli Yalakim says, Elu ve'elu, if you have both, if you have divergent opinions, then, Divir Lakim Chaim, then you have the words of the living God. If you only have one perspective, you don't have the full picture yet. It's Dafke, Elu ve'elu, now you have Divir Lakim Chaim. So, and what is it, if this is so central and so, it's like, has, it, that's at the core of this whole deal, it seems, and yet at the same time, there seems to be a discomfort with that, like the story of the guy who was looking for, what, a three-armed rabbi? No, no, he was looking for the opposite. He was, well, maybe that's the paradox. A one, oh, he, oh, he was looking for a one-armed rabbi. Oh, I even, in my head, I figured even more, con- even, even more, more add paradox. more, add more, why <laughs> okay. not? Wow, that's really why, And why not four-armed? Uh, for, a Freudian slip. Okay. No, so what was the story? <laughs> we really don't like jokes to be told well around here. No. No, we, we despise a Start well-told with the punch joke. Line. Yeah. Start with the punchline. So I'll, the punchline for this is, well, the one I have right now, every time I ask him something, he says an answer, but in the second later, he says, but on the other hand. Right. That's, yeah, that's and I'll do joke. that. And so a fellow calls up a local rabbi, says, um, a synagogue, I'm looking for a one-armed rabbi. A one-armed rabbi? Why would you want that? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so Moving right along. Would, what is it? I'm gonna just going to go ahead and read some. And by the way, in case uh, there's a whole mix of this, but I wanted it from cuts, there was a lot of... Uh, beautifully true paradox that came out. And a famous one is... Um, you From know, where? The, From Kotsk, you said? Like, Kotsk. Like, like, like the, the, the Kotsk Rebbe? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Chassidim, yeah. I mean, uh, the, Chassid, the Rebbe's are, are full yeah. of uh, okay. beautiful... all right. No, I didn't know. Yeah, right. this one's right. famous. Um, my grandfather would often say it a lot. And this, But um, there is nothing quite as crooked... I'm sorry. <laughs> There's nothing quite as straight as a crooked ladder. Hmm. Right? There's nothing quite as straight as a crooked ladder, meaning you want the ladder to be crooked. It has to lean against something. Yeah. And that's actually straight. If it would be straight, it would actually be crooked. Yeah. Your grandfather used to say that? No, it's the it's from Cusk. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Fine. <laughs> and they would say there's nothing quite as uh, crooked as a sharp word. Sharp, like straight, you know, straight talk. Right. And there is nothing more whole than a broken heart. Ooh, that's that's a deep one. And he also said something that you were speaking about before about the heart in the video. So he said, "You the video know, was five minutes ago. I don't think people right. stay on YouTube that long." Well, we, I think <laughs> I would like to think that people more and more want long form content, and yeah. I hope, and I okay. hope they donate. By the way, 
because they're also running a campaign in between this. So yeah, wh- for those who just tuned in two minutes ago, where are we at? I don't know. I said we're going to take every time we hit another ten grand, and we're at one forty six. One forty six. So what percent? That's eighty one percent. Is that really? You make yep. that up? You don't make that. up. No, actually, charity does it for me. Oh, okay. You know, okay. <laughs> I don't have to trust okay. my man. So the Kotzker one said, "My gosh, Mies." Oh yeah, you say it. Well, this is a Kotzker thing. I believe so. Yeah. Anything that sounds really, really wise and searing, is, yeah. I usually read. Yeah. But that's any rather. I think it is cuts. Yeah. The, my, uh, my gosh, me is. No, no, no. Wait, is it a hayem no, yem no. even? Well, there's a similar hayem yem. Oh. About the shtickle breit vasichab. But uh, the idea is that my ruchnius is your gosh, me is. My spirituality is your materiality. In other words, that... If you ha- let's say I, I have a, a piece of cake, if I eat the piece of cake, okay, so it's a, it's a material thing. I mean, maybe I could use it out later to to fuel some type of spiritual endeavor, but immediately right now it's just a material thing. But if I take that piece of cake and I give it to you to feed you, so in my providing for your material needs, I have done something spiritually. I provided for my spiritual needs, so your material needs are my spiritual needs. I eat the bread, it's just material. I, I give you the bread that you eat it. Mm. Right. But then you got to give it back to me because you also right. have spiritual needs. And I would just trade the piece of bread back and forth. And so you're saying, like, if you really care about Ruchnius, you'll tend to that other person's Gashmius. Right. And if you care about your own Gashmius, you take care of your, meaning that's, that's on your, right? but so often. You know, it could be easier the other way around. You know, what a paradox! What a paradox! You know what? Here, here, I'm going to give you a few. Yeah. And then, well, I'll do a few. We'll go back and forth, back and forth, okay? okay? Until we okay. have someone, okay. I guess, coming. This is a Here's serious a, talk show here. I got index cards. We're doing for real. Um, oh, here's one about paradoxes. Okay. I love that. Right. Okay. A story about a story. A paradox about a paradox. Okay. Let's hear. The it. contradictions in my life. Drive me crazy. But for some reason, the paradoxes don't bother me a bit. Right. And that's assuming that a paradox and a contradiction are synonymous. So therefore, right, because that no. that statement is only a paradox if you say a paradox and a, and a contradiction oh. are the same thing. Because if they're different, then it makes sense what he's saying. Yes, but it's speaking to the point of what we spoke right. about yesterday, which is the, the disparity, almost complete opposite of contradiction versus right. paradox. Right? right. And just to be clear... There's another two words that sometimes people conflate. And by the way, since I didn't really get much of an education, I do something now, and this is why I'm grateful I didn't get an education. Because if I did, I might assume that I know grammar. But mm-hmm. I know that I don't. And when I come across words, even words that I think I, do, I know, like I, and I just, once in a while, I just Google definition. And it has been such a game changer in my life. Because the amount of associations that I have with words and that association and how that impacts me yeah. is incredible. So doing that once in a while. So sometimes people confuse, uh, okay, oxymoron, that's just more of a technical term. Right. But contradiction and paradox is a big one. And also hypocrite. Hypocrite. Hypocrite sometimes, is, and that's a whole other thing. So here's one about... Hypocrisy? Yeah. you. you I have it. Oh, okay, go. <laughs> My card. You take turns. I have the hypocrisy one. Yeah, you go. Oh, that was a lead. You knew which card I had? I knew there was one in there. I wasn't sure. There was more than one. Go. Okay. Here it is. There's a paradox about hypocrisy. Your annoying habits make it impossible. Hold on a second. Let me say it. Your annoying habits make it impossible for me to love you unconditionally. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, And you know what? We're going to do some funny ones mixed with some very serious ones that are also very funny. And the truer that is, usually the funnier it is. But um, in that case, I guess we'll do a mix. All right. You know, I said this one actually just before. Here's another one. I think I'll procrastinate now and get it over with. <laughs> That's great for you. And Story me. of my life. All okay. right, go ahead. All right, this is another hypocrisy one. You just look like the kind of guy who would judge a book by its cover. It's true. Speaking of covers of books... Four cups, I got it. I'm going to judge from this one that 
It's a pretty good book. It's a fantastic book. And it could be yours. For Donation 30, of? $36 a month. No, no. $30 monthly or $360 right now, which would be effectively $720 complicating for people. Let's go to a paradox about Freud. No that problem. will certainly you know, bring it back down. Huh? Yeah. We told the great Freud jokes last night. Oh, yeah. And a Freud story. That story. I mean, yeah, yeah. And a joke. Here's one. You liked it. Freud asserted neurosis is the inability to cope with ambiguity. And the research is so bloody and conclusive. Right. Okay. It's ambiguous. Okay. Like most of Freud theories, huh? Yeah. Okay. I, I'm going to skip this one because it's, it's similar to another one. Because it, it's very similar oh. to another. I'm giving okay, you quite okay. a bit of I'm I'm giving you quite a bit more unconditional love than you deserve. I that like was similar that. Yeah, to another yeah, yeah. one. I already said. Okay, I, can I do another one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You okay. Go. All right. I haven't seen these yet, so I'm really trusting. Don't censor. I, I I'm censor not censored. Them. You censor. You pre-censored them. Okay, yeah. fine. I don't go around worrying about how other people see me. It wouldn't look good. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Actually, you remind me right here. There's a, uh, I remember Mendel Morozov, all of a shalom, the Mashpia, Mendel Morozov. Remember him? Sure. Mendel Morozov, okay. Last year we did a song that, that hundreds, Mendel Morozov uh, used oh, you, to sing. That's right. And last night I saw a donation from Miriam Goldberg, I believe, uh, his daughter. Wow. Wow. Okay, Baruch Hashem. Yeah. So, okay, we covered the donation from uh, from the Goldbergs. So we're going to tell uh, Mendel Morozov's story. So he told the story of Fabrengen. I don't know if this is a real story or it's a true story. You know, it's one of, but he's, he's explaining, he, make, he was making a point. He was saying, I was sitting at a chasana and they served marajna. You know, marajna, ice cream, right? Now, you have to understand something. The life of a chosid, chabad chosid, iskafia, you have to control yourself. You don't indulge yourself. So you serve marajna, you serve ice cream. It's like, who eats ice cream? It's such, such so inherently indulgent. So he, um, he said, I am going to uh, conquer my taiva. Now, for, for the sake of the story, I have to use two Hebrew words. Uh, one is taiva. Uh, taiva meaning lust or, or desire. So he says, I have to conquer my taiva. And he pushed away the ice cream. It was Amanda Moraz. He says, I pushed away the ice cream because I'm not going to give in to my taiva. Second later, he says, ooh, the Yetzahara, he's so clever. A zayklug. Because what did he do? The Yetzirah knows, I'm, my real issue is not taiva. It's not lust and desire. My real problem, like my real character defect, is gaiva. Gaiva means arrogance. So he says, the Yetzirah, the evil inclination, knows I, my real problem is gaiva. I'm arrogant. I care about what people think of me. And the reason I pushed away the ice cream is because it's not. Sapasnished, it's not appropriate, it wouldn't look good. That's why you reminded me from this card. It wouldn't look good. It wouldn't look good that Ramando Morozov is publicly Involved. eating ice cream. So that's why I pushed it away. You know what, Dafka, give it here. And he takes it back, says, I'm going to eat it. I'm Dafka, I'm going to eat it right here in front of everyone. They should sh I should just show them. I'm getting over my arrogance. He's about to make a bracha. He says, Ooh, the yeah. Itzahara. <laughs> Azai Klug, he's so okay. smart because he realized. My issue is not gaiva. My issue is taiva. It's the lost. But he he knows he can't just get me to do something to be indulgent. So he tells me it's a chesudosh thing that you're going to conquer your gaiva. You're going to conquer your arrogance by publicly eating the ice cream. But he, it's just because he knows he wants me to indulge myself with the, the pleasure of eating the ice cream. That, that, that pushes it away. He says, ooh, the it's so hot. He's so smart. And he goes back and forth and back and forth. Wow. You got to know the telling of it, though. He... he, he he, he knew how to tell he a was story. An artist. He went, He was an artist. He he goes back and forth like ten different times. Oh, is it is it the taiva? No, 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 no. It's the gaiva. No, 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 no. It's 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 not the gaiva. It's it, it's it's the taiva. And he says, so I went back and forth, and I'm trying to figure out. I remember the punchline. Vos vet sein gaiver, die taiva zi die gaiva. What's gonna win? What's gonna predominate? The taiva, the loss, the indulgence, or the gaiva, the arrogance. And you know what happened? By the time I figured it out, the ice cream had melted. <laughs> Can't get a that, like that. That story is so perfect. Everything about that story is perfect. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when I said we sang a song in his honor, that one that he would sing yeah. at Fabrangans, what was the song? The song. 
has this very cute song. It's a Yiddish song, and it goes, I'll just do it very quick. It's a question and answer, but there's no answer. So it's, but it's that sort of dialogue. That's right. So it's, I'm not going to do it, but it, the, the, you remember maybe when Ali Marcus shows up, he'll accompany you. It would be, yeah, it's a very, yeah. And, yeah. Um, but that's it. It's a dialogue without any content. So it just, it's very circular. circular. Uh-huh. But you remind me, the, the uh, Hasid who, uh, Shabbos afternoon, he, he, someone observed him like after davening and he's like, there was already a Kiddush Fabrengen and he was like tussling with his talus and he, someone overheard mummering to himself. He goes, no, okay, okay. And he wasn't, he was talking to his Yetzirah who was bugging him because he wanted right. to like Fabrengen peace. That's what translate. So he was saying, okay, fair, I'll feed you, but then leave me alone. <laughs> you know, so um, that's great. That's great. I And I, I think uh, when I go shopping with my wife, sometimes and the donuts and stuff are calling. Yeah. And I notice that if I try like, oh, just don't look and like fight through it, sometimes I'll, I'll go back. But Ooh. I did this thing. I stand in front of the donuts or what have you, and I look at it. I think about it. I imagine. And then all of a sudden I was like, all right, I don't need that. I know, I know what that's like. I've been there. I've eaten donuts before. It works for me. Okay. Because it's more, all right, let's do more. Do another one. Okay, here's one. If it bothers you so much that I'm being a martyr. (laughs) Oh, my God. I just You can't say that one because of that word? No, I'll, I'll, it's very, say it again. It's very good. You know who we should have, you know who should we give this line to? You know who I want to get to say this, what, this joke? You know which rabbi I really like? He has great videos. Tovia Singer. Oh, the he, anti-missionary? Yeah, you think he'd be good for codependency too? No, I think Just no. The, this line, got, uh, this line would be a good oh, joke the, line. Yeah, yeah, Listen yeah. to this joke. If it bothers you so much that I'm being a martyr, why don't you just crucify me? That was good. It would be it would be funnier if we, I didn't know well, if we all didn't know people who pretty much said that. Okay, I um, think all of these uh, lines are yeah realistic. We know people who could have said it. And I, you know what, I want to talk. about... You know, life. May be terribly hard and very lonely, but at the very least, we're living longer these days. Tell me you know the you Jewish joke that reminds you of. <laughs> you knew where I was going. The yeah, Catskills. So, no, in Helm, it's a Helm joke. We okay, do the Helm joke first. Two guys in Helm, and one says, "He says, uh, you know, Beto, judging from how difficult life is, sometimes I think it would be better to have never been born." Mm-hmm. He says, Schmetel, that's true, but how many guys do you know who are actually that lucky? One out of a thousand? <laughs> I love that. How one. many guys do you know who are never born? You know? What are my notes on this joke? What does it say? Yeah. It so all comes from the same place. So the Catskill one is, oh my God, the food is terrible here. And the portions are so small. That's right. So... All right, let's do another. Uh, you go, go you do another one. Okay. I'm learning how to be less codependent, and it's for your own good. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's the only way I could get myself to like sort of not they say, rescue what, someone. What's the last he, thing like, a codependent be sees before he dies? Somebody else's life flashes before his eyes. But is that is sometimes the only way to like start some? I'm talking about to, to start myself off on not codependently trying to save the world is to like find out that I'm actually not going to do good for the person I'm going to save. And it's like, you know what? We have a good one about that. Uh, you may be, ha- you may have it. But f- uh, another, um, uh, about, okay. Uh, maybe about another hypocrisy one about compassion. Oh, actually I have a good one. Uh, hypo- you know, if you were just a little bit different, you wouldn't have to change at all. <laughs> <laughs> that's good okay <laughs> okay we're finishing these what it would oh we have a very special guest we're going to break for our guest okay fine so over zoom i want to continue these. where we left off let's see these, Those are, are, these, are these were finished these were these done finished. Right, give me that huh? okay trash pile all right let's admit our guest you don't know who it is yet but i, I don't know anything i really don't know anything that you plan me about it okay I'm just going along with the ride Shammai, going we're the ride. uh we're going to zoom We didn't even play the the hypocrisy uh, paradox intro. 
Okay. Next time we'll get it. One second. What's going on here? Shamai? Oh, okay. All right. She. While she's going there, I'm going to read a few names, okay? Here we go. By the way, we have mailbag stuff coming up. We got, where are we at? We're at 84%, 84%. All right, here's some, yeah, look at that. The first thing I see, I see a Krinsky on the screen that just donated. Shmaya Krinsky and Rifki from the Inside Out Podcast 360. And a minute ago, are we on? We have, oh, okay, our guest is getting their video connected. We have Isaac Muller, $72. Rana Salinger, $108. Rabbi Taub, thank you. Thank you, Rabbi Taub, from the bottom of my heart. Anonymous, $144. Oh, our friend Maisha Khanan, Pure oh. Souls in Pain, $72. Is that talking about us? Probably us. Or just all human beings? Okay. Human condition. You, you know, the Jews are like everybody else, only more so. There is a good one. Yes. Yeah. Oh, we have our guest, I believe. Yes, she just has to unmute herself. Oh, there you go. Okay, oh, wow. Okay, I see somebody. Okay. Hello, hello. Hello. Oh, can you what go into uh, landscape? Uh... Oh, okay. There you go. Is that better? Yes. It's Rifka okay. Krinsky, who's leading oh, gonna... one of the teams. The from the Inside Out podcast team. Last night we had David and Ida Schottenstein. Ida is your co-host on the extremely she popular, is indeed. extremely popular from the Inside Out podcast. Anyways, I, thank I, God. I was I'm, in charge, I'm, so I'm, I'm thankful. Sorry, go ahead. No, I I don't want to take. Away I asked it. I asked Rivka to come on um, because I saw the I, I saw her team, and they 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 they're killing it. I I mean that. Uh, if they aren't at their goal already, they're certainly close to it. I want to mention something, by the way, that I noticed. One of the donations from uh, the team that we're speaking about right now, which is, again, the from the Inside Out podcast team. Rivka's on two teams. Is she really on two teams? Well, <laughs> really? she no, I'm, no, I'm on one team. She's on one team. Okay. <laughs> podcast the, the, from the Inside Out podcast team. But I just want to mention a specific donation. There was a donation that came in from Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak HaKoyin, and Sterna Gutnik. Yes? Did I say everything correct? Yeah? Yes. And um, they, should continue to see, see, they should continue to see the fulfillment of the Rebbe's brachas in their lives, Begashmias and Baruchnias. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Yes, yeah, so I asked uh, her to come may, on no, to speak may, a little bit about you know, her involvement with, with, uh, with you through through the Inside Out podcast, and I also asked her for her to come on, and that's why I mentioned the other, uh, because um, she said she would uh, maybe share a few words about your parenting course, and I wanted to get, like, someone... Where, where did we... Where, where did, we did we lose Rivka? Oh, there she is. Can we go back on the screen? Sorry? I'm yeah. right here. Oh, there you are. You're okay. on the screen. Okay. So, Rivka, please take it away. Okay, well, where shall I start? They're all, these are all things maybe, I, I love uh, talking about. Why don't you tell us maybe that... the first time you uh, encountered Rabbi Tal or where that started? So where it all started um, is actually I was visiting my daughter in seminary and uh, there was a, a mother-daughter class and that was where I first met Rabbi Tal because he was living in Pittsburgh. The seminary was in Pittsburgh, seminary um, Sohar of the arts and... My girls always, to always told me that Rabbi Taub is one of their favorite teachers and he inspires them so much. So I was very excited about joining this class. And I, had the show, I want to just interrupt to tell you, both of the daughters, the Krinska girls who I taught, got married this year. Mazel yes, Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. You actually taught three of my daughters. Oh, now did I teach three to... of your daughters? Oh, we got to make another yes. class enough. <laughs> That's right. Okay, Amir Hashem. <laughs> Amen, and by your children too. Amen. So, so um, I listened to this class, and I hadn't heard a deep shear like that in a while. Um, probably because I wasn't I wasn't uh, looking for it enough. But there I was; it was right in front of me. Hashem put me in front of this class with my daughter, and I it made me feel like I wanted to go back to seminary. 
again and tap into that very deep uh, place and be inspired, feel inspired by Hasidus and its deep teachings. And Rabbi Taub did that for me in that class. And it kind of just, you know, planted a seed in my mind. And, and then a later, I guess it got me thinking about things. Um, I'm a health coach and I wanted to make um, my coaching practice a more meaningful. I wanted to bring Hasidus into the picture and, you know, anything that's authentic and real can be applied to Hasidus, like Rabbi Taub says. And so I called him and asked him that he was the person I thought of because I loved this one class so much and asked him if he would spend a little bit of time with me talking to me. I shared with him my approach and he gave me some great um, applications to Hasidus. And he spent an hour with me on the phone. And at the end of it, I said, so what can, what can I do for you? You spent so much time with me on the phone. I was actually shocked that uh, he spent so much time with me, giving me so many deep thoughts. And he said nothing. And I was so um, touched by that. And I started listening to his weekly Pasha Shiorim. And one thing led to another. The next thing I knew, I was a team player. This is my third time being his team player. And it led to me learning a whole lot more and finding um, meaning in all areas of my life where I was feeling a little bit lost at some points. Now I feel found <laughs> and continue to uh, tap into that place. Amazing. Baruch Hashem. That's great. You, you want to know, and you're mentioning like, I, I remember when you called me and you said that you knew, you wanted, you wanted to incorporate some chsidis into what you're doing with health coaching. And, and you're saying you're surprised that I spent the time with you. But I think I told you at the time, I'm almost certain I remember telling you, but if I didn't tell you at the time, I'll, I'll say now. A lot of people know that soul words is, you know, they know soul words. But actually, um, soul words is a DBA. It's doing business as. The name of my actual organization is called Chabad Leadership Institute. Chabad because it's all about the Rebbe's approach. Chabad is changing people through educating them and helping them think differently but it's called leadership institute because really the way that i see what i do is to empower leaders now leaders don't have to be you know mayors and governors and uh ceos a, a leader could be a mother in her home as a leader uh, a, a school teacher in 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 their classroom as a is a, is a leader uh everyone is as a leader in some capacity and i really see that as a big part of my shlich is, is when I feel like somebody is going to take a message and they're going to teach it to other people, I, to me, I see that as time well spent. So if I'm going to say something to somebody who's influential, somebody who has a platform, and then they're going to take that and run with it, to me, that was a smart use of my time. So in fact, I might even say it's a little bit selfish because instead of talking to a thousand people for, for uh, even if I'd speak to them each for a minute, that's a thousand minutes. Instead, talk to one person for 60 minutes who's going to spread that out to the equivalent of 10,000 minutes. And that's, that's what I feel uh, I did, and that's what I, uh, what, that's just what I try to do. So, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very meaningful to be able to share Hasidus and um, its teachings to my clients through Healthy Living. And I really thank you for um, putting me on that path. It's, uh, and that yeah. led, and that, and that led to our podcast too. And we share a lot of your teachings, pretty much in I'd say every conversation, and even when we do interviews, you've got so many great quotes like um, "People don't care what you, what you, you know until they know, know that you they care," know you or care, yeah. humility. People care what you know until they know that you care. I mean, many quotes. We just even did our last interview with Rifka Goldstein. And uh, somehow we shared one of your quotes. It was, situations are controlled by Hashem. The one area where Hashem gives us control is in our thoughts. So wherever you are, you are for sure in the right place. You may not just be thinking about it in the right way. We shared that quote. Every right. episode, somehow you come up. <laughs> not Hashem. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I, I do what you mentioned, Eden David, and I do want to say, um, as far as our pod podcast goes, that I could not do it without my podcast partner, and we are a real team. And I thank Hashem for for guiding me to to Eden and and to you as well. And and I would would just offer some commentary. Not that anyone's asking for my social commentary, but I believe the success of your podcast is 
because there is so much chassidus in what you do. Not that necessarily it's branded that way, which is probably wise that it's not, that's not like the, the label that someone sees, but there's so much chassidus in what you guys are doing. And I think that's what the world's hungry for. And that's part of the popularity. So I'm, uh, I'm glad to have yes. some hand in that. You absolutely do. And I couldn't agree more. To the Thank Hasidus. you so much for coming on. Thanks for uh, the page and all the your influence. We really see uh, the results coming in, and for all the vital work you do on the podcast. It's a pleasure. I've enjoyed, this... I've enjoyed many of those episodes, by the way. I do listen to the podcast with. Yeah, I loved it. I'm so glad. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. And I do want to say that I did love Rabbi Ta- your your parenting course this uh, past year. It has done so much for me as a mother, and I want to thank you for that as well. I, and, and that connects to what I was talking about before about leadership. Um, who are the primary leaders in the most important unit of any society? Parents, because they lead the home, and the home is the most important unit of, of any culture, of any nation. So empowering parents, empowering mothers and fathers to be leaders in their home, to me, that is, again, time well spent, and it's a good way to focus my energies. So the parenting, uh, the parenting webinar is really all part of that. And I should mention, as long as we're talking about the parenting webinar, uh, Levi and Basi Shemta from uh, West Bloomfield, Michigan, from the Friendship Circle, the original Friendship Circle, they're the ones who came up with the vision of the parenting webinar, and they pushed it through, and they invested in the the development of it, and it's become, Baruch Hashem, it's just really growing, and it'll continue to grow. Amen, amen. I, it, it, it's something, I would never want you to give this up, because I know how much it's done for my life um, as a mother of my ch- of my children, older children and younger children, and I know all the women that I've been doing this parenting course with feel the same way, because uh, it's evident on the chat, and I've heard from a lot of them personally, um, it's really so empowering and soulful. And who doesn't want to be a soulful parent? Who doesn't want to connect to their child soul to soul? That's right. And that's what this parenting course does. Yeah, and Baruch Hashem, it's been well received. So, yeah. Yes, Baruch Hashem. So may you continue to go from strength to strength. It's an honor to be a part of your campaign. Amen. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much for all your help and for the getting the word out and being a, a real... Uh, champion of this cause it's a pleasure and thank you for everything you're welcome thank you wow that was nice yeah we got another uh well a few different people lined up Amazing. but uh, i want to a few donations i wanted to mention and ask you about wow we got a beautiful one from uh, mitchell and karen uh Kuflik. Kuflik. yeah good friends yeah and fiveish and tamar pesner Locally Three thousand six hundred dollars. Keep up all the great work. Wow. Rachmiel nice. and Rifka Lea Jacobson. Three thousand six hundred dollars through the Inside Out podcast. Continue at Slacha. Mushy and Sterny Fogelman. Uh, Twenty four hundred dollars. Mendel and Ray Rachi. Is it Rachi or Ray Rachi? Rachi. I'm sorry. Rachi. Uh, Simons, that's uh, oh. Los Angeles. Oh, oh, great! I, I'm nice. assuming twenty four hundred dollars. This is wow, one. nice. You spoke there with Ellie Nash, right? Yes, I did. Yes, yes I remember that. Okay, and we have anonymous in appreciation for Rabbi Taub from a weekly listener twenty four hundred dollars, and uh, the Christian fan. It's not Christian. <laughs> the Kirstein family. Good. Two thousand one hundred. And sixty dollars in honor of Ephraim Lev Adler of Blessed Memory and Robinson the Guard of Blessed Memory, and then we have the uh, Rabbi Yisrael Duchman Chesed Fund, the Duchman family, two thousand twenty dollars. Um, anonymous. You know, do you have the tiny CDs there? Yes, we just do. grab that because we spoke it's about it last bar- night yeah. about the mapping the Tanya three our CD box set, and that was also from the, what's the name of the foundation? Yisrael Duchman Chesed Fund? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Yisrael Duchman Chesed Fund, I believe, was also uh, behind this. It was, was an early project of mine. Yeah. 
And I'm, I'm mentioning some of the bigger donations, uh, but because I, I, I just clicked, it lets, lets you see. But every donation not just counts, and I know that's a cliche, um, but but it, but it's meaningful. And we spoke about that yesterday because uh, it means a lot for Rabbi Taub to know that people are actually receiving his work and benefiting from his work and and uh, noticing and appreciating because when you're working in a virtual world which today more and more is uh, where we're at, it's hard to know who's on the other end. Telecommuting, fax machines, everything. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, can we do a joke? And then we got some really cool stuff going on. Um, I want to do a joke. Um, uh, Shammai, um, can we get uh, clip number two for a joke? No, that's mailbag. You know what? Let's do the mailbag. Go ahead. Uh, clip two. Let's do mailbag. We said we would take people's questions. We have a few questions. Okay. And... We got a bunch of questions. I picked a few that I want to do tonight if we have time. No, it's going to come on in a second. It's very important to do that. It creates hype. It creates uh, something. So here's a question, all right? We did one. We did one question last night. We did. another one? Yeah. Okay. No, that's not the one I wanted to do. <laughs> one second. Okay. Um, okay. Not a question. Not a question. Uh, I would be happy to hear Robbie Taub's outlook on having patience. It's more of a comment, really, but I think it is a question. I don't think we have time for that one. <laughs> oh, very good. Very, very good. Wow. Okay. No, but can I really tr- you know what? answer it seriously? Because yeah. somebody wrote it in and... You know, they could be listening right now, and we want to give them – took time. We should respect the fact that they, they wrote it. So it's not a question, but they would like to hear my perspective on having, on having patience. So my perspective on having patience is, is like this. Um, here's what I understand. I understand that – you know, there's an expression, time takes time. Time Sounds takes time. time. Yeah. Which is sort of a truism. Of course, time takes time. But what that means is you have to respect the process. Um, We talk about chassidus, this concept called panemius, which means literally translated panemius means inwardness, but doesn't mean what it sounds like. You know, you hear inwardness, you think it means like being like an introvert or something like that. Inwardness means... um, the opposite of superficiality. Superficiality means a change that is fleeting because it doesn't really affect you deeply. You know, like you get all hyped up, you get excited, you get inspired, and you make a change, and then it's short-lived. So that's that's chitzonius. Um And that's even when it's sincere. It's a, The person didn't want to be a chitzayin. You know, there's there's a more brute expression of chetzenius, where the person's deliberately being a faker and they're trying to fool people. But I'm even talking about somebody who's sincere and they want to really change, but it's not really uh, mentally and emotionally integrated. It's just uh, excitement. Excitement isn't a real genuine emotion. It's just uh, a, a sensation of something. So it, 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 it dwindles. Easy come, easy go. Panemius is real change, real change. And real change requires that we go through a process and there's no shortcut to that process. You know, the, the Tanya on the very uh, front page, the title page of the Tanya says that the whole book is based on explaining a scriptural verse. It says uh, this matter, meaning Torah observance, is very close to you, very close to you. And uh, that sounds like sort of a almost outlandish assertion. It's very close to you, like like it's such a slam dunk. It's so easy for everybody. So the Alter Rebbe acknowledges that that may not have been everyone's experience, and he says that the purpose of the book is lavoir to explain 
Eichu Karev, how it is close to you. And then he says, Bader Haruko Uktsara. And sometimes people explain that that means that he's going to outline a path to Torah observance that is long and short. Um, or sometimes they say that it's an explanation which is both long and short. But they're really the same thing. The explanation and the path itself. Either way, you have this paradox of long and short. What is long and short? Long and short means it's going to take time. It's not overnight. but And that's why it's long. But it's effective. It leads to permanent change. And in that respect, it's short. So the question was, my perspective on patience, my perspective on patience is this. To sit around and do nothing, that clearly is not uh, what we're saying. We're saying uh, have patience. Have patience. No, we don't mean sit around and do nothing. When we say have patience, what we mean is engage in the process, but realize that the growth for today may be relatively small, may be relatively small growth today. But if you're engaged in a process and you don't jump ship and leave that process, abandon that process when it gets difficult or boring or whatever, because it does get boring, because the nature of growth that's panemius, it is, it, 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 to be quite frank, it can become, you know, sort of, uh, old, what do they call it? old hat. It can become uh, boring. So, but if you commit to it and you say, you know, a little change every day, a little growth every day, uh, my reactivity to the things that set me off is still there, but it's a little bit less today than it was yesterday. Uh, yeah, I'm still bothered by a lot of things that I wish I, I, I weren't bothered by, but I'm a little less bothered by them today than I was yesterday. So patience means that as long as the process is ongoing, as long as there's a commitment to remain engaged in the process, let it work itself out. Let things take their course. That's patience. Understand that anything that's worthwhile is a process. And by the way, this is I'm not saying this to be like a fundraising pitch. I'm saying it because it's on my mind because I'm thinking about the fact this is our third fundraiser. This fundraising has been a process. Because, you know, like last night we had the Schottensteins on and I, and I said how they – before I even did my first campaign, they sponsored that I should make my first website. My first website was, frankly, it was, I mean, uh, it, it was professional, but it wasn't like what we have now. And, and that was like the first thing. And then a year later, after I built up an audience because I had that website, so then we did our first campaign. And after the first campaign, well, then we redid the website and made the whole beautiful website. And then we did our second campaign. And then we were able to build the studio. So... And, and now I'm already thinking about, well, next year I want to have uh, retreats and Shabbatons, and I have all this, these visions for what I want Soul Words to be. And, you know, in theory, why can't we be there already? And I understand, though, it's a process. And part of the process, I, I mean, to be quite frank, this, this live stream, it's hard work. It's hard work. And uh, asking people for money <laughs> is hard work. But I realize that it's all part of the process is necessary you can't just have a vision of here's a message that i would like thousands of people to be on board with okay that's 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 nice that you want that but there has to be a path there has to be a way for that to happen and what do we do what do we do quite frankly what's the process day by day record another class make another clip send out another whatsapp broadcast post another YouTube video, another Torah anytime, do another speaking engagement, teach another class. And cumulatively, you see, you see the cumulative effect is that we have this virtual community. We have thousands of people who are being affected in some way or another by the work here at Soul Words. And we have hundreds of people who are voting with their feet. They're coming out, not physically, but virtually, to, to show up and to make a contribution and to write a, ded ded uh, to write a dedication, which I really appreciate. I like those dedications. It's very encouraging. And at any rate, but the question was about patience, yeah. and I ended up talking about my own personal... I'm running out of that. Actually. You're running out of patience. Okay, time, take it away. But wait, yeah, you're well, Slow and steady wins the race. That's slow, what yeah, that's a way to reduce it to a... A, a cliche. A cliche. A, a, yeah. a Hallmark card. Exactly.
but it's true. That's why cliches are cliches because they're so true. There's a reason it works. That's right. I'm a sucker for a Hallmark card, and when it, you don't see those stores anymore in the malls. You don't even see malls anymore. You don't see malls. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, what we have the Haggadah here, by the way, which yes. anyone who donates at three hundred and sixty dollars or thirty six dollars a month. You get the first... Uh, no, it's $30 a month, which is $360 a year, which is effectively $720 for the campaign. Right. You get the uh, Four Cups Recovery Haggadah. The reason I thought of the Haggadah was... You want to read this text, by the way? Yeah. Just to interrupt you, see who it is and what they wrote? Oh, I saw that. I was going to read the donations before. Um, th- this one or the last message? The, the last message. Wow. You're almost there. In all caps. Baruch Hashem. All caps. Who's it from? Your fan. Oh, thank you. That's from Rishi Deitch, and we saw her donation just before. Wow. Oh, you did? Yeah, she oh, donated. That's nice. just, uh, I meant to read it before. But um, uh, yeah, thank you, Rishi Deitch. And, and last year, Rishi ran the whole phone the call center because we were in Crown Heights. This year, we did it all and here in five And I should mention, I'm sorry, I didn't mention it earlier. We do have some volunteers here led by your daughter, Tybal. Yes. And um, I don't want to misdo the names but i do know that my brother-in-law mandy garlitsky is here making calls oh, here i recruited him Ooh, he's here already yeah not only do i volunteer myself i volunteer other people your whole family behalf. your in-laws yeah. even that's yeah, like yeah. it's another level yeah okay uh, thank you mandy and oh no maybe we'll get them to come on he's a funny fella um and uh and there's two other fell i'm gonna get their names i i forgot them um but thank you and yeah, so uh, Rishi donated earlier, and uh, I saw the message. Uh, for the man who brought Shara Batachin to the masses, including me, Rishi Deitch, $400. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. Wow. And I want to... So, oh, I was saying about the Haggadah, because I think this is a question that people have sometimes. You know, we spoke about paradoxes, yeah. right? And then there's also truisms, right? Yeah. Which is more like, and sometimes redundancies, right? Yeah. Like time takes time. Like, what is that? Yeah, right? what's up with that? Or first things first. Right, of course. Or, um, like, what's the chiddush in that? Right. Everyone knows the first right. things are first. Right. right. And, and then there's also, uh, like, a dualism. Like, you can have something like... Um, the long short way thing where you know yeah. the or um or something like okay and this is a cliche but i was thinking something else something like there's times for just do it and there's times for slow and steady wins the race right i mean i could you imagine if uh, nike sponsored jerseys for or, or athletes with slow, slow and steady, and steady wins, wins the race, race? Yeah, well, like they sponsored the marathon with that slogan yeah so, but does that mean that it's inherently not true, or it just means that when you're in a race, that wouldn't really be the time That's for right. that? Everything slogan. has its context. But somehow, sometimes there's like a lack. Of, some we think that there's, we get caught up in like, is there a mistake here? You had this. We mentioned yesterday this five-hour marathon uh, with Yossi Jacobson, and you said there's a part two coming. Yeah, Metz Hashem. Um. And it was uh, about Yoel Khan yeah. and his his impact on how we learn Chassidus. And you spoke a lot about what if there's maybe one of the most famous quotes when everyone says Yoel Khan is Savensa Chavumaret. Yeah. And which people would take as like dismissive, a, a cop like out. didn't want a cop out, he didn't want to answer. Which means but, like depends what we're talking in context right. of what context matters. Like people ask a question, it would say what well, it depends what what's the context. Right. And people will say, oh, that's not really it. But that is the truest answer, because I think that's a problem. You know, last night we were speaking about things and ideas. Anyone who didn't hear that, you can go back to last night's recording. It's only four and a half hours. Just watch it until you get to the things and ideas part. But remember, we're talking about <laughs> we're talking about things and ideas about the idea that uh, a thing is sort of limited to physical space. So it can only be in one place at a time. It can only if, if it's one way, it can't be the other way because that's sort of the inherent limitations of space and time. Um, you know, if it's black, it's not white. If it's tall, it's not short. But ideas, by definition, are fluid. And ideas are characterized by the context in which they're placed. So if you want to understand an idea properly, you have to understand the, the, the relative 
quality of every of every idea. I mean, I, you know, can I give an example that might sound really technical, but I'm sure there's like two people out there who will enjoy this, and then we'll get back to some more light stuff. Okay, I'll give you an example. In Tanya, I mentioned Tanya before, and there's the Tanya three-hour CDs sponsored by the uh, Yisrael Duchman uh, Chesed Fund. Okay, but anyways, in Tanya, he says that there's something called uh, koiches and nefesh, where the, which are the uh, the soul's powers, the capacities, the potentials. Potential for uh, cognition, potential for uh, emotions. And he calls that mahus the 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 essence of the soul. As opposed to what? As opposed to the the, the levusha nefesh, the the clothing or the manifestations or the outer expressions. So he says in Tanya, don't focus so much on the on the mahusa nefesh, on your internal makeup, because that's very hard to change. You can't force yourself to change what you like and dislike. But focus on the levushia nefesh, focus on the outer expressions, and you can choose behaviors. You can do something you don't like. If it's the right thing to do, do it even if you don't like it, okay? So that's what he says in Tanya. But then in Teira Or, which is also a safer from the, from the Alter Rebbe, my modem of the Alter Rebbe, so he says that, that the, the nefesh is beyond any shape, not just physical shape, but any description. Even the tzir, even the the conceptual idea or map of Eser Koiches. So the soul itself cannot be described. The essence of the soul, Mahus HaNafesh, cannot be described even by the ten soul powers. He says, oh, and this, that in Tanya, because <laughs> the author was the author of Tanya, he says, and this, that in Tanya, I said that the, the soul powers are muhus nefesh. He said that was relative to the subject of Tanya, because in Tanya we're speaking about focusing on behaviors which are outer, as opposed to the inner uh, qualities and characteristics which are, which are much harder to change. So, in, in in relative to the discussion of Tanya, which is about behavioral perfection, we call the soul powers. But if you want to have a larger discussion about the soul itself, no, even the soul powers cannot be called the, the essence of the soul because it's already descriptive. And the essence of the soul would transcend description. Okay, anyways, back to the fun. That was fun. That was fun in a certain way. It was true, Relatively, so it was funny. In context. But wh- why is it, and this is more of a comment really, I'm not really asking, but yeah. it's... It's kind of sad, and that's why I, and I know many others, appreciate your work, is your ability to to deal in the world of nuance. And sadly, there is a lot out there that is lacking that in, in the religious world, in religious commentary. I'll just leave it at that. Um, and uh, and it's, it's sad because it's almost like if you believe, then you can handle nuance. It's like... If you were confident in something, <laughs> you're usually able to handle nuance about it. But if you're not, then you're very uncomfortable with it and very dogmatic. And there's only one way. Like people who are confident in themselves can like change it up. But people who aren't, like it's my way or the highway. And it it's it is sad because, um, like it 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 shows itself for what it is. Um, and it's. It's it's almost heretical. Like if if you can't, it's trying to fit God into a box of limited dogma of like it's got to be very tech a thing. It's a thingify. The yeah, the thingification. Yeah. And that that's why you know I think you, you, if you want to go down this route, I mean this is very like. But I had a practical. Kind of, yeah. But uh, it, sometimes I, th- I think a helpful idea when I try to have this conversation with people, I say, listen, there's a difference between hashkaf and halacha. Halacha, it's actually related to the Tanya today that we were learning about, about the, the power of halacha, because halacha is dealing with actual objects, things. Halacha is rigid in that sense of there's a psak, there is a, there's a right way to do something, okay? Because halacha is talking about the world of things, it's talking about how how big does a cup have to be to use it to wash netila sidai, okay? And in that area of Torah, we do need clear, delineated 
descriptions. I have to know what, what, what's a kosher sukkah. I have to know what are kosher tzitzis. But when it comes to ideas, ideas, not only are they too big to be contained by one perspective, like we were talking about earlier, the truer the idea, the more paradox, the more nuance it's going to be capable of encompassing. Do a thing. I'm just typing so You're much. just typing. Okay, something. no. Okay. I, I want to ask you no. something. Yes. Is... You don't have to make up a question. Just no, no, <laughs> I do. I do. It's, it's more of a comment, really. So, there's a, speaking of paradox, there's a paradox as, you know, if it's spiritual, it's practical. How do you want to... If you want to know if something's spiritual, you ask yourself, is it practical? Right? Yeah, and I even that, that seems like... Right? It's... Um, so... Everything has to come down to the lowest point. I don't mean that in low in reference, but in the no, most practical 100%. sense. It has to. And yet, if you don't appreciate the abstract, if you're stuck in the practical, then you probably won't get it right because you're not starting from the You know, the, the Vilna Gon said, and I'm specifically quoting the Vilna Gon. Well, come on in. Wait a minute. Come, wait oh, it's almost at the door. But I'm going to finish the Vilna Gon quote while you're letting in whoever's here. Who's here? Oh. Who? Ali Marcus is in the studio. I was just telling what the Vilna Gon said. He said... What's that to say about him? What are you trying to say? This is, everything's relative. Okay. It's all context. Uh, Vilna Gon said that somebody who will learn the soid, the mystical, esoteric secrets of the Torah, will also understand pshat, remez, and drush, mm. the more literal levels. However... One who does not learn soid, then even pshat remes drush, he will not understand. So, in order to have a practical understanding of things, this is what I'm reiterating what we're saying. In order to have a practical understanding of things, you have to have an abstract understanding of things. If you have an appreciation of the spiritual, this is what will give you the ability to function within the material. Anyways, Ellie Marcus is here. Why am we talking when we I have world-famous singing talent and Wait, piano playing talent mics? and musical talent? Does he have a mic? Uh, yeah. Hey, yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Back in the studio. This is great. We have a Ellie's special guest back. coming on in five minutes. So if we can go right into Are you ready? Yeah, just yeah walk let's, in. let's jump in. Okay, right. like, put him to work sure right away works. before our guest comes on. We say that's a beautiful, beautiful jacket. The Thank beautiful you. Beautiful double. It's hard to come by the. Wow. Uh, Fly. That's why they pay me the big pay bucks. The big bucks. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do What are we doing, Chaim? Should we do? We uh, could you? Could you? Uh, how about a niggin? Uh, any niggin? Start with a niggin. Start with a niggin. You know, it's uh, it's still uh, Yud Kislev. It's Matzah right. Yud Kislev. <laughs> so. Um, it's only a handful of Nugunim from uh, from the Mittler Rebbe's era. Uh, we had the Kapelia, which we sang yesterday. Uh, did you talk about Pada B'Sholem? We didn't, no. We didn't touch that, okay. Um, and but then most people associate it with Yuteskos, but Pada B'Sholem right. really is also... Because the, uh, yeah, the relationship with, with uh, because the, the Tillim of the day, the daily portion of Tillim for Yud Kislev is... Uh, is chapter uh, is Perak Nun Hey where you have Pod B'Shalom, the actual capital of Tilm, where it's from. Uh, we have time for Pod B'Shalom? Yeah, I think we can do a, it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Let's pick a good key. Pod B'Shalom, Nafshi Mikrom Li. Get some more piano in the manner. Oh, you, 
took off his coat, boom. Right straight in from the cold, you know. Pada Vishalim. Yeah. Oh, Pada Vishalim is a paradox. Yeah. Shalom is a paradox. We have a very special guest oh, here. Oh, okay. Um, can we go to Zoom, Shammai? Our guest is in the room already. Should be seen on the screen. Oh, uh, Ali, could you go to... Uh, I gave it away. Landscape, could you... <laughs> Oh, look. Look who's there. Wait, uh, we need... You're on mute. You're on mute. Just one second. I'm not on mute. I'm on said. Oh, there you go. There he Actually, is. but the phone didn't come through yet. It didn't uh, fully go to landscape. You're on... Is your orientation locked? On the, oh, there we go. There we go. All right, just keep it on. Let me get even a little more lights over here. So that... 
This is my studio, Rabbi Taub. You like it? Oh, that's you have a studio. studio. Oh, you know nice. what? Go back. Go back to uh, <laughs> vertical mode. That's, that's good. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. That's good. We see him. We see Ali. Ali Nash, our friend, our supporter, one of our matchers. Here we are. So uh, here we yeah. are again. <laughs> here we are. I want, you know, the other day I did a video for uh, this Chabad Global Giving Day thing I've been working on. And um, the, I guess the camera was up like this. And my father sends me a message like, that video, did you have a yarmulke on? Because you really should have. And so just want to make sure, Pops, if you're watching. <laughs> I'm proudly wearing my yarmulke. Everything's about angles. Got to get the right angle. Yeah. <laughs> right, it's true. <laughs> angles the, and angels. Remember the first like Zoom era, the first like two months of COVID with the Zooms and like yeah. the baby boomers straight up the nostril look? <laughs> 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 or the chin, the chin. You go lay down and you know, the chin look. Yeah. <laughs> and then everyone was yeah. doing it. But then, uh, like, uh, by, then everyone just gave up. In the recovery meetings I go to for a while, they had to make a rule. Like, no being on Zoom and dead. <laughs> Show some respect. <laughs> Sit so up. So I stopped coming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I stopped coming. All of a sudden, everyone finds everything triggering. Huh? I have like all, all the little right. snowflakes come out of the woodwork. You know, that mug you have there, the color of it, you know, when my dad would beat me, he would often have a gray mug on his desk. I'm like, okay, dude. <laughs> Okay, D different meeting, but similar problems. You know, you know we, we, uh, last night we had um, David Nida Schattenstein on, who were talking about being matchers, also matchers. Um, and they were talking about how they got started with soul words. And David said something that was very, like, I took it as a big compliment. He said, I like winners. Like, in business, I like winners. And in my tzedakah, in my giving, I like winners. I, and that made me feel very, very good that he feels that. That's nice. Yeah, Baruch Hashem. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, Baruch Hashem. Hey, Chase, can I share a story from last year when we did this uh, same thing? Yeah, please. Okay, so it was, it was my was last year. It was 12.30 or so at night. I didn't get prime time. Like, I get this. Like, I, I feel special. Like, I'm like the... Uh, like yep. 60 minutes time slot. Yeah, yeah. More mainstream. Yeah, yeah. Right. So last year you delegated me to uh, 1230. You didn't know how I would perform, but apparently I did well. <laughs> so I got <laughs> You're ready for prime time now. You, and this is without you even knowing the story, or maybe you know the story, but some people listening may not. So I, I got on at 1230, and I was sure no one was watching. I was sure who's watching a live stream at 1230 on a, on a Mitch Chavez. So we spoke, we were speaking freely. You outed me about learning from time to time. And on it, I dropped something about a talk I gave on addiction to pornography. And I saw, I can't see you now because you're very distant, but I saw your face drop. And it's like, oh man, did Ellie really have to come on here to my live stream to talk about addiction to pornography? He couldn't, couldn't find another place. And here I am doing it again. <laughs> right, so I saw your face. and I, <laughs> So I saw your face. And I'm like, I don't know, maybe I made a mistake. No, I didn't think too long. I just, it's what came out. I didn't, I wasn't planning on it. It just, the conversation that came out. Two days later, I get an email from someone. Um, it's very clear that the email was made specifically for this purpose. Okay. It was like the email. I don't even, I don't want to say it just in case he uses the email for anything else now. Right. But it was something like. Um, Asking for help at gmail.com. That kind of thing. Exactly. I, right. I get those all yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, the guy doesn't mention his name, and he says, "Hey, I happen to be um, on Herb Chase's live stream, and this guy shows up, and next thing he's talking about his porn addiction." I'm like, what? "What's going on here?" And he's like, "I'm a I'm a rabbi in such and such a place, and I struggle with this problem. I've never spoken to anyone about it, and when I heard you talking, I said I saw you talking about it comfortably. It's an issue I have." Maybe we can, maybe you can help me. So I said, sure, I'd be glad to. And I think this is a great first step because I tell everyone who's struggling with it is that this disease lives in shame and lives in, lives in secrecy. So you're taking the great first step by emailing me, even though it's anonymous, it's still a better step than not sending an email. And why don't we get on the phone? So he said, great, but I can't, I'm not telling you my name. I said, I don't need a name. What do I need a name for? So we spoke and I don't remember exactly how the conversation went. But every month or two after the campaign, Rob Chase, I got an email from him updating me on the status and how he's doing. 
Eventually, he communicated with his wife, with his in-laws, with his family. And then a couple of months ago, believe it or not, I got an email from his real address. Oh. So a very, a very fine guy who is struggling. And I'm, uh, that's, I'll tell you, that's how I knew we were doing something good and supporting the campaign is good came from good. So I'm glad to be back here at a more primetime slot. And uh, if someone struggles with this only, this is not for, uh, for uh, <laughs> this is not for um, donations. But if someone's struggling in this way, my email address is elinash at gmail.com. You're free to use it. To or if they have it. any of these things, and I'll be glad to, uh, to respond to it. And even if it's another issue, I'm very happy to support if there's a secret. I, I believe secrets uh, kill people. So I've, a lot of people have felt comfortable. A lot of people have felt comfortable sharing their secret with me, and I'm proud that this person who heard us for the first time last year, Tim Chase, shared that secret with me, and he's in a much better place today. Baruch Hashem. That's... Did you know this story? Um, you know, I think right after you told me that somebody reached out to you, but I didn't know that it developed into a relationship, and I and I, I'm positive I didn't know that he told you his real identity, and so I didn't keep you up to date. Yeah, yeah. What do you think of what do you think of it? Like you say, good comes from good, and here's how I look at it. By the way, it didn't bother me that you spoke about it. I mean, you look if 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 you were just trying to think of something shocking to say, it would bother me. But if you were right. speaking from the heart and you were speaking because it's something that's important to you, something that's real, then no, no harm can come from that. And like you say, secrets kill people. So to, to, to suppress something because, um, because of shame is... Uh, you know, it's interesting. I spoke to just a little side point, and I'll get back to, to what I'm saying here, but I spoke to... I have a group of mashpiyim, and I won't say, I don't think it's a secret. Again, you know, we don't want to have secrets, but uh, I don't have permission. Uh, I, I, some things are private. Some things some I was things about to right. ask right. you, right. Ellie, because before right. you came on, we were talking about the, diff the nuance and, right. and the differences when uh, context. And the, when I was in yeshiva with you, the 2003, it was the first time someone challenged a very binary black white way of thinking that I at the time I was 15 I had and I would we would have long conversations and it was the first like I started to like being able to handle nuance I told you this before it was helped very you think yeah and that's really what thinking is but you once gave a very nice uh, I mean it's it's out there but you, you you phrased it very well and you posted it like on social media uh, a few years ago just a very simple introduction to the difference between private and secret yes so this, what I'm about to tell you is, I don't even know if it's private, but I'm not at li I, I don't want to assume something is public. So Should we say the difference? Because some people are going to be stuck on that. Oh, yeah. Okay, fine. Go so. ahead. Yeah, elaborate. Yeah, I just don't want to lose the train of thought. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so private is something we share with specific people. They're actually opposites. Private is something we share with specific people. Sometimes it's ourself, but this is private. We share it only with specific people. Secrets are things that you keep from certain people. So notice a secret, you may be comfortable talking to a stranger on the subway about it, but you won't be comfortable telling your wife about that thing because the secret's about who we're keeping, it, who we're keeping what from and private is about who we're sharing what with. That's right. Exactly yeah. the opposite. Right, and therefore some, something that's private can create a connection because you're choosing Correct. to share it, whereas something that's secret so that's what it is. is by definition a destruction of an intimate bond because it's right. so, something you're hiding. Right, so Chaim, not only is it not nuance, they're completely different things. They're exactly the opposites. Private and secret is exactly the opposite. Contradictive yeah. versus a paradox, meaning to say it actually is a contradiction, not something where the, yeah. yeah. So uh, what I was about to tell you is Back I have a group. Uh, I, uh, I, so it's not a secret, and it may not even be private, but you have to be careful uh, when you're involving other people. Well, what you share. So, but I'll tell you, I have a group of guys who are all mashpiyim in yeshivas, and I think that you had a little hand in this. I don't know how how much you realize you had a hand in this. You know that after I spoke to a certain group, I think I called you and I told you I was a little bit frustrated. Do you remember yes. that? I remember this. Okay, and 
the good that came from it is that a small group of them said, you know what, let's continue the discussion. And we have a group, every month we get together on Zoom. These are mashpiyam in mainstream Meister's Chinuch. Mashpiyam means like, it's hard to describe it to someone who's not uh, privy to like the Hasidic inside baseball, but the teachers of Hasidic teachings, they're not just teachers, they're meant to be mentors and, and, uh, and guides. So we, we, we meet every month and we talk about things that are going to help us in be Jewish schools. Teachers. Hmm? In They're Jewish schools. Guides in Jewish schools. In, yeah. in the schools, right. So last session, and actually, um, I was just earlier today, I saw another friend of ours, a mutual friend and another matcher. I saw Getsy Felig today, and I mentioned this to him as well because he's also, um, he, he, he actually said to me a line which I said to this group, he said, you know, the mashpiyam sit in the fabreng and they talk about ice cream. Oh, don't eat ice cream. And, right, he says, I didn't understand. What's, what, what's this, this monster called ice cream? I didn't find, I, I didn't find out until it was too late. You know, what, what are they, why didn't they talk straight? Why didn't they just talk straight? So what, this is one of the lines that I said. But I spoke to them. I said, you know, sometimes, you know, there's something called, uh, you know, speaking politely you know you don't have to purposely say something for shock value god forbid but when you have to explain something explain it and the fact that something needs to be explained and you're refusing to say it clearly itself creates shame around it and i told them that when it comes to certain struggles it's very often if you want to talk about spiritual destruction if you want to talk about something that can really derail somebody it's not so much the act itself as it is the shame around it which compounds the act and then becomes this whole this whole other uh, identity, secret, to use the, the word, the, the distinction you're using before. Yeah. And so we were speaking about being a safe place for young men to be able to share their struggles in a non-judgmental way to actually get the spiritual help that the mashpia is there to, to provide. So you make an interesting point. I want to make sure I understand this. What you're saying is, is that in an effort to be polite, the mashpia not only is not doing a service to the issue, he's furthering the exact issue that's holding the person back from getting help and right. healing it. Right. By, by describing it in a way that connotes shame. Right. Because if it weren't so shameful, then why are we dancing around? Then you would just say the word. Right, we would just say it. Right. There are a few ideas that um, every single sponsee, I open about the fact that I'm in recovery, which means I have sponsees. Some are Jewish, some are non-Jewish. But every single sponsee that I've had, I think I've shared this idea with. Um, And I may need your help with the Hebrew words. I tell them there's a prayer. I think we say it... um, Said a few times, I think in Marev and maybe in Krishma, and it says um, to to remove the satan from before me and from from in front of me and from behind me, right? Yeah, yeah. In the Hasidic, uh, yeah, the very end of. Yeah, the, what's the words? The, give me a sither. We'll, we'll uh, give, give me the big sither right here. Um, well, this is one of my. We'll do it correct. So I keep a sither here in case we have real scholars such as yourself, <laughs> and then we can. People don't realize. People don't realize, I'm telling you, I have very, people are going to think I'm joking. They don't realize that most of the discussions we have, well, a lot of discussions we have are about fundraising because you've been a big um, influence in my life in that area, not just as a giver, but coaching me and motivating me. But most of our discussions are, are of a spiritual nature. We talk about chassidus and we talk about sikhas and all that kind of stuff. Um Okay, so right here, we have in the Hashkiveno, this is at the end of the, the uh, blessings after the Shema. We say... Uh, please, please keep Ellie on as long as he... Ellie, stay on as long as he can, because since he came on, I'm just getting... They're flying on the screen. Are, I don't know. What's going on? The rate, we went up like like 200% oh, in the rate of donations, we're getting donations money. coming in. It's just... Oh, donations are coming oh, you're good in. Luck. I turned about? off the noise, but the cash <laughs> register has been flying. Right. Oh, nice. Okay, so we say, So that's talking about removing different things from us. 
like uh, enemies and pestilence and the sword, meaning violence and uh, famine. But then we say, Vahaser Satan Milfaneno. You should remove the Satan. Satan, usually in English, translated as Satan, but it means the adversary, the adversary or the accusing angel. Remove it, Milfaneno, from in front of me. Ume Achareno, and from, actually, it's, I should say it's plural, from in front of us, Milfaneno. Remove the adversary or accusing angel, Milfaneno, from in front of us. Ume Achareno, and from behind us behind us and what was taught to me is that this one right so the one in front of us is the one that's enticing us and saying hey why don't you check out this flashy object or this new website or something else and the one behind the one behind is the shame it's one who says oh now look what you did if you did that you're not you're not worthy of this and you're not worthy of that and you're a terrible person and so on and so forth and that's the shame and the way it was taught to me i think it was a rebel or something who's who said this, is that the first one I can deal with, the second one is the one that, uh, the one in front of us can be dealt with. It's the one behind us that creates a real destruction. And that's been my experience with, uh, with recovery. So, well, exactly what you're saying is that the shame that sets in, that's the prison. The lock on the door, the, like, all of that, yes, because people can get encouraged and enticed to do something. And then afterwards they say, okay, I don't want to do that again. It doesn't feel right. But when there's a shame and they feel like a bad person, they can't talk about it, then the mind starts spinning on it. And it's very difficult to get out of that prison without speaking to someone. So if someone needs to, asking for help, asking for help, 977 is probably available at gmail.com. You can make the email address and email me, or you can use your name, whichever one. I'm happy to be the... Uh... <laughs> oh, you're making up an email address for people. You're saying... <laughs> yes, if they need it. Still 977, available. you're saying there's 976 people already who did it, then... <laughs> Uh huh. Okay. All right. Join the club. Join, always just join say club. that you're you're asking for a friend. You're asking for a friend. Yeah. Asking for a friend. The yeah. famous story yeah. of the Tzemach Tzedek. Yeah. But that that that's that's not a secret anymore. <laughs> Everyone no, knows that. Secret. By the way, one of the things since we're talking about the Tzemach Tzedek and talking about stories of 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 Rabbeim, um, one of the things that I mentioned to these Mashpiyim uh, is that in Bossi Lagani, the, the Rebbe's first mimer. Yud Shvat Tosh and Yud Aleph. So the Rebbe tells different stories of the Rebbeim about their Avas Yisrael, about their love of fellow Jews. And if each story is a different type of a story, like the Alter Rebbe story is about on, in the middle of Yom Kippur taking care of a, a woman who had just given birth and chopping wood and preparing a fire and that type of self-sacrifice. But the story of the Mitla Rebbe, and it's interesting because today Yud Kislev today was Yud Kislev, is the Yem HaGeula of the Mitle Rebbe. The Mitle Rebbe was the son of the, the Alter Rebbe, and he went free from prison today. So the Mitle Rebbe's story of his love for a fellow Jew is that, and the way the Rebbe describes the story is that a younger man came into Yechidus, a young man was in a private audience with the Mitle Rebbe, and he complained about one of the things that young people often complain about, meaning a spiritual struggle. And the Rebbe didn't say exactly but it, not because of the shame of it because of the being polite you don't have to spell out but th- what i was point- hoping to must be on one well what i was pointing out is the normalization of it the rebbe said he complained about one of those things the young people complain about in other words right. <laughs> don't make it seem like you're the only guy who ever had this issue what are you talking about this is a thing that young people complain about and maybe not only young people but this is a thing it's a thing and then the rest of the story is that the Mitle Rebbe showed him, he rolled up his sleeve and he showed him how it physically affected him. It made him weak. So one of the, one of the, the, the Mashpin was saying like, you know, I, what do you do with that story? Because it makes it seem like, oh, you're not only, you're, you're so bad, but you're like, you're hurting the Rebbe. I said, that's not the point of that story. The point of that story is even somebody who felt that bad, the Rebbe was showing him, I'm with you. To the point where we're in this together. We're going through this together. So you think you've disconnected yourself from everything holy? No, quite to the contrary. We're, 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 you haven't separated yourself from me, and I'm with you. So I told them they have, to, they have to make that message loud and clear, that you haven't separated yourself from anything, and you haven't changed who you are, and you haven't changed your identity. But... Uh, 
I think it's something that, well, I got to tell you, when, when, when you speak about things like this, there is a trickle-down effect, and I think it affects lots of different places, including yeshivas, for the good. Should I tell you one of the most important things I've learned from you? And I learned this before I met you. I learned this, I think, in the, in the, in the first book I read, which is the way we met, God of Our Understanding, about addiction, uh, was that the drive, I'm trying to think how you said it, but the drive for addiction, which really, is this your line? Because I think I quoted in your name, but I wasn't sure the other day, okay. that an addict is like everyone else, only more so. Is that your line? Okay, so it's interesting you say that, because <laughs> like 20 minutes before you came on, I said to Chaim, I said, you know, the Jews are like everybody else, only more so. Where, where, where yeah. did I get that from? I got it from Leo Rastin, I think from like the introduction to Joys of Yiddish or something. So he said, like an old saying, the Jews are like everybody else, only more so. So I took okay. that and I repackaged it. I said that addiction is an exaggeration of the human condition. Right. And therefore, you could say that an addict is like everybody else, only more so. Only more so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what Beautiful. they say? So all, 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 all wisdom is plagiarized. Only stupidity is original. <laughs> Thank you, Shane. <laughs> So yeah, I sort of I can take <laughs> credit for. Uh, that I can was take credit as the plagiarist. So yeah. So, what was it? Oh, so what you said was in the book that the drive for whatever it is, alcohol. I think you were thinking, speaking specifically about alcohol, is coming from a very good place. Like it's a misguided drive. And actually, a few years ago, I heard someone who was, uh, I think, a boy from Williamsburg who had a heroin addiction or something, something else deliver a poem at probably Mayor Kessler's um, retreat. And he, he said something that sounded, it was a beautiful poem, brought tears to my eyes when he said it. And he said, God, when I put that needle in, I was aiming for you, I missed my mark. And I thought of, uh, I thought of, I, I, I thought of that line when I heard, was I read, when I read your book the first time, I was steeped in my own shame around addiction. The reason I'm so passionate about it is because that was a door that I had to break out of. And I remember reading your book and hearing it specifically from a rabbi in those terms and say, hey, that drive that you had so much shame, for me, I first, I mean, the first way of getting around it was, okay, the, I don't have to take the Jewish message so seriously. And that's the way I'll get out of the shame. But Judaism definitely had something shameful to teach me there. And let me break free of that. And when I read your book was the first one I said, I, the first time I saw a rabbi paint these same ideas that were helping me in a J Jewish terminology and saying the words, that that drive that's finding these avenues to express itself through alcohol or through pornography or through other drugs or, or otherwise is actually a deeply spiritual drive. It's a drive to connect to, I, I think what you said in the book was to connect to Hashem, to that spiritual completion that someone is looking for, that spiritual connection that someone is looking for that's finding a, uh, a misguided avenue to express itself. Yeah, and I stole this for that, that idea that, that addiction is an attempt to get close to God. I got that from Carl Jung, from the Jung letter to Bill W. And then it comes out right. that Carl Jung said in an interview, really all of my ideas can be found in the teachings of the Magad of Mezrich. Carl Jung said this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, really? yeah. so I mean, the plagiarism, you see the cycle of plagiarism. <laughs> right, it goes in... <laughs> but it t takes us right back to the Magad, so... Right, All right. Which is uh, okay. Like the story you told me about the uh, the guy who goes to what, some town to dig something up and finds out it's under his own stove. Yeah, famous uh, story. Right, it's we a, all yeah. come back. Right. Yeah. So but all... sometimes it it okay. takes hearing it from. I mean, no one opened up a safer of Magad Mezrich and necessarily saw that. Right. It it took going through that process. Right, but Rav Chase, I didn't want to take away from the, um, meaning the fact that you took it from Carl Jung and repeated it, it's different when it comes from a rabbi. Like, you understand the, yeah, it's important, yeah. Of course it's, it's different message, when it comes meaning, from a rabbi. And, you know, I got harassed recently. Carl Jung can't yeah. destroy the Jewish shame. Carl Jung can't get rid of the correct, Jewish shame. Correct, correct. So, I got harassed recently when I started talking about trauma. So, it wasn't bad enough that I spoke about addiction, now I spoke about trauma. And somebody mm -hmm. came to me, they said, you're the Rebbe Shliach, and w which is something I'm deeply proud of. I, Baruch Hashem, I am a Shliach. And they said, you're the Rebbe Shliach. 
maybe you're going to argue and maybe you'll even convince me that trauma needs to be spoken about and needs to be spoken about in our circles and the Jewish people need to hear it. But why does the Rebbe Shliach have to be the one speaking about it? Now, I'll tell you what I answered. And I said, there are many different reasons why I believe that not only uh, it's okay for me to speak about it, but ultimately it's unavoidable that I speak about it. And one of them, which I hope you'll understand, is that if anyone, even one person, has trauma, because they were talking about the, the subject of trauma, has trauma that involves or is associated with someone who looks like me, then the beginning of their healing is going to have to involve hearing something compassionate from someone who looks like me. Exactly. Thank you. Rebshay, so I'll tell you something from critics, because I know that we've had these conversations, and any person who's passionate is also very sensitive to critics and criticism. It's like <laughs> it goes with the territory. That's true. It goes with the ter- it goes with the territory. I was speaking to to a guy who's, you know, one of the few people you meet who like what you see is what you get. Like what he says on the outside is what he feels on the inside. And I see how painful like rejection is. Like anytime he brings up an idea and how it, if it's not responded to appropriately, it breaks him completely. And I said, it's actually, I was telling him, it's actually a good thing. Like he sees other people who aren't so sensitive. Some people are talking and it's just like, it's an idea that came from their tongue and it came out. So what's re- being rejected is like, you know. <laughs> right, how personal <laughs> could I take it? it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Or it's a mask. It's not them. But yeah. other people speak from the depths of their, their soul. And then when it when that, those words come out and yeah. that's rejected, it feels like you're rejecting my soul. So I know as you know, you're a very passionate person and you're passionate about the subjects that you teach. And I guess that also goes along with being sensitive to certain criticism. But what I found, um, especially being involved in some hot button issues in uh in the Chabad world, is that oftentimes our biggest critics can become our biggest fans. Yeah. It's like what they taught us on Mifzayim. You know, when, when you go to a guy and you say, do you want to put on Mifzayim? Do you want to put on Tefillin? And he's like, uh, I don't know, whatever. But when the guy says, get the hell out of you know, <laughs> start yelling at you about it, then you're like, okay, this is my guy. I got to work him, but this guy is going to be my biggest yeah. fan because yeah. he's passionate about my cause. So those critics who are talking about trauma, God willing, we'll get them on board. But do we see his God name willing. in the donation? We see his name in the donation. Uh, I, I am, list, yeah? <laughs> there's there's like a ticker <laughs> scrolling by. By the way, Shamay, re- refresh the ticker. I saw the same names come by a bunch of times. Shamay, you got to refresh the ticker over there. I'm seeing the same names coming by. You hear me? You keep refreshing. Okay, refresh it again. And it was no, I don't see any of the critics yet, but God willing. God willing. Okay, I'll, I'll reach out to them. That's my... Uh... <laughs> uh, uh, LA, <laughs> stay I, on we, until we I hit think, off. I think his email is asking for a friend 523. <laughs> <laughs> so I do have a question for you, Rip Chase. Yeah. Because, um, I, because I'm spending a lot of time, energy, and energy on this um, Chabad Global Giving Day. By the way, two. do a proper pitch. Talk about it. It's amazing. Okay, so Chabad Global Giving Day, in essence... Um, is bringing together as many Chabad organizations, not just Shluchim, but as many Chabad organizations as possible to do a campaign during the month of December. The official launch date is December 8th, but it can go through the month of December. And our main focus is twofold, is A, organizations which have never done a campaign before. So Reb Shays would have been in this category only two or three years ago. Baruch Hashem, you got me out of that category. <laughs> and, and you're part of the inspiration for the campaign. Because those one-on-one conversations that we had and I had with others to encourage them to do a campaign, and I see the power of it, I said, how can I, how can I multiply that by hundreds of people? Because I don't know all of these people. And I'll tell you something amazing. Moshe Kivman has a Chabad house in um, one and a half miles away from my office. I didn't know this until Friday. He's very close to my office, but I don't know him. I don't know him personally. I've heard his name a couple of times and you know, um, maybe we've spoken, but I'm not involved with this organization anyway. He just won a grant from Chabad Global Giving Day, which I'm, I'm going a little bit in circles, but he won a grant from Chabad Global Giving Day. He was on Shlichus for 20 years and he never did a crowdfunding campaign. Wow. 20 years, never yeah. did a crowdfunding campaign. So what, I'm, what we're trying to do with this is encourage as many organizations as possible who've never done a campaign to do one or organizations which are doing one to be a part of a, a large campaign and hopefully energize them to stretch themselves a little bit more. Because these stretches, for example, 
if your goal today was 150,000, we would have a completely different energy in these conversations. You would not have, you, we would not be trying to get 180. You would not, and you likely would not get 180. That goal that's set is so important, those stretch goals, and then having the energy of Chaim, myself, the many other people who've participated in this campaign, the teams, it changes the dynamic completely, and hopefully we can help many more organizations to, to, raise, to raise money. So last year, we did a test for Chabad Global Giving Day, and 145 or so organizations joined and uh, raised about $16 million. So this year, we said, let's do it right. So we brought a lot of donors on board. David Schottenstein is, um, is, is involved. Getsy Felig mentioned George Rohr is involved, and Raymond Foundation, and many others. And we put a pool together of money, basically paying people to raise money. <laughs> right? Just saying, there's a, pot of, there's, a, there's a pot of gold in your community, and we're going to give you some money or incentives to be a part of this, um, this, this campaign. Obviously, our main incentive is for organizations which have never done a campaign, but everyone is welcome to, everyone is welcome to join. We actually have a specific grant going on now for organizations which have never done a campaign, $100,000 earmarked to those organizations, and they could apply. Mike Shakibman won a $10,000 grant like that. So I'm speaking too quickly, ChabadGlobalGivingDay.com. You can find everything. Anyway, what I want to ask you about is to put yourself in the mindset you were three years ago when we were having these conversations, yeah. or even two months ago when you were saying, I don't know, <laughs> I have the energy to do another campaign. It takes a lot of energy. This year. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I was questioning. So, yeah. But now, right now, where you are now, sitting, sitting where you are now, the money you've raised, but even more than the money you've raised, the hundreds of people who have come out, and I, I, I saw some of the notes. People are saying, like, how much it means, the you know what you do, and the uh, just that nice little notes. Oftentimes, people put when they give a two hundred dollar donation, a three hundred dollar donation, how much your efforts, your work means to them. What is what does that do? What is that like when you're sitting there now? Do you still doubt the the work that you put in? So actually, I was mentioning to Chaim last night. <clears throat> I told him about the the Alfred Nobel story. You know, the guy uh, who who started the Nobel Prize. So the story of how he started it is he was wrongly reported dead, and the the newspaper wrote his obituary. So they wrote, Alfred Nobel, the inventor of dynamite, has died. And he says, well, hold on a second. This is how I'm going down in history. Is the guy who invented dynamite? Is something that destroys people? I got to change my legacy. So he started the Nobel Prize, and now anyone That's who That's an mentions, amazing story. Right, okay. So here's the thing. Rarely do you get an opportunity in your lifetime to hear your obituary. If you do a campaign, what happens is you put yourself out there, and it's a vulnerable position to be in. You say, basically... Who likes what I'm doing? Who cares about it? Who wants to see it go further enough to actually invest? But what happens is you get to find out that what you're doing is actually affecting people. You get to see a glimpse of who it's affecting. You get to see those names. You get to see those comments. The comments to me are gold. That's why right. even if somebody donates $2, the fact that they took time, they, they entered in the credit card, they wrote a little comment... By the way, we just hit 160,000. Oh, amazing. Okay. Baruch Hashem, excellent. So, uh, we're well, here. For those who don't know, Chase and I can speak for hours. We can do this. <laughs> I know, but we have, we have a bunch of people lined up. There's someone waiting outside okay. on the call, but I want okay. you to stay but, on. Okay, but, but, but regarding the pitch here, to anyone who's in the public sphere and has touched a lot of people or, or, or isn't sure, I think that's more pertinent. You're not even sure how many people have I affected and what way have I affected them? How deeply have I affected them? Do a campaign. You'll find out. You'll find out. And, and it, there's nothing more, in my experience, there's nothing that I've done that has been more um, reassuring of you're doing good, keep doing, don't stop, do more. That's how that's how I feel after every campaign. Don't stop. Do more. Do more and more right. and more. The fact that hundreds of people come out to support what you're doing, when oftentimes, especially now in today's world, it's so virtual. You could be sitting in front of you know. It's not like you're getting an audience half the time that you can see the the their faces nodding. You're talking into a camera. So when you see, you have an event like this, but you touched on something which I've never heard someone say before. I've had a lot of conversations with people about campaigns, so I'm going to have to ask you to explain what you meant. You said that there's something vulnerable about doing the campaign because yeah, you find out who supports and who doesn't. So is when you're saying that, is that more vulnerable than when you reach out to a donor for a donation? I mean, because you have to raise money in any case. So is there something about the campaign that's more vulnerable than a regular ask? 
Yeah, I mean, this goes back to what to what to what's private and what's a secret. She so said something private oh. is something you, you choose to share with somebody. So if I call Ellie Nash, who I know is a friend, I know you care about me, I know you know what I do, and I share with you that I have a budget and I'm trying to reach it. Okay, so I, I know that's safe. I know that's safe. I tell the whole world I'm trying to raise money. Oh, that's how much you think you need, right? It's a, it's a vulnerable thing. Right. So I'm sharing something with more people. Right, and then I guess, right, suppose that the campaign flopped and you didn't hit the goal, it would be, oh my gosh, I didn't you know, the world would see, it. right. I'm, I'm trying to dig into the, I'm trying to dig into like the, the vulnerable means it's a risk, right? So the risk is that the campaign would To me, the risk successful. is just telling people, even if it's successful, you know, it's a. Oh, just going out there and saying that I think I'm worthy of a $180,000 yeah, campaign. Yeah, exactly. Right. Oh, okay. Interesting. But, but then there's also the additional risk that if it, if you did not get the support from people, right, then it'd be like, oh wow, people really don't, <laughs> don't care what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. No, so that's very, that's very. So, so what would your message be to to somebody who's uh, afraid of taking the plunge? This is the first uh, Chase. Yeah. How many times I've spoken to people about this? I heard. I, I'm I'm not sure if it'll work for me. I haven't gotten around to it. The fees are too much. It's too complicated. The technology. I've heard all of these things. Yeah. But I've never heard someone say this. Of that course, it's emotionally there's vulnerable. A vulnerability, I'm putting myself out vulnerability there. Vulnerability and doing a campaign. Absolutely. And doing a public campaign. Absolutely. That's why I encourage that you work with somebody who understands the landscape, somebody who knows what's a realistic goal and can push you just to drop beyond. Because obviously, you don't want to, your first time out especially, do something that is totally you know out of the out of the realm but uh, if you you know charity has always worked very well with me to give me good goals and give me good uh, a timeline as far as you know who have, have you called your mid-tier people yet have you called you know have you gotten to the point where you have uh, the, the every, everyone who gave last year 180 dollars have you called them and that kind of stuff so i would say if you have a team on your side who's giving you the the Caleb, the vessels to do it responsibly and realistically, then it's definitely worth the the vulnerability. It's worth the emotional risk. So what was the the so the first year, what was your goal? I think it was 120 maybe. 120 and that was 60 and 60, 60 in mattress and 60. I don't remember the breakdown. Mm -hmm. How how we yeah, maybe maybe it was. And it went to 150. It went to bonus rounds. It went to 150. And the second year? I think we went straight for 150 or maybe we went for 180 and we hit 200 i think last, last year, year last year we hit 200 yeah i think we're gonna do it last again this year Chaim thinks we're gonna hit 200 this yeah, year. yeah no we're we're, we're we didn't hit 180 in a way and we have yeah. someone special here who's gonna take us all the way home he's very popular here in the five towns neighborhood ellie maybe tell my she have the charity or whoever tell the charity people to get someone on board to help people with their imposter syndrome, and that I means it's not just about the technicalities. Shay, yeah, maybe, explain you, that. Could, could, maybe you should consult them on. I'm saying if people are afraid of like, oh my god, putting myself out there, right, you, that you, sort of you thing. You want them to do a campaign. It's not right. just the technical. It's almost part. as if everything starts in the emotional department. You got to get people together. Everything does. Oh, right. By the everything way, people don't always. really have a practical issue with it. They figure out a practical issue with it because they have an emotional resistance. Whatever the right. emotional problem, there's a practical... Uh, emo Every practical <laughs> problem has an emotional solution. And reverse, right. Yeah. We'll find a problem with you. Got it. But, so with that risk, also, it's it makes sense what you're saying, because it's because of that risk, right, comes the potential reward, where all of a sudden you're seeing these messages from people, which are telling you your work is so meaningful. Yeah, no risk, no reward. Right. So that risk is that I may find out that no one cares about me. And the reward is that I may find out that a lot of people care about me. That's right. And if you have a, a good, solid team in your corner, the the odds of you finding out who actually cares about you is much higher. That's correct. Right. If you shot for a $200,000 goal the first year and you only hit 120, or only hit, right, then you'd feel like, hey, I put out to the world that I'm worth 200000 in a crowdfunding campaign, and I only came in at 120. So that the expertise is not a, a small part of the, the equation. Right. Yeah. 
That's why you got to have a team. Very, very enlightening for me. Very, very enlightening. And if you have anybody who's facing that emotional piece of the puzzle and they're like, uh, not sure how to work through it, just like you put out your uh, email and said anyone wants, wants to talk to you, can email you can you can email rabbi at soulwords.org. I mean anyone can it's a public it's public everyone knows my email address anyway so, right. but I'm saying if you're a rabbi or if you're in the public sphere in any way and you're not sure if you should take that risk uh, putting yourself out there and saying do I have a community that thinks that what I'm doing is worth X amount of dollars so email me at rabbi at soulwords.org. Got it. Do you see this as something that's um, like an important part of your organization's budget every year going forward you mean it's a, a crowdfunding i'm sure technology will change over time maybe one day we'll be sitting with vr headsets and whatever else but some form of uh crowdfunding campaign do i rely on this budget you, to be able yeah, to do you see this as 100 keep the lights on in the studio 100 percent. because i'll tell you what it's done uh I, and i've spoken about this a few times uh since we started last night but i'll i'll repeat this the way I first started is I got, I think, I don't know, it's not, it's not secret, but I, I think David gave me $10,000 to make my first website before, before a campaign. I couldn't do anything without a website because I didn't even have a way of, I was giving away my content to everyone else's platform for 15 years. 15 years of running around, you know, publicly speaking and making videos, but I didn't have my own platform. So I needed to have my right. own platform to start to actually, I had no database, I had nothing. I didn't even know who my people are. So David said, here's 10K, get started. After I did that, then, okay, now I have a database. I have uh, some names. I have some emails. So we, do, we did our first campaign. After the campaign, we said, oh, now make a real website. We spent real money. We got spotlight, and we made a real gorgeous state-of-the-art website. Okay, then we made a bigger campaign. Oh, we built the studio. You're looking at it. This is what, this, right. these are the fruits of last year. So you're saying, is it part of my budget? Yeah, because I'm expanding every year. And I'm expanding every year because of the campaign. So when you tap into the energy that's out there from your, from your audience, you get into a positive loop where you can keep doing more. You keep building, keep going to the next level. And the whole thing is... Right. It's a beautiful cyclical. virtuous cycle that's created. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Ellie, could thank you, you show everyone your yarmulke? I mean, it's... Uh, yeah. It's a half dollar effort to my son. Oh. On it. Well, it's on it's the made, right head. It's made by I Keep Us. Oh. So is this one. So is this so one. So is by this the way. one. This is also yeah. I Keep Us. I have uh, Kol Shvin Chaviv and Yamaka. The Soul Words Yamaka. We're giving the to soul donors who give at the level of. I can't of really see it. 540 Chase, and over. Reb Chase, if, if, if we succeeded just in getting donations from the people we gave shout outs to during this, I Keep Us, Spotlight, Charity, who else do we need? David already gave. David is a legend, by the way. The amount of organizations this guy helps is incredible. Yeah, David is a real legend. So he's he, so he's already taken care of. Who else that we mentioned in this? I don't know. You want to target some people? Carl Young. Carl Young. Carl, Carl Young, the Young estate. <laughs> the Magid. Of I'm sure they have some royalties from some books or something. The yeah. Magid. The Magid is already paying. We're dividends. at ninety percent. The Magid promised Yadach Cinema Al Yena. So that we have. That's our biggest donation. The biggest donation. There yeah. you go. All right, Chase, a pleasure chatting as well. Ellie, pleasure thank you. Know. Always fun. Always fun yeah. and meaningful. Take care. Much success. Amen. Thank Hopefully you. Hopefully we can empower. Hopefully we can empower many others. The people who are on Amen. the fence, come on, join on board. It's going to be a beautiful month, December. It's the uh, a lot of money is raised during that that time. So please reach out. If anyone has any questions, Chabad Giving Day at charity.com or support at charity.com. Ask about the campaign. I hope more people join. Reb Chase, you asked me. If I think you should join, right? Yeah, I did. I asked you, yeah. Right. And I encourage you not to. So yeah, I, I thought that a lot of your supporters were part of the, um, would, would be solicited by other Chabad houses also. But I don't think that's the case with most Chabad houses. Hopefully they get support from their local communities. Yeah. But I'm not saying it's for everyone, but if it is for you and you're on the fence, jump on in. We want you on board. Thank you, Ellie. Thanks for everything you do. Take care. For, uh, Chase, thank you for the work you do. The thank general. you. Thank you. Thank you for your friendship, your support. Ellie we Mesh. have a special guest wow. in the studio. He's been uh, patiently waiting, uh, and I think he's going to take us over the top. I hear he's a very, very popular man in these parts of town. 
So you got your work cut out for you. There's a heavy, uh, a lot of Friedmans, a lot of Marcus Friedmans, Gordons. To me, they're all sort of one. Could we get a Gordon Niggin? How about a little Duckshits Niggin? A Duckshits Niggin Niggin to introduce our next guest, huh? Put me on the spot here. Spot here. I know Yechanan. Yes. Are you on? I put put Yechanan on the screen. This is Yechanan Gordon. Shalom Aleichem. Aleichem Shalom. You're the first guest who came actually to the studio. I see that. Because you're local. <laughs> Five towns. Yes, yes. So, uh, thank you for joining us. Pleasure. <laughs> Big believer in the cause. So, uh, we're trying to raise money. So, everything's good? Yes. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, this is a very unnatural uh, setting for me. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. But you're a public figure. You write every uh, week. I you're feel, outspoken. I feel, I feel very comfortable behind a computer screen and a keyboard. That's where I belong. Uh, my brother, who people know. <laughs> Nachi is more... <laughs> Nachi Gordon is more, more the, uh, the, the... Puts uh, his face out there. Yeah, he's been trying to get me to record a minute for a few years. Oh, really? I haven't been able so to I do it. So I beat Nachi yes, to it. Nachi to I it. got your face out yes, there before yeah, Nachi yes, did. Yes, yes. Hashem. Yeah. So what's going yeah. on? Good, Baruch Hashem. I see that uh, we're doing pretty good. I haven't here. been able to check you the numbers. Checked? I haven't, yeah. How's, how are the numbers? 92%. 92%. 92%. Okay. Yeah. All right. This is a very beautiful space over here you got. Baruch Hashem. Everything here has like a uh, deeper meaning. Yeah. I, I mean, I was just looking at the Nichayach um, cover. I'm not such a... I'm not so familiar with the Nichayach albums per se, but the... Uh, the uh, the art on the on the cover is a very meaningful piece. Which one? Oh, this uh, one. Is that a no, the, the Nechaya cover? Yeah. Ha- yeah. Is that yeah. the Handel Lieberman? It uh, looks like a Handel Lieberman. Yeah. yeah, it's it's hanging in my parents' home. Oh, really? Yes, my my grandfather, my grandparents had it in their home for many years. Oh, that same painting. The, the original. Yeah. The, the original. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if anyone knows who who he is. Uh, uh, so tell you, so tell me your credentials. <laughs> five Towns Jewish Times. Five, yes. Well, five what's your title? Times. Uh, editor. Yeah. Publisher. A, p- 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 What's, give me your proper title. Associate editor. Associate editor. Sales manager. Sales manager and outspoken uh, journalist. Journalist, yes, yes. And uh, just trying to write on the coattails of my, my, my grandfather and my, my father. Your grandfather was a, an illustrious Chabad journalist yes. in America. He wrote for the Algamator, wrote for Journal. the Yiddish Haim. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it, your name, Yechenen Gordon, is your great grandfather. Of course, of course. Yeah. Uh, Trying to make something of myself. <laughs> like the Maggid said to his mother, I'll start a new year for yeah, me. Yeah. 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 So we're trying to make money over here. Yeah. Yeah. You want to tell it? You want to tell everyone, uh, I don't know, something about Sadaka, about uh, Fatsis Mayonis, supporting Harbatsa Satira. Got, <laughs> got anything for us? On little... Yeah, yeah, sure. So, you know what? There's a lot of people on the on the internet uh, teaching Torah, um, and the truth is, it's it, it's a um, it's an endeavor that that could go on go on and on. But there's something about uh, about you that I think is uh, uniquely uh, suited for this for this thing, because I, I don't know if you if you remember, but we we I mean we don't know each other all that long. How long are you living here in the Five Towns? A few years. The first time I met you was not even in the five towns. Where did we? Oh, at a retreat. I, oh, by by, Eis, by Eisenbach. Was that the yeah, first Eisenbach time? Eisenbach retreat. I think the first time I met you yes, was, was in Eisenbach. Connecticut at a Eisenbach. Hanukkah retreat. Correct. It that's was like true. Seven, eight years ago. That's true. That's true. Yeah, and we learned a mimer together. That's true. Yeah, but then subsequently you moved here. Um, I think we met. Uh, I think maybe it was at Yom Neirayim, some Chesterah. Could have been around that time. Um. And it seems at the time that you had a difficult, uh, you had a difficulty wrapping your, your brain around promoting yourself in this, in this, in this way. We were talking before about panemius. Okay. It's tough, you know, panemius, you know, Chabad month panemius. Yeah. So, promotion is like it feels fake. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Superficial. Yeah. So you had to like transcend that that part of yourself. I had to figure out how it fits into the panemius. You know, I was thinking that 
a lot of what you're doing, um, taking these deep ideas and like reducing them into like a, f a few minute, uh, you know, excerpts, is sort of a, almost like on a on a small level what the Abishta did in creating the world. It's taking these great <laughs> ideas in Mitzamsen. Uh -huh. You know, a lot of times people think it's a little bit, like you said, fake or superficial because you're taking like really deep ideas and you're stripping them down. And people who really, you know, have the patience and the presence of mind to uh, to sit and learn Torah kind of feel like, like it's like a, a cheap way out. Right. But um, when you're doing it like you're doing it, which is Lashma, which is just to get the message out. Um, I mean, it's, essentially it's a shlichus, right? You know, I don't know if you, I don't know if you're... Uh, I think that by the Kinnis Ashluchim Kazin is credited as being uh, Chabad of the cyberspace. Right. But if you if you count all the people that are on the World Wide Web do, or now Instagram doing what what he started doing, I guess you're all sub Shluchim of what he started. But um, what I was getting at was a lot of people are are operating on on Instagram. Not even in Tyra, in many different, uh, they're, they're all involved in self promotion. Right. And for you, it's not about self promotion, it's more about getting a message out. So I feel like once you, you know, I saw, I saw an idea recently um, from Shlomo Kalbach. Um, Shlomo Kalbach writes, he has a book out, um, a book out, Shlomo Katz put out a book on uh, Kalbach's teachings on Hanukkah called The Soul of Hanukkah. So he, um, he has an idea there. And he says that Adam Chava, when it came to eating from the Eitz Adas, um, it was fraught uh, to failure from the beginning because of the way Chava perceived the Eitz Adas. The, the, the Pasuk says, She was measuring, she was reflecting on the tree in the sense of whether it was good or whether it, it wasn't good. You know, anybody who's like, projecting their own thoughts or their own feelings on a certain endeavor is fraught to failure from the get-go. Um, there are certain things like the internet that if you're promoting yourself, then it's, you're already you know behind the eight ball. The, the internet is such a big medium, it's such a big way of getting a message out that if you're in a spoil in any way from the medium, from, the, from, the, from the, that tool that's getting the message out, then you're going to get lost in that, in that maze, in that quagmire. Um, you know, so I think with you, because you had that, 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 um, apprehension, because yeah. you were afraid of, you know, plunging yourself into that thing, you, you knew what it represented. You were really doing it because of the message, not because, not, not to get your face on, on the internet, not to get, not to have more people know you. And even this is, it's a camp, this is a campaign. Obviously you're looking to raise, raise, to raise a certain amount of money, yeah. but at the end of the day, it's all to further your not your influence as a personality, but your influence in, in making a difference in people's lives. To get the message out there. Get the message That's out. Right. That's right. You know what they yeah. say? They, you know, we're doing paradoxes. So, I mean, the humility is one of the best ways to improve your bottom line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, actually, that was an interesting. I, I, I was listening before. Um, you know, it's funny. It reminds me of a story. Um, my brother in law is, uh, lives in Crown Heights. He's in Beryl Hassan. He's married to a stock. Uh, Benji Stock's daughter. So, you know, his uh, um, my my sister-in-law uh, Sterney Stock. Her grandfather was uh, Shimshi Stock. Yeah, everyone knows Shimshi Stock from Grand right, sure. So there's actually a humorous uh, video of Shimshi Stock uh, on online. You could you could find it on, on YouTube or Google, where he says that he was by a certain for bringing another Rebbe, and he says that he was. Listening to the rabbi speak, he says he's not sure why he was listening, but he, but he happened to have been there, you know. But I was listening before, and you were talking about um, paradox, right? So if, it's interesting. There's a there's a, a very famous Torah from Rab Nachman of Breslov in Tinyana and Lukut Meiran, on the on the pasuk it says, So normally we look we we think of Ayim as a question that they're asking each other. Where is the place of your glory? But Rav Nachman interprets it much deeper. He says that anytime a person reaches a situation in life where he's forced or he's compelled to ask Aye, that's become Kvayde. 
you know, you know that's that's any any time you're in a re religious experience, God because He's infinite, then, it, then I mean, it's it's hard, it's almost like an oxymoron. But the nature of infinity is not to have one side or another side. It's 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 all it's all inclusive. It's all encompassing. So then that 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 when 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 a when a limited finite person enters into a space of infinity, they they're compelled to have to ask the question of I. Right. When you think you found it, you have yeah. it. When you're still looking, yeah. then you may be close. Correct. You remind me of another the, uh, avort. There's a pasuk in Tilmi. Im esek shemaim shomat. Right. Let's see a shayel hineka. So literally, was im esek shemaim. If I go up in the heavens, shom. You're speaking to Hashem. Shom ato. There you, you are, are. There Hashem. Yeah. Right. Let's see a shayel. If I make my bed down in the pit in the in, the, in the in the in the, in the, the grave. Hineka, here you are. So how do, what do they explain? That if I go up in heaven, like I think I'm spiritually flying so high, right. you know, shum, there, there, not here, somewhere else. I haven't yeah. gotten to it. But if I know I'm in the pits, uh. Hineka, here you are, you're right here. Uh. I hear uh. Ellie Mark is tickling the ivories over here. <laughs> are you, is that, that's like a perfect musical uh, segue, right? You know this one, Ellie? Oh, uh, well, of course, I, of course I know it. It's a go to for soldiers. That's the nigga, that's the nigga. <laughs> we have a bunch of dedications to Oh, okay, fine. Stuff, All right. But this was good. You're yes. Our, I think our only uh, five towns. guest. Uh, five towns is the guest. Well, no. I'm person in person. Inside, definitely. inside. Yes. Okay. In my studio, pleasure, my pleasure. You inaugurated. You're doing amazing work. Thank you. And um, they wish to give you the uh, presence of mind, the wherewithal, Amen. the material means Amen. to to, to grow. Mechayel Achayel. And to continue reaching and touching people's lives in a very deep way. Amen. Shkaya. Thank you. Rabbi Eichanan. Rabbi Eichanan Garden. You look different than your wife's picture. Very. Good. Yes. It's a good look. Amazing. Shkaya. Ah, Doctor Sunnigan. There you go. Now I got it. Maybe very helpful, Rishi. We spoke about Rishi Daich. Okay, we are we are well on our way. We are at ninety four percent, ninety four percent. Baruch Hashem. So um, I feel very confident. We have some time. Let's go to some music, huh? I, I, I uh, people like the Yiddish. I thought we'd do another something in Yiddish. Okay. And we are. Oh. <laughs> what are you laughing? A donation just came in for thirty six dollars yeah. for my Shapinchas cats. Oh, that's excellent. That's, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Y okay. You don't want me to say who that is? It's okay. All right. <laughs> uh, only because I care for the cause. I'm like, I think people would love to know who that is, but thank you, Mesha Pinchas, MP. You're, you're one of the sweetest people in my life. Uh, assuming it's the right Mesha Pinchas. Either way. Okay, let's do something Yiddish. Let's do something happy. Um, so I guess we could still do something happy even if it's Yin Yiddish. They do some happy stuff, right? Oh, how's that for a paradox? A happy Yiddish song. <laughs> well, I gave two. Could you, Ellie, you got two uh, paradox cards. This one, this one really cracked me up because it's so true. Those guys, they're having way too much fun in there and they're not on their job. Shama, we got the camera on Ellie. <laughs> well, the camera's turned the other direction. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, uh, if, only if only I had a little, a little less, less potential, potential, I could achieve more of my goals. <laughs> that, is, that is so true in a very interesting way. <laughs> um, there's a lot of work you need to do on yourself before you can realize you're fine just the way you are. Oh, that's heavy. That's heavy, heavy. Yes, yes. All right. Could you... Um, Rabbi Tab, that, that door should be closed because we're getting the monitor, the audio from the other monitor. And all right, let's go. All right. Um, oh, where's that lyric? We have a happy Yiddish song. It's a nice song. It it's very it's... apropos of a charity campaign. Yes. And it's called Aznishkenemuna or Eibnishkenemuna. 
All right, I think I left. Uh, it's not a nice piano sound here. No. So let's each do one, and we'll go to the other, right? Okay. All right, you start. All right, I'm gonna do make some make yeah. some modulations in the middle. Mix it up. Oi, nicht keine Munde zusammen mit dem Geld. Oi, wo je arbeitst du? Oi, auf der Welt. Oi, nicht kein Bitochen zusammen mit dem Geld. Oi, wo je bereuchst du die ganze Welt? Oi, nicht kein Gemilas Chassadim zusammen mit dem Geld. Was je gehst du, oi, für der Welt? Oi, bin ich kein Weges, zusammen mit dem Geld. Sie, was je darfst du, die ganze Welt? Oi, bin ich kein Nistler, hab es, zusammen mit dem Geld. Oi, was je horbest du, oi, für der Welt? Oi, bin ich kein Warmkeit, zusammen mit dem Geld. Wo je willst du, oi, auf der Welt? Zusammen mit dem Geld, wo je suchst du auf der Welt? Heub nicht kein Chassidus, zusammen mit dem Geld, wo je habst du die ganze Welt? Heub nicht kein Tahare, zusammen mit dem Geld, wo je teugst du auf der Welt? Heub nicht kein Jereschomayim, zusammen mit dem Geld, wo je jagst du die ganze Welt? Heub nicht kein Kibbel, da wo heim, zusammen mit dem Geld, wo je ist der Kopf, heub nicht kein Tahare, heub nicht kein Tahare, zusammen mit dem Geld, wo je läufst du auf der Welt? Yam, bam, 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 yam, You gotta support soul words. Zusammen mit dem Geld. Oi, wo je nahrst du die ganze Welt? Oi, nicht kein Scholem Weiß. Zusammen mit dem Geld. I just changed it. Seder Pesach? That's weird. I thought you skipped. No, no, I know, I know. You could, you could improvise all of these. Oi, nicht kein Scholem Weiß. Zusammen mit dem Geld. Wo je sabest du auf der Welt? Heib nicht kein Anivis zusammen mit dem Geld. Wo je wirst du entfernen auf jener Welt? Heib nicht kein Fidin Shibuim zusammen mit dem Geld. Heib wo je plogst du sich auf der Welt? Heib nicht kein Zidokke Zusammen mit dem Geld, oi wo je zu reis du die ganze Welt. Oi nicht kein Kedusche, zusammen mit dem Geld, wo je kaufst du oi für der Welt. Oi nicht kein Rachmanes, zusammen mit dem Geld, wo je reist du oi für die ganze Welt. Wo je reist du? Well, 
Heute nicht kein Schabes Kodesh, zusammen mit dem Geld. Oi, wo je schreist du auf, oi, auf der Welt. Oi, nicht kein teure Schuhe zu viel, zusammen mit dem Geld. Oi, wo ist der, der Tachlis, oi, oi, auf der Welt. Oi, ja, bam, 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 oi, ja, ja, ja. We go right into another something Yiddish. This is our first duet. Yeah. Another duet. We do another Yiddish duet. I think there's still some people putting their kids to bed. How about a lullaby? Yes, this is this is one of my this is a real favorite of mine actually. Um I should remember who uh originally sh uh, told me about this song. Who was that? It was Besha Denabine. Oh, oh Besha. Besha. Shout yeah. out to the Denim Beams. The Den Beams. Yes. Yes. I sang this with Chazi. Chazi, down by my friend, and he loves this song also. It's very popular in their house. Yes, it runs just in the family. They're one of the <laughs> best people in the world. I mean, yeah, the best. It was just there for uh, for Silva's Terra. Okay. This is a, uh, a poem that's set to music, written by Itzik Manger, and it is a dialogue between a mother and child. Child wants to break free of the, the shackles of the home, wants to fly and become its own. And in this case, the, the, in the metaphor, that the child is a bird, uh, but the mother's uh, looking after the child's welfare, but in the process, kind of keeps him or her could be anyone, um, inhibits his ability to fly. Sometimes love will do that. That's what they say. If you love something, you let it go. All right, do you want to start? All right. Rufen Weg. Rufen Weg, steht da boy, steht der Reinge boy, alle Fegel von dem boy, Sehnen sich zu fliegen. Reich in Misere, reich in Meire. Und die Rest kein Dorim. Und dem Boi gelost allein. Hef gefahren Sturim. Sag ich zu dem Mama Herr, soll's mir noch nicht sterben. Weil ich Mama eins und zwei Wald auf Vögel werden, ich will sitzen neu auf dem Bäum und will ich verdienen. Oi, mit a nigen, mit a treist, mit a scheine Menigen, jam, tadi, 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 Sog die Mame nicht der Kind und sie weint mit Tränen. Kennst du Lille, Eifenboy? Mir verfreuern werden. Sog ich Mame, sie sah schon. Deine Scheine Eugen, du neider was, du neider wenn, bin ich mir auf Eugel. Wie wenn die Mama jetzt sich kreut, nehm um Gottes Willen, 
Hoinem chod shmita shaliku Zo zich nisht farkil Hoidi kalosh nem dirmit Zgeit ashar verwinter Hoyundi kuch me tu diron Weiz mir un vin mir Yom tari 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 Yom tari 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 Yom tari 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 So you. you got it, you got it, you got it. Und aus Winter Leibel nehm Tu es an, du Scheute Oi, du willst nu Oi, du willst nu Sein kein Gas Zwischen alle Teute Hab die Fegels Ist mir schwer Zu viel, zu viel Sachen Hat die Mama Angetan dem Fegale, dem Schmachen. Guck ich und treurig mir rein, in mein Mames Eugen. So hat ihr Liebschaft nicht gelost, wenn mir ein Feugel auf den Weg steht der Boy, steht der Eingebeugen. Alle Fegel in dem Boy Zen is here to find. Yeah, me daddy daddy, oh daddy daddy, oh daddy 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 dum. Yeah, me daddy daddy, daddy daddy. That is Zofim Vague. Thank you, Chaim. Thank you, Rabbi Tal. What's up? If you guys want to make some requests, make a donation. Well, you said it. I get in trouble every time I do one of these things. We'll do a hundred bucks. Hundred bucks. Hundred dollar donation. It's effective two hundred. Effective two hundred. Effective two hundred. And we'll do a short song. Well, we. You give a few a, bars, because otherwise, uh, yeah. yeah. A few if, bars, if it's a, hundred bucks only gets you. Yeah, if, if maybe. Well, because what are you going to do? Five hundred. Five hundred dollars will get you a full song. Okay. okay. Five hundred dollars, effective a thousand, gets you a full yes. song. Full song of your you choice. You know what you remind uh, me of? Granted, I know there it. Was a ch- <laughs> if they do American Pie, you got nine minutes. There was a there was a chazan, Richard Tucker, Reuven Tucker, right? So I think he was brother in law, well, brother in law yeah, of Pierce. Jan Pierce, Jan right? Pierce were they married yeah. to sisters? Is I think that, so, that's the yeah. story. So Jan Pierce and Reuven Tucker, Richard Tucker, they were like, in, they were sort of like in competition. Where also. was uh, Richard Tucker Chazen? Good question. Where? Eastern Parkway, the Jewish center. Oh Olatera. wow, Brooklyn Jewish that center. I did not know. Yeah. So the story is that, that Richard Tucker goes to a grocery store and he checks out and he didn't have cash on him, so he wanted to pay with a check. This is in the old days when you used to pay with a check. No one had credit cards, right? So he pulls out a check and he says, I want to write a check. Now, I don't know if you guys remember this, but if you write a check, you have to have ID because who says you're the person on the check? So they said, uh, you need ID. He says, I don't have ID. They said, okay, I have a simple way for you to verify who you are. It says Richard Tucker on the check. Sing a couple <laughs> lines and then we'll know that it's you. Then it, it'll verify you're Richard Tucker. And the price for the groceries is like you know, $10 or whatever. He says, if I sing a couple lines for $10... I'm not Richard oh. Tucker. <laughs> That's great. So Ellie Marcus oh. says, $100 effective 200 will get you a couple lines from a song. $500, 1,000 effective will get you a whole song. Come on. We'll Even in this we'll day and age, some... where are you going to score a couple lines for 100 bucks? We'll do that for soul words. Stop it. <laughs> I just... Why, because it's a recovery podcast? All right. Let's... Um, let's do... All right. The We're doing... We're doing uh, songs. Your request, you got to pay though. Can I? You know that we're at ninety-five percent. That's what I heard. Nice. And by the way, I was upstairs, and your schwager, Mendy, he's like, "Well, at one more percent, we'll be at Zexa <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. And I want to mention, uh, yeah, my brother-in-law, Mendy's making phone calls upstairs, and also um, uh, Chaim uh, Rosenzweig. They've been here all day making phone calls. And Yitzchak Rahabi. Rahabi. Yeah. 
uh, thank you all Good who, together friends. with Tybal, are, are plugging away at the phones. So if you get a phone call, don't be too surprised, and please help us uh, go right over the top. I think I noticed some of my daughters making calls. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Chaya and Menchorachol and Esther and... Uh, could we, could and we try to get one of your daughters on... on oh, they're more, they're more I would, camera shy than Maybe Jason Esther Gordon. can tell a joke. If I doubt she'll go. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Maybe yeah, next year. Rabbi Taub's daughters tell jokes better than he does. Yes. And that's when I true. say better, I mean worse. Worse, but that's but better. But that's better. Yeah. That's what we go for. My wife says is one thing that is the worse it is, the better it is, and that's dad jokes. But the right. same thing applies uh, with this. Um, right. And oh. I want to do. Can we play the paradox video? Please uh, play uh, uh, video four. So I, we're going to forget to get these. I, I think they're, they're too good. Until someone comes on Zoom, or until we have a song dedication. But we do have a bunch of other things to do. That's not fair. That's, oh, that, do you still have another one, Ellie? Uh, How's about no, this no, one? I'm out. We're going to jump between, like, problem and solution, you know? Just go back and forth, back and forth. Here, I got you a few. Um, surrender to win. And like we saw before, you got to... It's a true paradox. You got to give it away if you want to keep it. Yeah. And uh, how about the whole powerless power thing? Like, why, yeah. why does that always trip people up? Yeah. All right, somehow... You want to talk about it? Quick. Quick? Yeah. 30-second version? Yeah. Why powerlessness is powerfulness? Yeah. Because ultimately, there's only one power, and that is Hashem. And when you rely on your own power, you're actually an impediment. You're actually getting in your own way. So when you realize that you are ultimately powerless, then you become an open, transparent conduit to something that is ultimately powerful. That's it. 30 seconds. Nice. And that reminds me about the, I wanted to ask you about the Haggadah, the Four Cups Recovery Haggadah, which, by the way, can be yours for a donation of $360 or? Really, how it breaks down? You know, $30 have, a month, uh, which is three, which is seven. Want to know that really? $30 a month is an effective $720 donation. $45 a month is an effective $1,080 donation. So that first one will get you the, I'm I'm actually learning it. By the time we're done tonight, I'll I'll know these things. If you do thirty dollars a month, or you do three uh, three hundred sixty dollars oh, at once. Oh, what the oh, heck? Well, what? I what? see a bunch of balloons. Could we? Uh, could what? you put the charity screen? I don't know what just happened. Um, doesn't well, could have you the play uh, the the the, the tote music? Here. I don't know what just happened. We went from ninety five. Go, jump. Sanderson just dropped an easy seven thousand two hundred dollars. Whoa! Whoa! Yeah. Whoa! Ellie and Nahama Sanderson just dropped an effective seven thousand two hundred dollars on the campaign, brought us over our goal and into our bonus round. We're in bonus round, bonus folks. That is amazing. Baruch Hashem. Wow. wow. That nice. Oh. Totally unexpected. Nice. <laughs> that was wild. And I'm not, now I'm seeing a bunch of bonus matches popping on the screen. The Tabak Brothers. I see. I had them ready in case this happened. I was hoping what happened. Wow. Well, and then there's a Hagdasha there. 
Do you have it written there? If it's fine. I got bonus matcher. Let me read an order. Eli Melech. Well, it's going. It goes. Uh, Eli Melech and Toby Tabak, Lily Nishmas Elio, Ben Nachman, and Ezekiel Bracha, and Chana Bas Aaron Olavashalom. And his brother. Wow. Eli- They're twins. Moishi Tabak should also be there. Jumping back and forth. You could see it. Jumping back and forth. I could see it. Between both of them. So. Okay. Yeah, so there's Eli Melech and Maishi. Yes, Eli Melech and Maishi. And, and, and the same Tol- dedication, because for their, their parents, right, Eliyam Ashalom. So Eli Melech and Toby, and Maishi and Chaya Suri Tabak. Yes, that is correct. Amazing. Those are our bonus matches. And then, um, wow, who's uh, Eli and Hamas Anderson? Is he friends of yours? Chaim, there's nothing more awkward than okay, asking okay. a man who are the people All right, who just okay, fine. Well, where do you unexpectedly... Get your, where, do you, where do you get your material, by the way? <laughs> I just, uh, whatever, it's just very nice and surprising. It's beautiful. Okay. It is definitely beautiful. Major, major charity, full power. That is, yeah. Okay. But we're in bonus rounds. Yesterday I had a big, uh, okay, let's go. Let's let's go to bonus round. Let's, let's, get, let's get crazy. We're in the bonus round. Hi, we're in the bonus round. Okay. The Tabak Brothers. I have a question. $284 into question, the bonus though. round. The, wait, what? $284 into the bonus round. Wow. So, so here's the thing about bonus round. We're the, well into the bonus round. What is the bonus? Wait a minute. So that means if you have bonus matchers, that yeah. it's even though it's in bonus round, it's still being doubled. Yes, that's the point. The Tabak uh, brothers are doubling us for another. I think for another 10k. So we're going to 200 thousand with with Hashem's help. Oh, wow. Okay. So all right, we're in bonus round. Tell the people on the phones because that adds a level of hype. By the way, you still get the gifts. So that means we're still giving away the Haggadahs. The recovery I got this. We're giving away this beautiful soul words yarmulkes, and you can see that all. Um, well, we've said it enough. Um, I would love to do another song, but quick first, I was going to ask you about this. The, the recovery. We talked about nuance. We talked about appreciating context. Yeah. And this. So we have Yitzias Mitzrayim. On the one hand, yeah. is that ice cream? What do you have there? <laughs> this is an answer. Thanks, an answer. Uh, All together as one. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to find God. You can't just look for the body. Got to go, you go straight. The, the looking for the God at the bottom of the bottle. We. That's it. <laughs> okay, that's a callback. Okay, fine. What were we talking about? Oh, so I'm asking you. I'm really you, kind of thrown for a loop. I really wasn't expecting. Right. It. Yeah. No, because I you're like, oh, a there's a bunch loop. of balloons on my laptop. I wasn't sure if you were having a moment or something because remember the other the, last night you right, were like, right. had a little bit you of brain freeze. Right. No, because of the, the the you were trying to yeah, read the the names the names and you didn't realize every time a new donation come comes in it would like refresh it. So I, I would see yeah, I saw you were like having and it, and I was worrying maybe like it's yeah. not that then out, you're like, outlandish a thought. To then have you're it. like oh there's a bunch of balloons on my laptop. <laughs> oh no, I'm gonna have to finish this thing on my own. Like, would you do that for me? Would you take me in if I needed to? Yes, sure. You put on a white coat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what are we talking okay, about? Okay, okay. I'm trying to ask you a question. They keep coming in. Yeah. The Did anyone do, sponsor talk- a dedication for a song yet from Ellie Marcus? Let's try this. Marcus! The Impossible Dream! <laughs> it's the, we spoke about like just do it versus slow and steady. Yeah. And we spoke about how sometimes you have to slowly and steady appreciate progress in a- achieving a certain personal goal. Versus, like, why am I not there already? And appreciating that time takes time. And we learned the mimer once, amongst many things you do, you do great text based. I'm usually I'm allergic to text based learning, like you know, an immediate can, can turn. I, off. Can I guess something? Because I know we learned a mimer in my house once, a pace, a, a pace, a, no, 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 not pace Shani, with a different mimer. But, but the mimer that I remember that you learned, which was on soul words, was the Pesach Shani mimer? Oh, uh, you know where and, I'm going. And it was very. And I was blown away because you're like, I listened to the. whole... It was two or three hours, text based, and you said, I listened to the whole thing. I was yeah. so. I, that was one of my. I want to tell you something. Oh. One, of my, one of my great accomplishments. To get a yeshiva bacher, to learn a mimer. <laughs> I think I learned that mimer with you. Uh, Do we learn that? Yeah, we learned it together. Oh my goodness! Oh, that's During, right. During uh, the right after Corona, you know, after the COVID yeah, uh, pandemic hit. Yeah, I like that hit. mimer. Yeah, is Chaim Marcus going to come out? That's his brother. Oh, he you said he what? would. We, he learned, said he we would. learned a bunch of Derech Mitzvah Secha together. Chaim and I learned Derech Mitzvah Secha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did not know that. I remember people by what I learned with them. That's, <laughs> okay. that's 
Kyber room. Yeah, let's brother. get, let's get Chaim, Chaim if he wants. He's ready to come out. He said Chaim, he come on uh, at 10. Chaim got a shout-out last night from Dimitri. Yeah. He got Dimitri turned on to shout-out B'tochen. Right. So quickly, let's talk about why, what, where, 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 what the relation is because the – so again, we're talking about this duality, right? So do you run away? Do you jump away from a crisis? Or do you take it one step at a time? How does one know if this is a time to be running or a time to be gently working mm. on progress? How often do you hear someone who's like in a crisis and saying, well, I got to take it slow. What was the procrastination? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, stop. Uh, I think I'm going to stop. Stop procrastinating. No. I think I'm going to procrastinate and just get it over. No. I think I'll procrastinate now and get it over. Ah, that's what it was, right? Yeah, yeah. So the Pesach Sheni Maim it was about Pesach Rishon, the first Exodus. I mean, the actual Exodus, leaving Egypt was crisis. I mean, you're in Egypt. You got to Egypt's not a good place. You got to get out of there. So and Pesach means jumping, delug. So you got to jump out of there because your your hair's on fire. You got to get out of there. And then there's a Pesach Sheni a month later when you're safe already. You're not in Egypt. There's no taskmaster standing over you. So what are you jumping from? So the question is, I remember we had this discussion. Everyone knows, what is it, that like uh, pain is the touchstone of all spiritual growth? That when your life is falling apart, all of a sudden you dig deep and you find that you're capable of all types of stuff. But what about when there's the, uh, the comfort of life's getting better and I'm not in crisis and you, you, you were saying to me, actually, I remember that Shabbos, it was Yutes Kislev. We spent the Shabbos together in Miami Beach, you and I. Mm -hmm. With Ellie Nash. With Ellie Nash, who was one of our guests here and one of our matchers. And we were talking about... Falling victim to the... The, 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 the belief, uh, or if you would put fear. it, maybe you would say the occupational hazard of... Of of uh, of healing is then you right. start associating growth with, with problems. All your, yeah, all my dysfunction made me right. right because at first you resent your dysfunction, but then you just hold on a second. It made me who I am and makes me sensitive to others and makes me more purpose driven. And then you start to get like addicted to the dysfunction. You say, hold on a second. If if I actually become I don't know stable, then where will my spiritual growth go? Can, in other words, is it possible to remain spiritually driven if you don't have the fire of dysfunction burning under your feet? Well, and the answer is... You're hesitating. <laughs> no, I was taking a chaste top deep breath before deep breath. saying something profound. Oh, okay. <laughs> you got it down. By the way, you know one time... No, I wasn't a conscious. A badchen, I there was a badchen. He came to uh, to Satmer on Purim, and he was doing a badchonis of of uh, the Satmerov, and he imitated his tenuas during davening. He had certain movements he would do when he would daven, and so this badchen was imitating it, and the Satmerov was crying. So afterwards, the badchen came to ask Mechila. He was, you know, you know, he was afraid that he offended the Satmerov, so he said, "I'm sorry for, you know, the the badchonis. And the Satmarov says, you don't understand. I saw you imitating the way I daven, and it was uncanny. It was perfect. You did it perfectly. So I started to search within myself. If you're able to do it perfectly as an act, I question myself, am I doing it as an act? Oh. So if you're able to do my deep side before... I didn't the, mean to do it that way. As you <laughs> asked, I, I caught it. I was like, well, that's the... Um, but yeah, what did the... Um, no, I'm not going to get that quote right. But but are you able to grow when life uh, oh, is stable? Oh, oh. So I was going to say, what do you say to that? I would say, if you think you've experienced change as a result of crisis, you have no idea what type of change can come. The the gulf, the maybe infinite gulf between that and change from a place of choice and a place of growth. And I, I don't know if I'll get it right, but I read somewhere something beautiful. The, um, yeah, it's 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 non. There's no end to it. One of the insipid questions that people ask, people say there are no bad questions. It's not true. There are bad questions. 
Um, doesn't mean the person's bad or foolish for asking a foolish question, but some questions that are foolish, I've asked foolish questions, and when I learned they were foolish, I stopped asking them. What are the insipid questions that people ask about Mashiach? They say, well, when the world will be perfect, won't we be bored? Won't we be bored? What? what? You're, you're supposing that perfection is finite. See, that's a gullus framework, that we fixed the problem, now we're done. Once we fix the problem, now we have infinite layers of the solution to explore. So, no, we're not going to be bored. That's, that's a gullus way of thinking. Mashiach comes, we'll be very, very excited, very interested. We'll be knowing the infinite, which is an endless process. So, like you're saying, if you think that spiritual growth um, can be facilitated by crisis, you're right, but you haven't seen the kind of incomparably greater spiritual growth even that can be precipitated by getting beyond the crisis. And what about when... Uh, um... Sort of like the push to get to 180, that, like, that's a push, right? And then you get to bonus rounds. Like We already got our goal, and yet that could be a greater push. Yeah. But you know what else? What? Because I'm going to take it right back to the problem because that's what I like to do. But I think greater than the impulse or the the temptation of staying stuck in a problem the even greater than that is the resistance to living in the solution once you're not in a crisis i made that sound more complicated than it is yeah that was complicated yeah, okay once the problem subsides right you're in mashiach stage so to speak you know to work on oneself once they're in that point and not manufacturing a new problem. In many ways, that instinct to do that is even stronger than the instinct of staying in the problem to begin with. Does that make sense? Yeah, define problems where there aren't any. Yeah, it's true. Meaning the discomfort of things being okay is yeah. sometimes more comfortable and more attractive than than the original problem that you then that you resolved yeah true what are you trying to say we you, <laughs> the guy who comes home and tells his wife you know what happened the rabbi he gave a speech after davening and he okay you're not going to believe this he said that this is a guy mashiach coming and he's going to take us all to israel She's like, oh, my God, what? how's that for timing? We just finally paid off for the milk cow, and we finally fixed the, the leak in the roof, and now this Mashiach guy, you know what? Yasol, we have a big Abish there. He's helped us in many, many scrapes in the past. I'm sure he'll come through and help us from this guy, too. He saved us from Haman. He saved us from uh, whatever. He's, he'll save us from this Mashiach, too. Yeah. He'll give us another problem, too. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, the gullus mentality. Yeah. So what's going on? Now, now, like we ran out of programming. No, we to go no. Out. We actually no. we have Ellie. Ellie, we got a donation. A dedication. Um, what was the dedication? You got a dedication. Oh, wow, my friend Itzik Tiffenberg. Can I read a few beautiful de dedications that came in? Itzik Tiffenberg yeah. donated, and he asked for Russian Kismet Mandlin. Ellie. Um. Okay. Are you going to read? Read a few? some dedications while we're stalling for Ellie to get back. Ellie, do you know Roger Kispin Mondlin? But okay, how much did he sponsor? So he asked for the full song, but I don't he gave but it's two hundred effective. So that's really only a few bars. But it's my friend. Could we push it? I don't know, he's your friend. I don't know. Are you good for the other three <laughs> hundred? You know what? I'll I'll sing as much of the songs of the lyrics I know if I if I re somehow remember Oh, you know what? Fine. It's sick. I'm gonna do the full song and I'll match. Okay, you could go I'll do it right now. I'll I'll pay for the other half. <laughs> That's the other half. It's three hundred. What'd you say? Five hundred? An effective five hundred? Could you do the math for me, math guy? And you put it. Ooh. It's effective. All right, I'll I put in the I donation. Don't remember what we said. Uh, the full song I think is okay. at five hundred. So I'll right. come up with the other whatever it is, two hundred. I know how to play it. So I go into it, it'll come back to you. 
why don't you start singing it and yeah. Ellie will catch up with you in a minute. Oh, in the... In the face of me, though, in a vincle of hate, is it the Almone must see you in a way? Here, Ben, you're hidden, Ale, Victor, say this, and sing to Und er jid alles wie gale, steht a klor weiß sie gale. Das sie gale is gefunden handeln. Das wird sein dein Beruf. Wir rauschen kess mit Mandeln. Yes, wet kumen at sight for nice in the banan. They will in far flights in a half a world. We are in a wagon, a vest to a spannen. On a vest in the robe of oich, far a dinen feel the gel. Und als du wärst, wär in Reich, Idale, sollst du der Mannen der Himmel, Idale, Rosenkäs mit Mandeln, Schlosse, Idale, Schlosse. Thank you, Itzik. Yes, thank, thank you, you Itzik. Wow. Okay, I'm going to put it in. Uh, in but uh, well, let's read a few more dedications. Oh. We are... Oh. The other half? Okay, there is one more stanza. Itzik just gave another 50. Okay. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't. F- I'm not familiar with that. Uh, one one second. About the train. You know that the Russian guest mandolin was mentioned in the sicha. The Rebbe mentioned this song. Well, he, yep. the Rebbe mentioned it, the. My mother pointed this out to me. The Rebbe mentioned the. Uh, it's in a video. Um, this song is based on an older Yiddish folk lullaby called um, "Yid Tera is the best of Shaya. And then uh, they made this one later. But I think the next stanza he's talking about. If there is, but little my king. Oh, in those a little my king. He licked Phil and Evie's. It's similar to the other one, though. As do the star mosaics, the spray to if there is. As so you hear the best to sign with filter. Yeah, similar to the. Uh, yeah, but, but I think we missed one part oh. right at the end. It goes. Der Yidale wird als Handeln. Wir schlose Yidale, schlose Yidale, schlose. So the song the Rebbe uh, was said that in the Sicha, why is the egg, uh, oh, the, the, the close that door. Um, what was, Oi, unter jankeles vigale, steta klor weiss zigale, de zigale zu vorn hau wandlen, rajrin kes mit madlen, rajrin kes mit madlen ze jerzis. Yankele wet zijn na vroegome, vroemer wet er zijn. Ah, no, I'm forgetting. Tijd is de beste school. Something to that effect. It's not as melodic, but it's very old. And the third is the best of school. Okay, we're going to read more. Uh, you want other songs? 
Tell those guys this the uh, echo is coming through. Okay, we got more donations coming through. Uh, another small token of appreciation. Bonus round from a newest fan in Passaic, Shlomo. Mm. Oh, I think that's our friend who came Thursday oh, that's night. The guy who came Thursday that's night. right. A guy came all the way from Passaic, New Jersey. From the Thursday night Chola so class. Yeah. What's what, read his name? No, don't do that to me. Oh, no, it's don't, a okay. hard one. Uh, <laughs> Mordechai, that, that's not hard. Mordechai, okay, I'm sorry. Shlomo Mordechai, we met Thursday night. Maisha Shiner, $200. Thank you for all that you do and teach. And uh, Anonymous, for your Spotify and Amazing Soul Maps course. You're on Spotify too? Yeah. Oh, great. You, anyway, okay. Um, we have... Can I ask you something, by the way? Yeah. Because we watched a few clips. What's up with your tie selection? Is it also like the glasses? Is it, is it a mood thing? And of all the things, you know, you gave me a hard time when we we're trying to clean this place up. You had like 30 ties there. Uh, is it yeah. a mood thing? What, what's going on? You're saying when they wear different ties? It, can we get what you're slacking? I want to get a, I want to get a zoom in on your tie. So. First of all, you have to understand something. Uh, you want me to go like behind the scenes and yeah, give us an insight into the the world of. Okay, so you have to understand something first of all, that I have a, a twenty inch neck. When, you, when I buy a shirt, yeah, at least just I see perked up. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's a yeah. Do you know what your neck size is, Ellie? Uh, no. No. Definitely okay. not twenty. Not 20. Okay. I so, want you to share this story, but also with someone who's going to be joining us on Zoom, okay? Oh, someone's on oh, Zoom? Continue, continue sharing, yes. So, just talk about the ties? Continue talking about the ties. I'm saying we're going to have a guest to join us in the middle okay, of the story, fine. but don't so stop. 20 inch neck. So, basically, regular ties end up what happens is, oh, you know this. Uh, happens I, to I you, figured. Ellie, that the, the short end ends up being like this because, right? So, I actually have to buy extra long ties. There's an extra, yeah, it's an, I buy extra long ties. Hmm. So what you saw, Are you Chaim, a big and tall shop guy? Big and tall shop guy. So what you saw, Chaim, were a bunch of ties that are regular size ties that I can't, they're, they're in the other room. I can get them Wait, right now. Wait, you, you attach two ties together? No, I buy long <laughs> ties. But what you saw were a pile of ties that I can't wear because hmm. they're regular size ties. So... They were sitting around, but those are my old ties that are regular sized. And now they're out of circulation just because I, I discovered long ties. I'm like, I'm not going back to having the short end be like that. Mm. So you were one of those guys with the tie coming up to like here for a long time? No, I never did that. But the short, the back part would be. Uh, that gets annoying. Which gets annoying. Right. Well, if, you know. If, Can you we? Know, I would love to show off some of your ties. You want to see some of the ties? I mean, I don't wear, I don't wear these ties. I have anymore. to I have are to we, have a word with these sound guys. Anyway, we should give them so away. Get your ties. Can you, give on, the, you, you know where they are? They're in the other room. Okay. So I'll talk about something while you're uh, waiting for. How's it going, Ellie? Fantastic. I'm having a wonderful time here. Well, for yeah. sure. Yeah, we're having fun. Getting to practice some uh, piano playing. It's. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I always enjoy your piano playing. Thank you. Remember we did Chav Dalat Tevis together a few years ago. I played the piano. I never told you the story. No. What? Oh my goodness! This is a, this is a Pearson, the uh, Pearson Rishon. Okay, let's hear it. My sister comes over a uh, Shabbos afternoon. Chaim, this is an incredible story. Why isn't our guest on yet? And uh, hold on, wait for the story. Wait for the story. Got to hear this. Well, I think and my sister, my sister says, I met this guy. Last night at somebody's house, Friday night, Shabbos. And he says, uh, your brother saved my life. Your sister my said, sister. a guy said, your brother. Well, she has a lot of brothers. Well, he, referring to me. But he said you. Yeah. He was in the hospital with COVID in Israel. He said he couldn't do anything. He couldn't eat. He couldn't drink. He couldn't put on tefillin, nothing. The only thing he could do was hold his phone to his ear, and he listened to the nigunim that I played at that Chavdal Tevis for bringing him. <laughs> and he said, that's what it kept me alive. And I just met him uh, about a week ago in Crown Heights. We met at, uh, and it, was, it was a very, very incredible. So because of, because of that initiative and uh, all the Hashkoch Pratis, just, and then I, 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 uh, 
the guy who uploaded them to YouTube. I didn't. We didn't upload it to YouTube. That's correct. Some guy went. Yeah. And he ripped out the songs. Yeah. From the it was like a three and a half hour. Exactly. Event. He ripped out the songs. He uploaded without our permission. But I I, was, I said. Honestly, we I did, thought, we, talk, we I, talked about that. We, talk, yeah. we talked about it. Yeah. Like, should we like report it to? You? Like, no, it's Havat <laughs> Samayanis. Like, let's go. Yeah. I know, but I know who it is. I happen to know. Oh, you he, know who uploaded yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. I know. I was fine with it that he did it. Yeah. And so to his credit as well. So he also and, saved the life. He gets yeah. the assist. Absolutely, absolutely. It's yeah. just uh Where's our Zoom guest? What's going on? Zoom guest is. Zoom on. guest is. Zoom guest is Whoa! here. Oh. <laughs> Wait, 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 before, I want, do, do you know about this Thai obsession oh of Rabbi Tab? I, you know, when I, when I tuned in, I was wondering which mimer would he be in the middle of teaching, and it turned out <laughs> to be the Thai mimer, which I hadn't learned before. I couldn't even get all of them. I just took a, li- a few of them. So, were you saying these, you, you were... I have worn all of these at different times, <laughs> but I don't wear these anymore because they're, they're regular size ties. They're not short ties. For me, they're short, but for a normal person, they're regular. So I don't wear them. They're too short for Can me. I do another one of my annoying uh, things? That you... If it'll make us money, Chaim, you can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's find out who is like that much of a fan that would donate. Okay, let's, let's be practical. Um, we're still matching, right? Where are we at? Yeah, we're still matching. We're still matching. We're still Bonus matching? round matching. Where are we at? Let's see. We have another official to the, to the live stream officially 40 minutes, but we can go longer if need be. And we're at 183,000. Okay, so we need whatever. We need a lot. So um, a donation of $100, effective 200 okay. and right tie. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to get one of these ties. I'm not going to... There's too many random colors. There's absolutely no sequence. It's as if the person who bought this knew nothing about fashion. So I, I can't if. say what... As if. As if. Uh, so I, I, you'll get a tie. And you'll be able to wear a tie that you could say... Uh, you know whose tie this is? It's just Chase Taub's tie. It's a yeah. conversation piece. It, definitely a good starter. In some circles. <laughs> yeah, at some sort of party or I don't know. Uh Okay, hundred dollar effective two hundred. You write tie in the dedication, and you'll get a you get a tie. Chaim Marcus, you got name oh. dropped last night. What happened? We had Dimitri on, and he starts talking about Shara B'Tochen, and he said he wanted to learn Shara B'Tochen, and he told you, and you hooked him up with my classes. True story. Yeah, true story, and and I, I'm he's not the only one. He's just the only one who's been on on your uh, on your fundraiser who's told you about it. But uh, Baruch Hashem, so many people benefiting from that awesome class. So what was I missed Ellie's story? Sorry to make him repeat it, but what was the, the story? Of it? Ellie, I can't hear it. Ellie. Okay. I can't for some okay. reason. Ellie, I can't tell hear the story. I'm, on, I'm off. Uh, it's okay. Stage two. Um, our sister Nechama was at yeah. a uh, was at a Shabbos meal, um, and she met a uh, a gentleman from Israel, uh, originally from France. And he was very sick with COVID in the hospital for for two or two weeks or so. And time out! Time out! Time out! I can't hear you. You can't hear I me. I can't hear you. I can't hear me hear. now. For some reason, you're cutting out. For some reason, you're cutting out. Mm. I'll have to get the story from you on WhatsApp. <laughs> okay. But I want to tell you, Chase. I want to tell you something. Behind me, I'm looking at these pictures behind me that just happened to be behind me. Literally, just happened to be behind me. One of them is a picture of my wife and I outside the Mitzlerbis Caver in Yeshin. Nice. We were there a few years ago. That's that's the that one. Mm. And then an, there's another picture here where the one right next to it is Tufshin and Aleph when the Rebbe gave a dollar to all the counselors who were going to Ukraine and to Russia. It was actually still Russia when we left. When we while we were still there, it became an independent country. <laughs> um, it was August August 19th, 1991. That was the famous coup. It was also the riots in Crown Heights. But, um, and the Rebbe gave us each a dollar. He said, Dasafadir, Dasafadan Kita. And, um, and why am I mentioning that? Because the day we were going, we were taking the camp to Nezhen, to the Mittler Biscaver. On that day was the coup. I remember sitting on the bus in Kiev, and they were announcing on the radio. So we're listening to Russian radio in the bus with the kids who the new government was. Okay, so the government oh. had been overthrown. Wait, Kai, at this point, you understood Russian? 
enough to get that. Uh -huh. And I was sitting there looking at the kids and some of the parents were joining for the trip. And I was just amazed at how like nonchalant they were about this. Like they, their government was just overthrown by a military coup and everybody's just sitting there. And I looked at them, I said, aren't you, shouldn't you guys be freaking out? And they were like, no, we're used to this. This is the Soviet <laughs> Union. This is just how things go around here. Yeah. No surprises. So that's, that was what the country was like uh, a few years ago. Anyway, that's, that's that other picture. I mean, it's David Feldman, if anybody's watching, uh, standing next to me, he became a anesthesiologist, if I remember correctly, he lives in Crown Heights. Radiologist, he's my neighbor. He's my neighbor. He's, he is, he's an anesthesiologist, right? Uh, I don't know. Sorry, David. But whatever he is, he's a beautiful Jew. Is, is Ali's audio working better now? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, that's better. Oh, so okay. tell him the story, how you saved a life. Well, real quick, the... Uh, don't have to be quick. So the, well, we... Ali, you saved All a right, life. Say, Come on, <laughs> milk it. <laughs> this, uh, the, is this young man, uh, originally from France, uh, sick in the hospital with COVID uh, a couple of months ago in Israel, in Yerushalayim. And he couldn't do anything. He couldn't eat, couldn't, couldn't move. The only thing he could do was hold his phone to his ear. And he was playing from YouTube um, the Nagunim of the Alter Rebbe that I performed at the Chavdal Tevis Fabrengen, our first, uh, first venture with, with Rip Chase. And uh, he said that's what, that's what kept him, uh, pulled him through the COVID, who kept him alive. Wow. And uh, I met him uh, uh, a week, about two weeks ago in Crown Heights, a week and a half ago. It was a very, uh, very special meeting. One is not uh, permitted to be envious, uh, except for Kinasoy from Tarbachachma. I feel like with, with singers, the kina that you could have is that ability to be able to affect people and to be able to walk into a hospital room and bring so much joy to somebody. You know, uh, if I walk into a hospital room, they'll, you know, the kid in the bed will be like, "Why is this guy in my room?" <laughs> <laughs> You know, if, 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 if somebody who's made a career of singing or whatever they do and, and people recognize them, you're able to bring them joy. What a tremendous thing. And I, I uh, applaud all the singers out there. And Baruch Hashem, we have yeah. an uncle who's, uh, who, who leads in that category. 100%. Um, I've seen him do it many, many times. Um, so, Ashrecha and, uh, and keep doing it. Thank you. Thank you. It's a shame. It's Chase, a shame. How much time left to this uh, fundraiser? Um. The live stream was scheduled to go till 11 p.m. Eastern. We'll see if we can keep the live stream guys here for a little longer. And, uh, I mean, we reached our goal, and we're in oh, bonus sure. rounds. We have matchers, I think, to take us up to 200. I think they're wow. going to match 10,000 for the next 10,000 rays, so then that would take us to 200. Beautiful. Beautiful. I can't wait to take all the credit for it. Yeah. Well, you know, you are... <laughs> You're our. Uh, is he? Our, is there a final guest of the evening, or we even have more guests coming? Up? We have another. We do have guests. Perhaps two, we can still give, two, can still two guests. Guy. Two <laughs> guests. Uh, what, maybe Chaim wants to dump a few dollars and get his brother to sing a favorite song. Yeah, you could get a Ellie Marcus oh. uh, request for it's a, for a price. Wow. A pri yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, he, he gets the the friends and family rate. Yeah, and I would say if my mother's watching, I'm going to be in trouble to turn that down. <laughs> so I got it. I have to take you up on that. The question is, what am I going to request? Um, I was listening to one of Ellie's, uh, one of Ellie's, Ellie's first album, and I forgot how much great material is on there. And now I can't think of the song, but it's a ballad, Ellie. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but can hmm. you think of a ballad from the first album? Well, there's only two. Okay. Uh, Roy Feynman or Alvar Achamim? Are you whichever one you're comfortable playing, and if neither, <laughs> okay, then I'll pick something else. Okay. Um... They're both in the same key. Okay. <laughs> Die <laughs> 
So what's going on, Chaim? Yeah, I was going to say that um, I'm sorry that uh, I didn't send Ellie other instruments. I took drum lessons uh, for five minutes and then realized I was in my 20s that um, the chances of me being a good drummer were slim to none unless I was willing to put in three hours a day. And at that age, it's that's a tough one to do. So I just packed up the whole drum set. I sent it to California. I was in New York at the time. Ellie was probably six or seven years old. And by the time I came to visit a few months later, he played drums. Oh. So I'm thinking to myself, if I would have sent a guitar, a you piano, should have quit many whatever. instruments. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, back in the day, in the in the early uh, Marcus Brothers eighth day, in the you know before eighth day was eighth day, it was sort of Marcus Brothers showing up on stage for a few minutes. And uh, we had a show in Minnesota with Benny. And I remember booking the band and we were on stage and I suddenly heard a flute playing and I remembered I did not book a flutist. So why is there a guy playing flute? And I turn around and it's Ellie. And I said, Ellie, what are you doing with that thing? So he said he had a roommate or something like that. Someone had a flute laying around. So he learned how to play flute. Um, yeah. It's... What can I say? I, I can, <laughs> am I allowed to kvel? Yes. My younger brother. Baruch Hashem, Hashem gave him these talents that, uh, you know, he's, he's probably one of, or the, the only, perhaps the only singer out there that you give, give him an instrument, uh, you know, give him a, a night with an instrument and in the morning he'll play it for you. So just, uh, you know, it's a talent. It's a beautiful talent. You, and uh, of course he knows that he takes his talent seriously, but not himself. Baruch Hashem. And um, yeah. How about I next, play, next I, year? People ask me what I play. I tell them I tell them I play the radio. That that's what I play. <laughs> next but, year's uh, live stream. How about Ellie with a theremin? There you go. Okay. Well, you have one uh, delivered to my house. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> anyway, let me just. Uh, I don't know. I really don't know where you are on timing. We got to go. We have to go to uh, another segment uh, because we're running so out. Give and him, we a, give him a warning, though. God. No, 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 yeah, no, no. no. I'm, so I'm, I was going just to his point. I want you to hone in so we get the money. Uh, tell the people why they should donate. There you go. Okay, great. So let me let me just say that I couldn't be more happy that uh, Rabbi Shastow came across my screen. I don't even know how many years ago. But um, I think it was, I saw a video of you teaching Perik Chavov. Uh, and you started with saying uh, that this is a trivia question about Tanya. Uh, where's the only sports metaphor? And then you went on to teach the class. And I just thought that was probably the best class I've ever heard on a Perik Tanya. I was sold and on board. And I've been on board ever since. So just uh, continue to reveal tangible brachas and everything. Uh, I, I, I know so many people who benefit from your classes on a regular basis. We spoke about Shabbat Tachan. Shabbat Tachan is changing people's lives. I'm, I'm literally sitting here. My wife and I are learning it together. 
The Felig no edition. Just, just sitting, the Felig. The Felig Zomer. edition. Shout out to the Felig's who are sitting shiva for their mummy. Uh, who, uh, their youngest, the youngest of the Felig's is a friend of mine, Uli, classmate, uh, and uh, wish them, um, you know, all the best and everything. The day Bishter should send them revealed joy. Amen. And uh, and shout out to Tishner Zalman for his uh, support of so many great causes and especially this Shara Bitochen and, and your work, etc. So keep it uh, keep it going, keep it growing. Mazel Tov on the new studio. I love it. It's beautiful. Really, really nice. Sounds great. Looks great. And, uh, you know, these are this, there's no reason why uh, the the Torah consumer should have to suffer through poor audio or poor, poor video in today's day and age. So really kudos for getting that done. And uh, it's really, really nice to see. Thank you for joining us. Absolutely. My pleasure. Anytime, anytime. And, and, uh, and thanks for having Dimitrion and my brother and Chaim. Thanks. When I see you, from when I see you, excellent job, really. Oh, thanks a lot. I surround myself with good people. Baruch Hashem. That's, Baruch that's Hashem. the trick. You got to find good people. You take them all the way to the top. That's it. That's Baruch it. Hashem. All right. So who's your next guest? You know who our next I guest no is? You know, first of all, if, if anyone just tuned in, where is he? Uh, if anyone just tuned in wondering why there's a bunch of ties uh, <laughs> sitting in front of this, um, there's a good reason for it. Uh, we're giving away Chase's ties. Apparently he can't fit in them anymore. We're not giving them away. Well, if for money. For money. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> That's a paradox. We're giving it away free for money. <laughs> Let's do it a few more, okay? I got them. I, 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 I chose these. I racked my brain trying to remember these. Oh, this is a good one for you. Okay. Spirituality. Should I read the title you gave it? No, don't. I just, okay. for that was for that was your own reference. Okay, fine. Once you finally let go of your preferences, things will start to go your way. How does that work? It's actually true. I should elaborate on it? Very quick, yeah. <sighs> no, let them figure it out. Okay, exactly. Ellie, go. <laughs> Ellie got one. I'll become the ideal person I'm ultimately meant to be as soon as I'm good and done being who I am. Hmm. <laughs> oh, here's one. Um, okay. You know... I and I censor the language on this one. I thank learned you. how to feel. Thank you, Chaim. I learned how to feel bad about myself from some of the best people you could ever meet. Oh my gosh, that's very sad. Why is that? Like uh, the meaning the, the state of humanity. Wait, hold, what, 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 what are you trying mean? to say? You're trying to say that we were some. We learned some of our worst qualities from the people closest to us. Is that what you're saying? I you said I didn't different. say that. No, I thought it meant. Uh, I thought it meant like people I admire oh. put me down and gave me an infer inferiority complex. Oh, that, I was saying something else. Saying different. By the way, that's totally true. No, I'm meaning to say my standard of like being hard on myself is yeah. not like just some like I'm very good at it. I've practiced it. I've practiced by the best. Oh, you oh so huh. uh, yes. The that's best why I hang that. out with you. Yeah. Right. Shimusha um, gadei let me limu. Okay. Okay. That maybe. Uh, all right, Ellie, give us another one. It took a lot of misery to be this happy. <laughs> there you go. That's big. That's yeah. big. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that the greatest yeah. paradox yeah. of all? What's one of them? Yeah. It's up there, definitely. And that's in line. Oh, here's a few. Yeah. Um. <sighs> Knowing how perfectly free from suffering we could all be is what pains me the most. You see, the discomfort of, of change, yeah. right? That was the. Oh, here's one. If you aren't someone who can fake it till you make it, just pretend that you are. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that reminds me of, by the way? Willingness to be willing. That that if you can't fake it till you make it, just pretend that you can. That reminds me of the betochen thing. Mm, you showed right. it last night. That's already, right. right. Yes. Is there any way we could play it again? Um, are you there, uh, Shama? Is that you... weird to request yeah. my own no, videos? No, I think it's so important. Yeah. I think it's very, very important. We have, a, we have a guest on. That was a clip from but like an hour talk. Get, so like the whole remember, hour, I had 10 seconds were good. No, no, no. That was like a voice you posted, like a voice note. That was one. it a voice note? Oh. Yeah, yeah. One second. Uh, Shamai. Um, I have my computer open. One second. 
Could you play the video called uh, Bitachen? And in the meantime, I'm going to do another one. I have to find the name of it. Um, uh, it's just called Bitachen. Bitachen is not just that I trust that as long as I trust Hashem can do anything for me. That's one level. That's one level of Bitachen. But I came to a new Hakare in Bitachen. A new appreciation. What's Bitachen? Bitachen is when I trust that even if I don't trust that Hashem can make everything good for me, Hashem can still make everything good for me. That my lack of Bitachen is not a limitation upon Hashem. So that's what I trust. I trust that Hashem can help me even if I don't trust that He can help me. So that reminded me we said if you can't fake it till you make it, so pretend that you can. So this is what I just said, which is that it, even, if I don't... See, if you have trust, in, I'm not going to say it as well as I said in that clip, but if you trust in Hashem, then Hashem can help you, then Hashem will be able to help you. If you the betochen is actually, people don't understand, the betochen is a cleat. It creates a vessel for the thing. Mandy was telling me upstairs, he was right, because we're in bonus rounds. Hmm. So it causes the good thing to happen. But what if I'm not holding there? So I could actually trust, my, my betochen could be, and I, and I get by with this, Many times, I trust that Hashem can help me, even if I don't trust that He can help me. There you go. That's a deep one. You're saying, is it possible that some people are, or there is? Did anyone get the ties yet? Don't be offended. <laughs> not that many people went for the songs either, and no one, not even one person for real, went for my toys last night. They did, but they just wanted to, the stound people. They just wanted they to just leave. They just wanted us to leave. And then they didn't even take my toys when I offered it to them on the way out. So, speaking of, wait, we have a special guest on. Now these toys hmm. are going to be going like hotcakes, and we're not—we're actually out of them. Could you bring in our guest? Oh. What are the, what are what is that toy, Chaim? What is that thing? What are you talking I, about? Uh, this oh, one's keeper. mine. I claim this one is mine. I'm wearing a Soul Words Keeper. Our you know, guest is Yankee also, Pearson. Give it to me so I can bring it up to the camera. Okay. Let's let's let's. Let, I just want to feature. I just want to show it because this is such a work of art. In case people, oh, it's Yankee Pearson from iKeeper. Okay. Zo zoom out. Of, <laughs> just not so close. Wow, Call Shreen. Is that a 7 Eleven logo, Rabbi you Chase? Think, at first glance, you think it's a 7 Eleven thing, and then you look closer, you're like, oh, no, it's not 7 Eleven. Rabbi Chase, you need your microphone. It's all right, all right. So at first, you think it's 7 Eleven, and then you look more closely, and you see it's not 11. It says Chavivin, which sort of wow. sounds like 11. And Shvi and Chavivin, Kol Shvi and Chavivin, like the Methodist says, the Rebbe brings in the, the Maimah Basilagani. And then on the back, of course, little corporate plug, soul words. Learn so words. everything's on Shacha Pratis, Rabbi Shea. So what is the connection between the seventh generation and 7 Eleven? What are some similarities between the two? Slurpees are very popular. We did. They had, they had Slurpees here when we came. The, yeah. the, all the, Our the call phone center team. was being fueled by Slurpees. Yeah. Our whole call center oh, was fueled I know what? on Slurpees. What? What? Oh, so, or connection. Me, oh, there's feet. But um, they do free Slurpee day, and on the you know, we're going to have the Madanim Ka'afer. The right, mm. a, a, a July eleventh, Seven the, Eleven day. The, the tabs really like this game, finding and connections. I'll tell you what. Also, it, you know, there's an old joke. Uh, I think it's a Stephen Wright one. He says, uh, "I went to the Seven Eleven and I asked him." Well, it says you're open. It says Seven Eleven, but you're open 24 hours. He says, "Yeah." He said, "So why do you have locks on the doors?" That was going to be my next question, and you, you took it from me. So we're open 24 hours. That's how we're similar to Seven Eleven. We're open 24 Correct. hours. Do you, you know, know why it's called Seven Eleven? What, this is a trivia question. Why is it called Hold on a second. I just got a text. Mendy Kasowitz wants a tie, and he gave $1,000. All right. So you know Kasowitz what? For 1000 you get to choose. 
Okay, okay. Mandy, it's please text him. in which one you want, <laughs> and we'll give you whatever one you want. Can we yeah. get a close up of the ties? No, there's not too many. Like, First like of all, like you already in? you got into trouble. You you like you the copyright people. You just put it right in their face. Let them know exactly on the camera. Hmm? You better get the. Which camera is uh, on? This one, the one by Ellie? Yeah. So, uh, Chaim, you could go show the, the ties, and I'll... <laughs> <laughs> well, who should show the ties? Okay? Okay. Uh, you know what, Laura? Yeah, right. Ellie will do the ties. Do some of the ties. Okay. Chaim, you don't look busy. Show us the ties, Chaim. <laughs> Tell us about I Keep It while Chaim shows the ties. And Tell Mendy, Mendy Kasowitz is going to pick his... By the way, you know Mendy Kasowitz was the counselor of Mendy Hertz in camp. Yes, that's true. Both big so who's listeners who's... and supporters. Let's put them all on. Just stay over there. You know, the tie over the next thing, the open tie, my Uncle Morty Agnew, the president over the years. I am your man of many it's ties. one of the best looks I've ever uh, met. I'm all tied up. You're all tied up. Scott Allen. You, you, wear, you wear many ties. Tell us about iKeeper. Yankee, tell us about iKeeper. There's so much to uh, say, but I want to tell you that the one you think the, the iKeeper you made is, is really, really beautiful. And I hope that all your uh, all the viewers here get one, you know, whatever they have to pay for it. Or, uh, you know, what, what well, is it? I'll tell the you what they have to pay for it. In order to get the, the yarmulke, so to get the Haggadah, you, know, you have to do $30 a month recurring or 360 on the spot, which is effective 720 to get the Haggadah and the Yamaka from iKeeper, you have to do either $45 a month recurring or $540 on the spot, which are both effectively $1,080. That's a great deal. That's a bargain. Can you imagine somebody paying $1,000 for a Yamaka? I could. iKeeper. Yankee Pearson, we're already out of Yamakas, and there's still more donations in. So, so we this got is actually a little tourist do, trap, getting you on somebody. You're going oh, to Mandy sponsor. Mandy Kassowitz just texted in an update. He was also the counselor in camp of Ellie Nash. Oh, how about that? Look at this. Mm. Okay. Well, We're well, upping the order. We're throwing in another 60 iKeepers. Let's get, let's get the donations coming in. Yeah? Let's get it coming You're in. sponsoring 60 iKeepers? Yeah, 60 we're throwing in another 60. Yo, wow. Thank you for sponsoring 60 <laughs> Keepers. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you, Yankee. I want to, I want to put a plug in. Put a plug in for my from the Instagram page at custom underscore by iKeeper. You are. So if you it. get logos, we do we do yarmulkes and masks. You can have your Chabad house, your shul, your school, your any anything, camp, business. We did a beautiful bunch for Chaim's wedding, Chaim Agula's wedding. Wait, we did a beautiful sure. bunch. I, of, hey, I have. Wearing I'm wearing uh, iKeeper right now from my wedding. And we did matching. Uh, yeah. We did matching masks as well. Put a few. Three hundred <laughs> ties on my head instead. Okay, it's all right. Chaim, how much do we have to donate to get a, to get a yarmulke from your wedding? I have like five left, and you did the mask, but I have no more left of those. I actually took a I'm few gonna... masks because I knew you'd run out, so I have some for nice. you. you I'm gonna want it. go out on a limb here and say, based on what I'm seeing of these ties, you are very sad since they closed that Sims in downtown Manhattan, huh? <laughs> that dingy. Fakakta Sims that like you, you felt like was it a basement? It was like a basement with like steel stairs and like, just very creepy. It, this, <laughs> these look like Sims. Mandy ties. Hertz just texted in. I'm putting in another hundred dollars strictly towards your Streimel. It's an inside <laughs> reference. Inside reference. Inside reference. Well, Mendy's, Mendy we Hertz. Do, we could do. We could do eye Streimels. We'll put Streimel. the Streimel. your logo on the Streimel for you. Very good. So, Rabbi Chase, I heard a rumor that you're heading up to Muncie. You're Tess Kisley for the bringing. Where did you, really? Is it with Ali? What? Is, do people know about it yet? I guess you could tell it. I heard a rumor. Maybe it, I'm not supposed to say it out loud. I, I, you said it. I, it's Probably. okay. I don't think it's secret. I, you could say it. I could. I could. I could plug it right now. Yeah, you could say it. Yeah. Okay, Yitzchak Kislev, but will be it will be the night after Chaf Kislev. Correct. Right. I think it's Thursday night. Chaf Kislev. Which one is so it? So Wednesday night, night. Wednesday the night. night of night after Chaf Kislev, Rabbi Shay's Tau, together with Ali Marcus and local Muncie resident Rabbi Y Y Jacobson will be for bringing together. How do you like that? Yeah. Uh, we we look forward to. Wait. You, you gonna be there? Oh, when you, uh, were in, when you were in Muncie for Shabbos, you heard about it? 
They're ready. They're, they're, there's a buzz in the air about it's it. It's all over town. Amazing. Uh, let me ask you something. What? Um, we first of all, we're at 187,000, right? Yankee, you roped uh, me into Clubhouse. Maybe no, it was someone else. It was you? Yeah, I did. And then I, I did. and then I schlepped Robbie Taub into Clubhouse. That's right. Not sure where things are at Clubhouse you're wise, like but Lee, it was Lee, a good. You're like Shady. A good three weeks Lee, Lee, that Lee, it was, you it know, it was a good three weeks where Clubhouse was the new all nighters, everything, yeah. and there was a lot of people we had uh, on some of those rooms, and Robbie Taub was generous with his time. People don't know just how much he spreads, he spreads himself pretty thin, uh, and uh, you know what? I, I want to put it. Whoever was on some of those clubhouses that happens to be watching now, why don't you just give any donation, any amount, and just write something in the comments, just for fun. I want to say that before Clubhouse, and we, we were doing Zoom calls the whole during the during the lockdown, then the shutdown, and after during COVID, when things were still, you know, people were still weren't meeting together. We used to forbring day and night with Rabbi Taub. That's always right. available Shout out to with us. Mm-hmm. Always, always for bringing a whole night, and every time, you know. And then once that kind of ended, Clubhouse started. I think Clubhouse started too late. It was already after COVID. They would have started just a few months earlier. It would have been a lot more popular. They started just as things were opening up. But even when Clubhouse started, and me, you, and Rabbi, you, you, I'm saying you, uh, Chaim, and Rabbi Chase, yeah. and everybody else who was on Clubhouse at the time, we were we, we were for bringing a whole day and night, and we used to... Uh, I used to ping Rabbi Chase into every clubhouse, and he was always he can't help himself. Us. Always giving, always giving. Okay, yeah, Yankee, Yankee, we no, are in a crunch. We got to get say, twelve. Because he's always free. He was always picking up his kids. He was dropping them off. He was picking really? up this, running an errand. And you say, "I have five minutes. I'm waiting in line to pick up my kid. I have three minutes here, two minutes here." Every time he answered, he had three minutes, two minutes. But even those two, three minutes, whatever he had, he always came on. And then as soon as the time came, they had to leave. He would just. Leave. We say, what happened to every time? Oh, oh you must have <laughs> had to pick up his kids. You just kind of slip out of the room. All right, Yankee, cut. Leaves, Yankee cut. The way the... Chaim leaves a Shabbos meal or party, you know, a right. uh, French goodbye. French goodbye. <laughs> Yankee, cut to cut to the chase. You have some puns for us? You promised us some puns. <laughs> so well, I just thought you. So last year, I, I suggested Rabbi Chase's next book is Cut to the Chase. It's been a year. I still haven't seen the book come out yet. So I want to sell my idea to another Chase, but I cannot find anybody else named Chase. No, Chase, Chase Cantor. Chase Cantor. I just bought that book, right? Isn't is that it? No. I don't know. No, that's not. It's a different something, something else. So I want to know, Rabbi Chase, where does the name Chase come from? It's a good a question. Called the Bible. But well, well, why were you named Chase? What, there's more to the story the than just that. Just no, my mother just picked the name. Yeah. yeah. Who is the biblical figure named Chase? So, you know, that... Adam and Eve had uh, three sons. People don't realize because one, Cain was the first murderer. Havel was the first murder victim. And then yeah, after they got over that, they had a third son, Chase. Yeah. You know what they say? The, fir- the first the time constipation is mentioned in the Torah when Cain wasn't able. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Okay, you got one more? Because we got to go. We have to raise another $12,000. Wait, so you're saying that Chase was a son of Adam and Chava? Yes, that's correct. In Divrei Yom in Chronicles, it says Adam, Chase, and Eish. It gives the genealogy of man. Wow. There's a mimer from the Fidik Rebbe who speaks about uh, that Kain, Havel, and Chase are Rosh HaTzadik Val Shuvah, three Madregas. Yeah. I was thinking that, I was thinking that to not to, you know, mix other people that are, other, uh, Things this, but I was thinking that, that all the big speakers today in the world, in the Jewish world, in the Chabad world, you all have one name that is just you know it's like uh, you can identify. You have you have Shays, you have Manis, you have Simon, now you have YY. You all have to have a name that just you know you don't have to say a last name. Oh, that's good. Maybe that's what does it. That's what does I think it. that's why YY did YY because the Yassi, everybody's a Yassi. Right. So YY, at least you say YY, you know who he's talking about. You know who he's talking about. Clever. Right away. Yeah. Clever. That's good. Yeah. Yankee, by the way, uh, it does a lot of uh, great work. The townhouse in Crown Heights is an up-and-coming community. A very, very unique. Wait, a quick plug for the townhouse, and then we have to go. We're all tied up here. I'm going to plug the townhouse, but I want to, uh, on air, ask, invite Rabbi Chase to come and speak for Brang for the, the townhouse community. I'd like to know when he's available to come for Brang with us. I'll check my calendar right now. No, um, get back to me. Text me. You have my WhatsApp. And we'll yeah, work sure. it out. We'll make it happen. I know you have my WhatsApp because okay. out of Shabbos, when I was in a pinch, I, I WhatsApped you. So I owe you one. 
So, uh, you got, yeah. Did you get your gefilte fish? It was really good. Baruch Hashem, the guy took care of it. Yes, everything was good. Thank God. I want to thank I want to thank you, Gerard Abishis, for always being available to answer our questions and for bringing and teach us chassidus and everything. Uh, you're always available for us. So I want to thank you. Tell thank us about you. the picture in the back. Oh, the back of you. Is that the picture I think it is? So uh, this man sitting across from, from Rabbi Tab, I had this plus of We can't of see it. It's a beautiful. A so this was my shatchanist over here. This beautiful picture. We have uh, Pinya Korf. We have Pinya Korf. We have Shleim Azar. Beautiful, Zarfi, beautiful the artwork by Tzemach Kunyan. Thank you, yes. Yankee. Thank you for the eye keepers. And thank you. Um, thank you for all the valuable work that you do. A lot of stuff that Yankee's involved with under, under the radar. Thank you. Remember, I we made a, we made a, not to not to be political. We made a Trump yama because we called it "Keep America Great." <laughs> nice. <laughs> he loves the fun. I had to throw a pun in there. Not, it's not a political. It's, it's just have to be a joke. All right, we're gonna raise some Take money. Care. Thank you, Yankee. You know what? We're, you're Thank gonna you. get a tie. For the I keep us, you're getting a tie, a Sims tie. All right. You have my address? Yeah. I know where you live. So I guess. Thank you. Um. How about a song? Ellie, could you do like a nostalgic Chabad Telethon song? Your brother Chaim was on. And, you know, just... What's a nostalgic... Could I request... Do I have to buy some ties? Return to order. Uh, How about that I believe that uh, oh, Ron, uh, Ellie Ron used to sing at the Chabad Telethon? Do you know that? How much of it I know uh, offhand. So just give us the, the, let me, let me the refrain. Let me try. I'm in your hands I'm in your hands Till the end of time Lord of Abraham I'm in your hands How's the second verse go? I forgot. I forgot You, you, you You, Lord, and only you Lord and only you, 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 Lord and only you, 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 Lord and only you, 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 since the world began, you, 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 you make me understand, you, 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 Lord and only More to it. I exist. I exist. Tell the world that I am well. I will live. I will live, I will live to tell the tale. I exist. I exist. Through the fire, through the hell. I exist. I exist. I will live to tell the tale. You. Finally, Ron. Ron. Wow, yeah. that's a, oh. Gotta blow the dust blow off the that, dust one. that one. It's on the Teleton classic. Uh, well, more than David. Oh, I know one. I don't know if he sang it on Teleton. You heard a glance. Uh, mm. I don't think he sang it on the Teleton. No, that was just. Sang, it's not uh, his song, but that's uh, he doesn't really. He used to sing.
So what's new in your life, Ellie? Well, we're trying to finish this campaign. Uh, I want to encourage everyone to give if you have not. Let's look at telephone. This doesn't look at telephone. <laughs> um, you know, Baruch Hashem, doing. Uh, you want to do a couple more with me? Yeah, let's do. These are some of these are. are, are right? Yeah, I think uh, these these really these really resonate with artists. Thank you. I got. I think. I you mean because of like the existential suffering yes, artists? Yeah. Yes, artists are always uh, in an existential crisis. You're a night guy too. You know, I used to be, and then I had kids, and that had to stop. <laughs> All right, what do you got? Right. Uh, if, if you haven't learned to feel compassion for all living beings, your life, <laughs> your life has been a total waste of resources. Ouch. <laughs> uh, here's one. You know, expressing my individuality is more important to me than being validated by the group, and people just love that. <laughs> Go. What do you got? I feel extremely fortunate to be among the ten percent who don't sit around all day counting their blessings. Ooh, Ooh that's a harsh one. That's a harsh one. Here's this. <laughs> this one's for Rabbi Tab. Oh. Yeah. My inability to feel my emotions is tearing me apart by the stomach. <laughs> 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 uh. And you know what? <laughs> if only we had it just a little worse, we'd realize how good things are. Oh, that's profound. That's profound. Yeah. You want to know what else profound? Very similar to that one. During the Holocaust, you know, for, for a good chunk of time there, I don't think people realize to what extent many places in Europe, Jews that were still, you know, there was yet to have a Nazi occupation, they didn't know to what extent uh, things were going on. You know, they heard, you know, rumors, but they didn't know what was true or not. Yep. And, and uh, the, an expression came about that says, Oy, how lucky are we Jews? We don't even know how unfortunate we are. <laughs> By the way, I got a text here from Zalman Goldstein, who uh -huh. was the publisher of a few books that I worked on, but specifically of the Ami Letters Volume 1 and Volume 2. And he says here he'll donate 20 copies of the Ami Letters Volume 2 to give out his gifts. Do you have them? So he has. He's donating. Oh. He has them. So I guess anyone who makes a donation and writes uh, Ami letters in the dedication, we have 20 of them. Zalman Goldstein uh, donating 20 copies. All right. And we're trying to get you, to, the, to finish the bonus round right now. Could we? Could we? I know we're supposed to stop. It's 11 o'clock, but can we so, go a bit further? So I spoke with 3 to one Motion, who are... Phenomenal. Such phenomenal. Round of applause for 3 to 1 Motion. 3 to 1 Motion for all of your video needs, live streaming, video production, editing, and they're always they're always rolling with whatever always, whatever comes up so they said uh, 11 o'clock and I said, "Well, we want to finish the bonus uh, matching round, but we got to get 3 to 1 Motion guys out of here, so we need to raise another uh, We'll do it by midnight. I think we'll absolutely. We're at the 11,000 Probably even before. Yeah, I'm you know sure. what? If you if you care about these guys, I mean, yeah. if you if you were that, if you were that, you know, only a schmuck like you. <laughs> you missed the one. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, but you missed the one he said. He said, you know, what what was the one again? The compassionate one. Oh, he said, um, oh, it was great. If you haven't learned com to feel compassion for all living beings, your life has been a total waste of resources. Exactly. <laughs> so be compassionate. <laughs> <laughs> be compassionate let these guys go home they've been working very hard and uh let's try to let's bring it in we got uh eleven and a half thousand dollars left oh here's one and i want here's we're gonna play a game rabbi taub i'm gonna say one you yeah. have to tell me the hasidic line that this relates to okay all right here we go now that i have it all i miss the feeling that there must be something more Now that I have it all, I miss the feeling that there must be something more. Hmm. What is the Hasidic line? Halavai Bakaydish. Oh, yeah. Hold on a second. Ellie, get ready. Just get, get ready. You know, King David, when he was thirsting in the desert, yeah, he said, nafshi. My soul thirsts for you. And he starts thinking about the good old days, the good old days, back in Yerushalayim. He says, Cain, 
If only I could see you, behold you in the holy place. Baal Shem Tov says that Cain can also mean halavai, if only. Meaning, here I am in the desert and I'm thirsting for you. If only when I was back in the Kodesh, when I was in the good old days, I would have known that right now, these days are the good old days. If I could have had that thirst before my desert experience, if in a holy place I could have that same passion. And there's a song about it, and it goes like this. Oi kein ba koidens hasi sikho mirois muzikho u khevoide kho Oi kein ba koidens i hasi sikho oi lirois muzikho Abridged version. The abridged version. No, I was reminded of a story. The uh, I don't know which rebbe it is, but the chassid who comes in and says, "I don't know what to do. I don't have any cheshek to learn." Yeah, I think it was the tzemach tzaddik. Well, uh, let me hear the punchline. And uh, the rebbe says, similar to yeah, the answer being in the question, he takes the man's word and says, "Unvasal ichtan." As a yeah. So translate. What should I do? Like, well, know. what was the problem? I don't know if I translated that. The um, you didn't translate it. Okay. The guy says, "I I don't have the motivation to study." So the rabbi says, "But what should I do? I do have motivation to study." He said, like wistfully, like, oh, and alas, <laughs> I do have the motivation. Well, no. Meaning to say that it's a beautiful thing sometimes, to. Uh, have to overcome to have to uh so we're thinking struggle. that there's a problem when in reality this is an opportunity this is the way it's supposed that's to be that's right things are yeah. what they seem yeah cherish the that's why we don't wear tzitzis in a, a, a cemetery right to not uh, mock those who are no longer obligated so tell us about like things not uh being what they may seem Talk as they ap- as they appear, the whole world is not as it appears. It's a whole uh, they call it alma de shikra, world of falsehood. Can I? You know what? I'll tell you a story about alma de shikra, but uh, yeah, I, I I don't actually don't know if I ever told this story before. One time, this is a complicated story to tell actually, just because there's a lot of description involved. Uh, this is a story that happened to me. Um, uh, I think it was Sukkis. Yeah, it was Sukkis. And I came home from Shul, and I went back to the sukkah behind our house, and my wife says, um, I need to put out, you know, you know what I think they're called chafing dishes. I think that's what the caterers call them. And you, like, put sternos under them, like the little gel, flammable gel called sternos. And so she says, I want to put out, that's how I want to serve. So I'm like, okay, no problem. It's Yom Tif. It was Yom Tif, not Shabbos. It was Yom Tif. So you could, you can light a flame from an, another flame, flame, from a pre-existing flame. So she's like, I want to light the chafing dishes. So I'm like, okay, no problem. No problem. I got this. So I took the, like the chafing dish. It's really like a metal wire. 
sort of like a frame and it has within it like a, a pan like a, an aluminum pan and then in the bottom of the frame you put this uh, sterno tray actually i didn't have them i didn't have them at home i had to go get them that was right i had to go to the shul so i went to the shul to get the tray because that's why i had left them because we did an event or something i left it in shul so i went back to the shul to get the tray and the frame the wire frame that holds that whole apparatus and the sterno gel canister and and to and they get it lit to get it lit because there was a pilot light in the in the kitchen in the industrial kitchen in the shul so i go back to the shul and i get the whole thing i get the 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 the, the wire frame and the aluminum pan and i get the sterno and i put it in the little holder in the bottom and I, and i light it from the from the pilot and now i got to get it home so we lived maybe two and a half blocks from shul so i had to get yeah it was two and a half blocks i had to get it two and a half blocks so I'm walking in the street with this chafing dish, with the pan and the frame and the everything. Could you? Okay. Anyways, no, you, I thought you were eating, and I was going to say, Shami, take the guy off camera so he can eat a snack, but you're just biting the tip off the cigar. That's okay. Someone messaged me, no cigar on the set. I'm like, you know what? Watch me. I try That's to behave, right. but this is my pacifier, my silly putty, my toothpick. Do it. Do whatever you want, right. Chaim. It's okay. We're not going to kick you out of here for your cigar. Okay, so I'm walking. You know, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. You don't have to, you know. Yeah, you don't have to make a big deal about it. So I'm walking down the street, and I'm holding the whole thing, the wire frame and the metal uh, pan that's in it, and the sterno uh, gel canister that's lit. It's lit. It's on fire. And I'm walking down the street, and I'm carrying it, and I'm walking um, across the street, and it's very windy. It's very, very windy. And the wind keeps coming. And like lifting up the tray, and every time the wind comes, there's a draft. So that little aluminum tray, grrr, it starts like shaking grrr, inside that wire frame. And I was maneuvering to not let it, the wind pick the tray up out of the, the, the frame. So I was like dipping and diving, kind of, kind of like a boxer, like a pugilist, like Dimitri. And I was like dipping and diving, like to, to dodge the wind, that the wind shouldn't take my uh, tray out of the frame. So, it, but the wind keeps coming, brrr, and then it would like I would twist the other way, and then the wind would fly the other way. So, I'm going across the street, and I'm in the middle of the intersection. I was right in the middle of the intersection. As I'm in the middle of the intersection, this giant wind came, and I tried to anticipate it, and I tried to move, the, and and I moved the wrong way, and the wind came whoosh, right into that frame, right up through the opening in the top that lifted the aluminum tray straight into there. I saw this aluminum pan fly 30 feet in the air like a Chinese box kite. I'm not exaggerating. It flies straight into the air. And I'm standing in the middle of the intersection. I'm standing in the middle of the intersection. And I'm watching. And the thing is flying in the, in, in the air. And now, as the tray's up in the air... The flame is totally unprotected. Whew, flame goes out. So flame goes out. Tray up in the air. And then the wind stops. And the tray plummets. And it hits. I don't know if you ever heard the sound of an empty aluminum tray. Oh, yeah. Hitting like the corner of the tray. Hitting the concrete in the middle of this. Bang! Like a gong. Like the sound of a <laughs> gong. Bang! just to seal the whole humiliation. And as this is happening, at this moment, all of a sudden, I hear <laughs> slow clap, sarcastic slow clapping, like this. And I look up. I was there. <laughs> Tybal comes in, she says she was there. Tybal, if you were there, you would have been like four years old, so it's possible you were there, and I just don't remember you being there. You heard the story well, I, so I, I, I felt like I was there. You said it so, so vividly. So Tybal, if she was there, she would pr probably have been four years old. And That uh, sounds like something embarrassing enough to remember. So, but I look up, I look up, and I told her I was in the, mi was in the middle of the intersection. So in, in the middle of the intersection, any direction you look, you're looking straight down a street. But the street that I was looking down 
was a T intersection, meaning the intersection I was in was a four way, but the next block was a T intersection. So the guy who was slow clapping was facing me directly. He, he had like, there was a fence and he had his back to the fence and he's facing, he's standing with his back to the fence, staring straight down the street into the intersection where I just got humiliated. And he's going like this. And I'm thinking to myself, how dare you? Have you no compassion? Have you no humanity? Here I am clearly, clearly experiencing frustration, humiliation. And may, even if he doesn't understand that it's Yom Tov and the pre-existing flame, and if he has no concept, but he knows that a human being was just humiliated, and he's staring down the street at me, and he's going... <laughs> and I, f my, I just filled up with so much righteous anger with such indignation and I, I was thinking what should I even respond how should I respond I was so angry and hurt and a second later I see people with numbers like paper numbers on their chests running a bunch of people with paper numbers on their chest running the other way like perpendicular to me they're running like this. And the guy who is leaning against the fence is going, keep it up! Keep going! And I realized he's one of these guys who cheers on a marathon. Oh, wow. This guy's got problems. There was a, there was, no, he's, he works with the marathon. Oh. There's a marathon going on. These people are running. He's supposed to encourage them. So he's like, yeah! Keep going. Don't stop. And I realized he didn't even see me. He wasn't sarcastic, slow clapping me. Uh, people who cheer on marathons he, are incapable he, of sarcasm. He, he, he was <laughs> encouraging the runners in the marathon. And it, at, at that moment, I thought to myself, if I had the ability to pause reality, like a remote control, and at that moment I could pause reality, and I would be given an a thousand years to come up with a plausible explanation why that guy, how that guy was not sarcastic, slow clapping me. If you would tell me, oh, don't take everything personal. You're not the center of the universe. Not everything's about you. I would be like, yeah, that's true sometimes. But this time, there's no other explanation other than the fact this guy saw my humiliation and he is sarcastic. Slow clapping, there's no other way. And, if you, and I thought to myself, that's in a thousand years. What if you gave me a million years? You gave me a million years to contemplate <laughs> by myself. What plausible scenario could I construct to explain that that guy was, I would never in a million years say, well, you know, it's possible. There was a marathon going down that way, perpendicular to the street that I was in, and he was part of the marathon, and he was clapping the people. I would have never come up with that. So I realized that sometimes, and this is what a muna is. A muna is faith. Faith means it's above intellect. A muna is sometimes there's a, a perfectly rational explanation, but my brain is incapable of coming up with it. I'll take it on faith that it's not all about me. <laughs> because otherwise, <laughs> you know, wow. Ellie, do you think we could make a song, a chafing dish song, which is a weird thing to make a dish out of to begin with, but do, um, do you think we could, uh, that was that was wonderful. I felt like I was there. Um, so Tybal happened? thinks she was there. What happened with what the happened chafing, chafing dish? dish? I had to go back to shul and relight it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's a, that's a really that's a very profound. Uh, yeah, it was a profound experience in my life, yeah. and I learned a lot from. I have a few experiences like that that were, um, I call it experiences where I was chavrusas with Hashem. Hmm. You know, little like reminders. Learning one on one with Hashem, like one of my big ones. I talk about it all the time. In fact, where give me the CDs, the three CD set. So in the in the Tanya CDs, I talk about this, about Mayach Shalta Like my my 
go to explanation of Meich Shat Leif because the Alter Rebbe's Meich Shat Leif is is inborn, it's innate. Um, everyone has the capability of doing it. So the story that I tell about Meich Shat Leif is one time I was in the car and my wife and I were in the car and she ran into the grocery store to get some groceries in a grocery store. So I think this is when like, we were newly married because I don't think there were any kids in the car or if, if they were, they were they're like babies. And so anyways, she ran in and sometimes, so I'm going to tell you, I, I don't think I'm the most pleasant person to drive with when I'm the driver. So sometimes yeah, my wife would drive. All together. And so, because I'm not, I don't have good spatial sense. So my wife had been driving and I was in the passenger seat and it was like, I think it was like close to Shkia and I needed to finish saying Telem. I think really that was the scenario. So my wife ran into the grocery store and I was sitting in the car in the passenger seat of the car with a little chitas finishing Telem. Okay. And so I'm sitting there and as I'm sitting there, I see a lady by herself, a lady, um, I mean, not by herself with a kid, but she was the only adult. She was a lady with her, a little kid. Looked like you know, a six-year-old, seven-year-old kid. And she's holding the kid by the hand. And she's holding by the hand. And she's walking like very like business, like stern. Very, um, yeah, like you could tell she wasn't like thrilled right now. But she was just walking with him. And she comes walking right up to me, like six inches away. I'm like, what, is she, what does she want from me? And then all of a sudden I realized... She's not walking up to me. She's parked in the car next to mine, to the right of mine. So I'm in the passenger seat. In America, that's on the right side. And this was in America. And she was parked to the right of me. She's going to the driver's side because she was the only adult. She was a driver. So she was going to the driver's side, the left side of her car, which is six inches away from the right side of our car. So I'm right there separated by nothing but two panes of glass and six inches of space. And she wasn't walking toward me. She didn't even see me, which is part of the story. She didn't even see me yet. So at this point, she has not seen me. Yet. So she, ex- you're going to see. Yet. It's a big yet. The yet is part of the story. Yes, this is Chekhov's gun in the, in, the, in the first act. If you see the gun in the drawer, someone's going to get shot in the, in the second act or the third act. You have to look Google that. Anyways, so she comes walking up, and she un- opens up the, pa- the driver's side back door and puts her kid in the seat and she buckles him up she closes the door and then she opens up the driver's side uh front door and she gets in she closes the door and as soon as the do- ellie knows what's happening as soon as the door is closed she turns around and she starts yelling at the kid why did you do that and i told you that we're not buying any candy all of a sudden she realizes that i am right there i'm like peering oh my over God, my little kitas and she sees me she sees me and all of a sudden whoop, she stops Stops, stops yelling at the kid. So that, that's the whole story. But I, the, the, then I analyzed it afterwards. I thought to myself, okay, hold on a second. Let me, let me deduce here. At what point in this narrative did this woman become angry, meaning feel frustration? At what point did she feel emotionally overwhelmed with the child? And the answer is before I saw her, back, back in the store probably, maybe even earlier, okay? That's when she felt frustrated. At what point did she actually behave or allow herself to fully behave the way she wanted toward the child when she was safe or she thought she was safe when she thought it was she was not being seen but the point is once she realized that there was someone watching me i was the one watching how long did it take her to rein herself in and control the behavior again instantaneously so what do you see from this that people don't lose control, they give up control. Because even when you're feeling something, you can choose whether or not to express it behaviorally. And that's an innate trait of a human being. That's what Meir Shalat Alev means. So she was frustrated with the kid back in the store, but didn't show it. Mm-hmm. Then she started to show it. So one thing, she held it in until she was in the car. But the bigger chiddush, the more impressive point here is, even after she let it out, and it was already coming you know full force she could cut it off immediately because that is human impulse control and the alter Rebbe says we have to use that when it comes to a moral dilemma anyways that's a little tanya yeah that was a chavrusa moment chavrusa moment hashem taught that to me and if i hadn't had that experience i wouldn't really understand that concept properly 
You ever pick up? You ever call someone? They pick up the phone all angry, and then they realize it's not. They're like someone close to them, and they realize <laughs> it's a stranger, and all of a sudden they they get all behaving, or the reverse. I'm not sure. You ever like think it's your brother calling you, and you get like you're all, and then it's just a person that you never met, and you start acting nice. <laughs> um, I have to think about that. Oh, you think about it? All right. But that, uh, let me ask you another question. The, the, we experience that kind of thing every day where, like, you're walking down the street with someone else and they're, like, waving and you assume it's about it's to you, but you're not really sure if you know them, but you wave back anyway because you're decent and then there's someone else behind you. <laughs> that, like, yeah. you know, egg on your face type deal. It's a pretty universal thing. Could you give us a paradox where that would not necessarily be a bad thing? Rabbi Taub. Yeah. No, I'm just seeing that there's some uh, uh, th offline donations coming in. Oh, wow. <clears throat> so we have to adjust it because we might be a lot further than we think. Yeah. You know what I want to do? I want to do a few more testimonials. Shama, could you pick up where we left off or just give us – start at number 10 on the testimonial slides I put in there. Let's do some music while we uh, – Little strumming. All right, this is a long one, so you got to stay with it for a bit. It has been really incredible to be able to infuse my daily car rides with powerful Hasidic teachings. I have been able to see my anger, anxiety, stress, and other human struggles as challenges and part of my divine mission. More importantly, I have been given the tools to overcome these challenges. I have taken on multiple hachlatas that have changed my life for the better from inspiration I got for free during that time I wasn't doing anything else anyway it's been an invaluable contribution to my life someone from Bay Harbor Florida there's a few things I would love to comment on that the, your content is for free and it uh, yeah. does so much good work and it's for free but it's not really for free how's that for a paradox Right. Well, we have this campaign once a year, and uh, and this really helps uh, be able to provide this content for free. For free. But free ain't free. Let's do another one. It's great to listen to good, interesting, and applicable content when wanting inspiration or entertainment. Remember, I said I said a lot of that kind of word: applicable, relatable. Rabbi Taub's talks are marked by a profound level of brilliance combined with a voluminous oh, deep knowledge. Thank you. Deep knowledge of history, history and oh, that's world a lot. events. That's nice to say. I didn't really think of myself having a voluminous deep knowledge. You know what? I'm a dilettante, which means a dabbler. I know a little bit about lots of stuff, so it looks like I have a deep knowledge of stuff. But anyways, I appreciate the compliment. It works. His perfect... His perspective is fascinating. His ability to contextualize unique. On top of all that, he's in incapable of delivering a boring teaching. Just wow. watch me. Now I feel like that's a challenge. Challenge? Yeah. Okay. Do this one, but very boring. Seth. Do it boring? Boring. Yeah. The truth that set me free cost me everything I have. Yeah, that was too good to do boring. Read that regular because that's a good one. The truth that set me free cost me everything I have. Can I ask you something? Does it always have to be that way? doesn't have to be that way. Tell us why. Like we were saying before, we don't have to wait until crisis. We don't have to wait until things fall apart. See, here's the thing. You have to let go. We spoke about the paradox of powerlessness leading to powerfulness. You have to let go. You have to surrender. You have to realize you're nothing. Hashem's everything. And therefore, once you're surrendered to Him, attached to Him, and a conduit to Him, then you effectively are an extension of the everything. Okay? So that's the paradox. But here's the thing. Most people are not going to let go of what they've already got going on until the whole thing is so systemically broken that they say, ah, there's nothing here to preserve anyway, so why not? And they let go. But you could do that preemptively. You can surrender to God while everything's good. Before the crisis sets in, you could surrender right now. And, and I'll tell you how you could induce 
powerlessness without a crisis. Just think about one thing. It's a deep concept, but it's something everyone can grasp. You cannot make you. You did not create your own existence. So therefore, you are utterly dependent on God for your existence. That's powerlessness. So why do we have to get to a point of crisis where we say existence is so painful and so dysfunctional that now I'm ready to acknowledge that I didn't put myself here? Wake up gracefully with dignity and say, Maida Ani. Maida means I thank, but it also means I acknowledge. I didn't put myself here. I'll tell you one of my lines. This is one of my... Uh, I'm quoting my own line. But there are two words that are very similar in the English language. In fact, they come from the same etymological root. But they, the experience of them are almost diametric opposites. And, and they are humility and humiliation. What's the difference between humility and humiliation? Humility accepts its powerlessness gracefully and with dignity. Humiliation goes down kicking and screaming. But they both come to the same conclusion. I'm nothing. I'm, I'm nothing. nothing. I'm nothing. He's got a load of who thinks he's nothing. That's right. Which is why humor comes from the same. Human humility. Yeah. That's right. Of the earth. Of the earth. Humus. Humus is the earth. With that, I think we should go to a joke. Could we dissect a frog? Could you play uh, clip number three? And everyone remembers the reason why we're still going, even though 321 Motion wants to go home, is because we're still trying to raise money over here. We have, uh, I don't know about the offline donations. How many of the offline donations? I think Tyler's dealing with it. Okay. We are at 109. Okay, we, we got to go. We got to move. All right. People. Okay, so you were saying that we don't have to wait to be humiliated to be humble. That's right. And maybe a way to do that is saying basically the, the idea of there's not pretending idea, to be powerful to begin with. That there's a Hasidic idea here, which is that Sadikim Gamorim can do tshuva. So, oh, how can you say that? A tzaddik has to do tshuva. Tshuva is for a rosh or did a vedas. And the response is, who told you that life has to get so out of hand that you actually went as far as committed a sin before you realized that you need to surrender to God? So, there's a Hasidic concept that tzaddikim, perfectly righteous people, can also surrender. They don't have to come to that point because life's falling apart. Hmm. Anyways, what were you saying? Okay, I just got to look at this one. If only things had gone wrong earlier, we wouldn't be in this predicament. That's what we're saying. But it doesn't have to it be. It doesn't that. have to be that way. That's right. All right, so we'll put that one aside. Um, Abba Eben, the uh, diplomat and politician, he was a smart guy. So he said... Um, nations similar to people tend to behave rationally after they've exhausted all other possibilities. But it doesn't have to be that way. They never miss an opportunity to miss an opportunity. That was another Abba Ibn one. What's the one about the umbrella? Abba Ibn's got one about the umbrella. Abba Ibn umbrella? I don't know. Someone Google it. Um, all right. You know the Chalm one about the umbrella? The Chalm umbrella one? No, what's the Chalm umbrella? Well, guy's walking around with an umbrella with holes in it. So, <laughs> I'm going to say it wrong yeah, for no, sure. Yeah, you say it good. Um, so, they said... Why you have an... Why do you... Why, why, no, no. Why it's, do you have an umbrella? It's, it's not right. It's sunny. You yeah. You have to set it up. You didn't say it was sunny. It was a beautiful day, and the guy's holding an umbrella. Uh, but it's got holes in it. And we'll give you a, the guy's like, why do you have what? an umbrella? Why do you have an umbrella? Sunny. So he's like, no, it's got holes in it. It doesn't work. But then why do you have it? He's like, how did I know it wasn't going to rain? <laughs> Something like that. I twisted it up. But no, it's I even think the punchline is, it might not rain. Right. Or the guy, the helmet at home. 
and the guy, his friend comes and he's and he sees his friend. He's sitting there on the couch, stark naked, with a top hat. And he says, what, "What's what's what's the matter with you?" He's like, "Ah, you know, no one comes anyway. No one comes to visit." He's like, "Yeah, but I, I, I why the hat?" So he's like, "Well, okay, someone does." <laughs> <laughs> so okay, but I want to tell about the Chalamite as it relates to this one, what we're talking about. The guy, you know, all Chalamite stories, the really good, the jokes, they they seem to usually start with someone comes f- back from the big city, and then they got the idea. Meaning, so long as they're just living within their town, usually right. they're okay, yeah. right? Things work, things make sense, yeah, within their realm, right. and um, so. Oh, so someone comes to the big city and he's raving about all the One of the Chalmites go- visits the big city. Yeah, and then he comes back home. and the, the Chalm. And he's talking to his friends about all the wonderful things in Warsaw. <clears throat> Warsaw, the big city, what they got going on. And this guy, Kalman, is hearing all this. And, and he's had a dream for so long to, to visit the big city too. And he's like, you know what? If my friend can do it, damn it, I can do it too. And so he tells his wife that he's going on a trip, and he sets out for, for Warsaw. And uh, he's got high hopes, high expectations, and he starts traveling, and he heads out, and his wife packed him a little uh, lunch. Anyway, he's walking for a few hours. Figured he'd take a break, sits down, has some lunch. Anyway, after he eats his lunch, he's pretty tired. So he decides he's going to take a nap, and uh, I'll get fresh, and he'll continue his travels in the morning. You know the one, right? No. Oh. No, I actually don't know it. Oh, really? Yeah. All right, so I'll do it even longer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my what goodness. We... <laughs> I, there might be everyone out there. Okay, okay, so fine. So he uh, says, wait, wait what's going to happen? I'm going to wake up, and I'll be disoriented. I won't know which direction to go. So he says, I know. Okay, I'll take my shoes off, and I'll point my shoes uh, towards Warsaw. So I know which way to go when I wake up. Anyway, um, he's very taken by his brilliant idea, and he does that, and he goes to bed. And, um, you know, while he was sleeping, um, you know, a, a hobo has been was walking by, sees a guy. Are you making this up as you go along? No, you think I'm doing <laughs> it's like very a, convoluted. No, I know. Okay, yeah. it's uh, – Okay. Anyway, so why did he – because the light was on. You think I'm doing that, right? <laughs> You think I'm doing one of those? No, no, it's going somewhere. So the fella, the hobo, you know, um, sees this and he's, uh, well, this guy, what has he got on him? You know, maybe, uh, hey, he's got a pair of shoes. What do you know? I got to use a pair of shoes. Anyway, he tries on the shoes. The shoes don't fit. You have to acquit. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so he, uh, he doesn't take the shoes. He's like, I don't need this guy's used shoes. They don't even fit me. And he just like kind of just tosses them aside carelessly, haphazardly, terrible thing to do. But uh, anyway, the fellow wakes up. Now the this hobo. Re- no, the hobo leaves. And done with the hobo. Well, what Drop did the, the hobo, hobo do? He didn't take the shoes. Oh, he, but he he threw the shoes. He didn't like. Yeah, he sort of. Yeah, he cast like, them aside. Yeah, very callously. You know, <laughs> <It> fell, <laughs> drop like, like a, a like a like a hobo like a tin pan in the middle of. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So he. Oh, so the Chalmite wakes up, Kalman, that is, um, and he, uh, well, he's feeling fresh, he's ready to continue his travels, and he knows exactly where to go since his shoes Our are... Pl- <gasps> no! But what no! happened? Yeah, what did the hobo do when he threw the shoes? He reoriented them. It was going back to Chalm. No. So he, uh, he puts on his shoes, and he very confidently walks towards Warsaw, and after so eight... So he thinks. So he thinks. Well, we know, but he doesn't. So it's called dramatic irony when the audience. Where's knows uh, Ellie with dramatic uh, build-up music? Okay, so the he uh, he he comes to uh, to Warsaw, and he's walking in. He's like, eh, you know, I would have thought I'd see a more impressive entrance. You know, <laughs> some arch, something. You know, uh-huh. this this looks awfully familiar. I don't know what the big rave is it's about, just but like who knows? You know, no one makes the entrance look good. Probably okay. uh, something right. better going on on in the inside. And he walks in and he sees people that look fairly much like the way they dress. They at don't home. look so special. No, no just top like... hats. Just you know. So he's uh, okay, fine. Um, anyway, he gets to the town square and he sees pretty much the same kind of marketplace, basic what have yous. 
and uh, says, uh, well, nothing yet here blowing me away. Anyway, then he goes to the shul, get a minion mincha, you know, um, and he sees someone that looks just like the rabbi in Chelm. Wow. Uh, so he says, this is odd. But um, what do you know? Anyway, and so it uh, continues. Um, and he sees another guy. Uh, and this guy looked just like his friend Nachman, who had a... Back uh, in Chelm. Back in Chelm. Looks just like Nachman. Who, yeah, who was a, sh- uh, a schuster, a shoe repair guy. Mm-hmm. And he wasn't wearing any shoes. You know why? Why? Because he was a shoemaker. Shoemakers go barefoot. Their children go barefoot. Oh. Yeah. Isn't that the saying? Either way. He works the either way. Kinder gain barefoot. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But not your kids. Your kids happen to be of the most wise. My kids have shoes. I don't. I mean that figuratively oh, speaking. That they are as wise and uh, kind and compassionate and give for free and for fun just like you. Baruch Hashem. I'm not just uh, saying. Baruch Hashem. No. Okay. So well, that, we, yes. we have a dramatic situation going on. This Kalman guy is uh, about, he's in for something. So he, then he's, he's walking and he, he sees someone that looks sort of like his wife. Um, the same here, same, you know, and he's like, well, I don't know what that's about. So he starts like trying to get a better look. And then she walks up right into what she, what looks like his house, right? And he's like, okay. And then she's making dinner and he's like, I don't want to be like a real creep and like look through the window, but this is so strange. Like peeping Tom. Yeah. Anyway, That's so he, he sort of goes in and he's like, I, I got to find out what's going on here. Like what is going on? Um, this, you know, bizarre world is I'll just knock on the door. See, let's talk to them. And he goes in and as soon as he walks Warsaw. in. Yeah, yeah. This woman who like, oh, she, maybe she's my wife's twin. And they, as soon as he, He's like, oh, come on in. Wow, you're back so soon. She said to him, you're yeah. back so soon. Come yeah. on in. Uh, and back from Warsaw. So Warsaw. Soon. You see, she didn't say that because that would have ruined the joke. Oh, yeah, okay. okay yeah, so he, she just said, you're she, back she, so soon. Back come so on soon. in. Come sit down. And she, she brings hot soup. It's the soup just Same like his wife. Soup. Very similar. Tastes just like at home. Mm-hmm. And uh, anyway, he's been there ever since. And uh, his life is so much better because he's in Warsaw. He's in the big city. Um, <laughs> and he decided, you know, what the hell, I'll stay a little longer. Something to that effect, all right? Yeah. I like it. You want to dissect it? Now that we just said the joke very fast, let's take some time to fast. dissect it. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes telling the joke fast takes longer than telling it slow. So nothing in his life changed objectively. Yeah. But he said he was happier. Yeah. Because he was in Warsaw. And life in Warsaw is yeah, like better. It, right. Almost like it's the perspective. Almost. You didn't have to change. Uh... Yeah. All right. All that for that? Yeah. Sometimes it's about the journey, not the destination. Ellie, what's the saddest song? saddest, the absolutely most maudlin song that you know. I'd like to believe. What would get it like? No, the, I'd, like get to, I'd like to leave that, that your audience, look, you know who just gave a donation? Who? Rabbi Vram Garlitsky. Oh, that's beautiful. Aww. And I heard that he was watching last night. He watched the whole thing last night. I bet you he liked the Yiddish songs. He did. He liked all of it. I get. Really? I want to read some other donations here. We have some beautiful. Big schuss, big schuss. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna read all the ones that have shout outs. We have Menachem and Hindi Feldman who gave 36 with Rabbi Tao's parenting course. Let's get some let's get some telethon music, huh? Rifki Levy, thanks for everything, Shully and Rifki Levy. Nachama Labor, $144 in honor of my dear friends Ida and Ida and Rifka who are lighting up the world. Again, I'm going to read all the ones with comments. Yisrael Kohn, that's my brother, Lulin Nishmas, Gershon, Ben, Ruven, Sue. Thank you, Srili. Uh, Binyam 11 with Beis Schneer. Vivi Darren for opening up my eyes to Tanya like never before and all you continue to teach. This is from <laughs> the Maylid Vetzain. $200. The Maylid Vetzain, I know that. 
Okay. The ox mit distraimo. We'll read we'll read the inside jokes. That's no problem. Um, Miriam Lieberman in honor of Rabbi Taub, whose shirim are magnificent. And anonymous hundred dollars with the Inside Out podcast. I, I wish I could read everything. I'm going to read the ones with comments. Douglas Smith, thank you for everything you do. But Yom Beton in honor of Rabbi Shays Shlita. And Maisha Shiner, thank you for all that you do and teach. Isaac Tiff, okay, that was uh, um, now Chaim, you do the okay. Where was against the month? Okay, with that one we saw anonymous. Thank you for delivering your meaningful and passionate messages. Okay, I want to thank the phone team again. We still have time to go. There's an hour and 16 minutes left on the campaign. I'm confident we'll make it. The show continues. The donations are still being doubled through the matching up until $200,000. Up until 200000 correct. The merch is all still happening. Yes. The Haggadah for a th- donation of $360. Yes. Or a monthly of $30, $30. and up. And for a donation of $540. $540 or Effective, monthly $45. You get a Ikeepa Soul Words. Soul words, I keep up. Kolashvin, Chavivin, Yamaka. Along with the Haggadah. Along with the Haggadah. And, and we have ties. And we have ties, but you have to write tie. You have to write tie in the thing. And Mendy Kaswitz gets one. Yeah. And Rabbi Taub will autograph them. No, I'm not going to autograph them. Why, you think someone's going to wear it? You think it's going to get... I, I don't know, I just... Okay. He's I'm not going to autograph them, autograph but you'll be able to say they'll have to trust you. This is Rabbi Taub's. Uh, you see it right here. There's video evidence for the past right. two hours. That right. this is the oh, time. and there's still an opening for the Nechayach records, similar to what you see here. I said I would give away three Nechayach records um, for uh, any donation of um, an effective three hundred dollars. I think that's what I said. So one hundred and fifty dollars, and you have to write uh, Nechayach in the comments so I know who you are. And what else we got? What else do we have? Oh, I'm trying to make a donation here on, on my phone. Are you? And it's not working. The website's not working. Website's not working? Just, uh, uh, maybe it's just a mobile thing, or it could be it's just my phone. Uh-oh. Oh, by the way, anyone, if you're PS. trying to give a donation, if there's some wrong, something wrong or there's some technical difficulty or whatever it is, uh, you can also give through PayPal, Cash App, and um, PayPal, Cash App, Venmo. Yeah, and it Zell. will still go through. It will still go through. Yeah, yeah. it will still go through. The info okay. on the WhatsApp. Okay, we are going to wind down, but like I said, we're still we're still going on. The I would like to is open until one a.m. So you could still give. Even after, yeah. I'm saying even after the live stream is over, the campaign is going to stay open, and we're going to keep matching until we get in. We, we accomplished our goal, Baruch Hashem, and we're in bonus until two hundred. You know what? We, we need to do some more jokes because life is too important to take seriously. I have a montage of jokes. Um, Shammai, thank you so much for saying. And please, could you play clip 17? Clip 17. In the meantime. In the meantime, I forgot how much I gave last year. I don't. So need, I, don't I can look it up. I mean, we're live on YouTube, so I feel funny to go look. At, I could look <laughs> it up. Look at that one. Embracing a practical world. Embracing a practical worldview was one of the greatest miracles of my life. Because we were talking before about if it's practical, it's spiritual. And we got to, oh, here we go. Mute our mics. I don't like political jokes. I've seen too many of them get elected. Neil Armstrong used to go around telling people really unfunny jokes about the moon, and when they wouldn't laugh, he would say, well, I guess you had to have been there. A little Jewish boy comes home from school, and he tells his mother that he got a, uh, a part in the school play. She says, oh, yeah, Bubala, what part? He says, I'm playing the part of the Jewish father. She says, oh, no, go back to your teacher and tell her you want a speaking part. The husband says to his wife, look here, this article says that the average man speaks 10,000 words a day, and the average woman speaks 20,000, twice as much. His wife says, well, that's because women have to repeat everything because their husbands don't hear them the first time. The guy looks at his wife and says, what? You know about the farmer 
during Shemitah, last week, Parshish by Midbar, we had Shemitah. So there's a, in, in, in Israel, there's an Israeli farmer standing out in, the, in his farm during Shemitah. So his, his neighbor, some says, Slicha, Adoni, what are you doing? You know, it's Shemitah, you're not supposed to be farming. He says, no, I'm just trying to win a Nobel Prize. He says, well, how are you winning a Nobel Prize standing outside here in your field? He says, don't you know, every year they award a Nobel Prize to someone who's outstanding in his field. Okay, the chief of staff of the United States Air Force opens up a nearby base to uh, new recruits to try to get some new recruits for the, for the Air Force. So uh, he's walking along the base and he sees a couple of uh, twin brothers who uh, have wandered onto the base. And apparently they want to they wanna enlist. So he goes over to the two twins and he says to the first one, he says, what do you do, young man? What skills do you bring to the United States Air Force? He says, I pilot. Ooh, pilot. Okay, very good. Sign him up. He says to the next brother, what do you, young man, what do you do? He says, I chop wood. He says, you chop wood? Well, this is 2020. The U.S. Air Force doesn't need people to chop wood. He says, but you hired my brother. He says, yeah, because he's a pilot. You, you, you chop wood. He says, well, heck. If I don't chop it, he can't pilot. <laughs> if a man speaks alone in a forest and his wife's not there to hear him, is he still wrong? What's worse than finding a worm in your apple? Finding half a worm. I'm sure everybody's familiar with this uh, classic joke, right? Because the if you find a half a worm, it means you already ate the other half, right? Okay. Well, anyways, by, uh, by deductive reasoning, one could then further argue, what's worse than finding half a worm in your apple? Finding a quarter of a worm. And what's worse than finding a quarter of a worm? Finding an eighth of a worm. And what's worse, is worse than finding an eighteenth of a worm? A sixteenth of a worm? And to finally, what's the worst thing you can... No worm. If you find no worm, that means you, you ate the whole worm. Okay, but obviously nobody actually reacts that way. Have you heard about the garlic diet? Yeah, the garlic diet. After every meal, you eat a bunch of garlic. And uh, you don't actually lose any weight, but from a distance, your friends all think you look thinner. A drunk woke up with a hangover, remorseful, remembering how he'd gotten drunk the night before and got into a terrible fight with his wife. And he was so angry with himself, he went downstairs, he saw all the empty beer bottles strewn all over the place. He gathered them up, he went outside, and he took the empty bottles, he started throwing them against the wall, smashing them. With each smashed bottle, he would scream at the bottle, you're the reason why I fight with my wife. And he would take another empty bottle, he smashed it against the wall, you're the reason why I fight with my wife. And he took another empty bottle, smashed it against the wall, he said, you're the reason I fight with my wife. He grabbed another bottle, oh, it looks, this one is sealed, it's full, it's still full of beer. He looks at it, he says, you, I know you have nothing to do with this, you stand aside. Amazing. Thanks for the jokes. By the way, I got a text with a dedication. Someone's saying, you know, let me, I'll just got, got a stall for me, Chaim. All right. In the meantime, I'll read a few dedications. I missed my uncle and uh, aunt Morty and Rifke Katz, $720 in honor of our dear nephew, Chaim Cohn. That's very sweet. Can you read this one? An anonymous, uh, went to anonymous uh, Team Chaim and Gula Cohn. That's beautiful. Um, a Please mention I donated Lili Nishmas Gershon Ben Ruven. Yes, passed away this Monday morning. Yud Olive Kissel is in Melbourne. Bill Baltzdaka and Bal Chesed. Big Baltzdaka and Bal Chesed. Gershon Yitzchaki. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. Um, we uh, we want to wrap up. I want to thank the sound people and everyone for staying later. Thank you, Ellie Marcus. Thank you, Tybal, who's working behind the scenes. Thank you to the, the phone team. I don't know your name, but thank you. Um, and uh, thank you for all the people who donated and stayed up with us and the people who will continue to donate. And we will get to our goal of 200000 I'm sure. Uh, we're already 
191,000, and we have an hour and seven minutes to go. Everything is still being doubled. This campaign has been an amazing success. Baruch Hashem. Anyone you want to thank? We're going to go out with a happy, a happy song. A, some words in closing, Rabbi Taub. If you start thanking people, you'll forget someone. So let me just thank Hashem, God Almighty, who makes all things possible and gives us the strength and hopefully the wisdom. And I want to thank all of you for showing your support, showing you care, being part of what we're doing here. I hope that during this program you got a glimpse of the different activities and projects that this organization, this virtual community called Soul Words is involved in, and uh, that you got a little bit of nachas knowing that you are partners. And uh, of course, thank you, Chaim Cohn, who without... Now I started saying names. But no, I, don't do it, though. Okay, said, w- he named names. Stop naming <laughs> names. But without Chaim Khan, of course, there would not be the live stream. No, so. no, 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 no. And uh, I'll just name the people I can see right in front of me. Uh, Ellie Marcus is sitting here. And without Ellie Marcus, you know, what would... Ellie Marcus okay. saved a life. Yeah. Thanks to Rabbi Shea's tab. I'll, I'll also take the assist and the guy who stole the content and put it on his YouTube channel. I'm in the same category with him, but you did the, yeah, yeah. The life may, the life yeah. you may save may be your own. If we don't wrap up for the sound guys. Yeah. Okay. So maybe Ellie will take us out. Uh, take us out with like a. What's an appropriate uh, ending niggin for such a, such a such an event? I'm drawing a blank. Let's do Pater Vashalom again. Uh, a few bars. Mm. Mm. We did a lot of Yeah, we did a lot of Betachen stuff. Yeah, a lot of Betachen, yeah. That was the most requested yeah, yeah. theme. No, it's a song I'm thinking about Bitochen. Huh? It's a thinking about Bitochen. No, you know about Bitochen? Mm-hmm. How about Ziv Chuz Ziv? You know the one? Ziv Chuz Ziv Chetzedek. Yeah. Ziv Ziv Chuz Ziv Chetzedek. Oh, we throw a lashem. Ziv Chuz Ziv Chetzedek. Oh, we throw a lashem. Ziv Chuz Ziv Chetzedek. Oh, we throw a lashem. Ziv khu ziv khit sendek Oh, mit khu men lashem Hey, Rabbim, my mrimi You get a tie He gets a tie Rabbim, my mrimi Everyone gets a tie Everyone gets a tie Ziv khu ziv khit sendek Oh, mit khu men lashem Ziv khu ziv khit sendek Oh, mit khu men lashem Ziv khu ziv khit sendek Oh, mit khu men lashem Ziv khu ziv khit sendek Oh, mit khu men lashem Hey, Rabbim, my mrimi Thank you, Ellie. Thank you, Ellie. Thank, Thank you, you everyone. One motion. Thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem. Okay. They got a song for that. <laughs> We're in the five towns. We are in the five towns. Yeah. We have to sign up with the Thank You Hashem song. Otherwise, it's not going to give us any more stuff. No. No, no, no. No, we're not singing. Yeah, well, Come on. That's not an Ellie Marcus song. <laughs> Ellie, did you ever sing Thank You Hashem? I have, I have. We're at a wedding? Oh, yeah, all the time. Really? Yeah. How does it go? <laughs> I'm not going to give you a tie if you actually yeah, let's do hear it. it. Let's hear it. I want to hear it. La, 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 thank you, oh. Hashem. I did it, la, la, thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Thank you, Hashem. 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 Oh my 